Hello? I, I, I want to report a burglary. Well, now! It's going on now! Uh, number 10, Coronation Street. It's the news agents on the corner. Fairclough. Rita Fairclough. I'm the owner. Oh, please, can you be quick? I'm frightened they'll be up here next. You don't know what might be out there. Yeah, but I know what's going to be in here if they don't shut that flaming alarm off. We're going to have three wide-awake kids wanting the cornflakes, yeah, aren't right. we? Sooner that than you come face to face with a gang of thugs. Gail, no gang of thugs. You don't know. Yeah, well, never mind a gang. If I see one single thug on his own, I'll come straight back here, mm. right? <sighs> now, don't go get in, Cole. Get yourself off to bed. No, I'm waiting here. OK. I'll be back in a minute. All right. Hello? You know that's your alarm ringing on your shop. Oh, yes, I know. I've just been up phone to police. Oh, right, right. Well, don't go investigating. Just stay well clear till police get here. You don't have to worry about me, Rita. I know how to look after myself. Rita! Somebody out here. Uh, can you open your door, please? And just... Rita, please. Oh, it's... Oh, what's going on? Oh, I'm just talking to Rita. All right. Hello, Rita. Don't panic, don't be alarmed, it's all right. It's only, it's only Martin. I was just uh, telling Rita, you know. Well, you haven't seen what's happened at the shop, haven't you? What? Well, well, they've only smashed a window. Oh, they haven't, have they? I <clears throat> Hello, Rita. Looks like they've broken one of your windows. Never mind windows. Are they still in there? Oh, right, yes, just a minute. Um... Are they your perpetrators still on the premises? Ledge, they're probably about a mile away by now. All right. <clears throat> My man reports there's no sign of the intruders. The coast is clear. Cigarettes have gone again. Yeah. Well, they made a right mess of your window, Rita. What do you believe her? Put shutters on the door, and what do they do? Oh, these people, they'll get in no matter what you do. Through the ceiling, through the floor. What's this another all night party? Oh, we haven't got you up as well, have we? No, I was sleeping like a log. My missus woke me up. Well, it looks like they've done a proper job, don't they? Eh? Well, might as well leave door wide open. Yeah, well, anyway. I've left Gail wondering what's going on, so, you know. Oh, you get back to her, love. Yeah, well, I think I better, Dad. Otherwise, she'll be imagining all sorts, eh? Tell her I'm sorry she'd been disturbed. Yeah. Well, looks like somebody's got it in for you, Rita. Why do you think that's the same? Well, it could be, or it could just be heavy smokers who don't believe in the health warnings. Well, if I can use the telephone, might as well summon our friendly glaze here yet again. Well, you're a good man to have around, Reg. What do I do? How do I stop them? I don't know, love, but the boys in blue are here, so perhaps I can help you with that. Look, in the meantime, if you've got a wee brush, I can start clearing this lot up, all right? You didn't hear it? No. No? Well, it was either Alf or Rita. It's about five o'clock this morning. Oh, don't say I'm going to have to spend the morning clearing up after a break-in. So you up it with a cabin that got done? Well, I wouldn't put it like that, exactly. No, I might be wrong. I mean, it might be somewhere down Viaduct Street. Um, it's all right if I bring someone home after school tonight, isn't it? Yeah, of course. It's not a whole school trip you've laid on, is it? Come no. and see Barlow the invalid. It's just a friend. I'm glad to hear it. What friend? Just a lad, I know. Oh, what boy? Yeah, why does it matter? No. Well, if it's from school, I imagine it's someone I know, is it? Mark Jackson. Jackson? He's the character did my back in. No, he didn't. You did that yourself. Yeah, trying to stop him mouthing off. Yeah, well, if you feel like that, I won't bring him I'm then. I'm sure your dad's not serious. Yeah, well, just tell him not to laugh, OK? Won't. Yeah, and no cameras. I don't want pictures of me like this being passed around the school. How long is he staying, this Mark Jackson? I don't know. I've not met him, have I? No. I'd quite like to, if he's going to be coming here. So would you mind calling in at the shop on your way home? Oh, Mum. Please. Why don't you go to bed for an hour? No, I can't leave Steve alone in that bike shop one morning. Right, Mum, listen, you know I'm working at Better Spice tonight, don't you? Oh, yeah, you are, aren't you? Mm. But you'll come home and have some tea first. Well, I'll have to get changed first anyway, won't I? <sighs> so, now we're all working, but for me. You know, no, I'm not going to say out. What? Well, it's just that I do know Bet and Alec a bit better than you do. 
Well, you're welcome to the pair of them. No, but I think if you'd just left well alone, I wouldn't have been at all surprised if she couldn't have talked him round, and I'd have had my job back by end of week. Look, even if he came round here and banded knee. I know, I know. Anyway, he's not going to now, is he? Not after last night. And the other job. But not as handy as that. I mean, any other pub, and you'd be worried about me coming back late, wouldn't you? But Rovers, well, it's practically on the doorstep, so it didn't matter, did it? Mum. What? <laughs> oh, I still say this floor could do with a good moppy. It'll only have to be done again when they come to put window in. I think you're being very brave. That's only because you didn't see me at five o'clock this morning. Oh, well, anybody would have been frightened then. It's just the way you get on with things. Well, what else am I supposed to do? Well, I know, but I mean, to have it happen twice, Rita, I mean, once is bad enough, but twice, it, it begins to seem like some sort of vendetta. I mean, you being on your own makes it worse. I know I used to worry when I were on my own. Did you? Oh, yeah, I used to think, what if somebody does break in and they think I've got the takings with me upstairs? Mm -hmm. They might just come up. Well, yes, and then when I couldn't give them what they wanted, they might have... Cut your throat. Yes. Yeah, well, thanks, Mavis. I do know what you thought. Oh, Rita, I didn't mean... Still, even though I'm on my own, I've always got you to cheer me up, haven't I? Yes. No. I've just been talking to an old friend of ours, Brendan Scott. Where? Is he here? No, on the phone. Oh, right. What, what did he say? He said he was going to pop in later this afternoon. Why? Didn't say. Well, didn't you ask him? I didn't get a chance. Oh, Norman, Norman, you've still got a lot to learn, haven't you? Look, he just said he was coming in and then he put the phone down. I couldn't say no, you're not coming until you tell us why. Right, right, let's think, let's think. There isn't anything I don't know about, is there? Any little peccadillos you've been hiding from me? No. Because if there is, now is the time to confess. Come clean. I will stand beside you, whatever it is, only I have to know. I haven't done anything. What about you? Me? Yeah, you. Have you got any little peccadillos? Well, this isn't going to get us anywhere, is it? Accusing one another. That's what Brendan Scott would like. Thought you'd have realised that by now. Right. I want this store checked out from one end to the other. Right. I want every item properly displayed, staff on the toes, the aisles cleared. I want battle stations, right? Battle stations, Norman. Oops. Sorry. Oh, thank you. And where would you like to go? Second, please. Second. It is second, isn't it? Or six. Yes, male surgical. I'm just visiting. Uh, yeah, best way to be in this place, huh? <laughs> oh, come on, will you? <sighs> Do you know, we've done this before. Yeah, well, you probably shouldn't have got in here with me today. I've had a right day of it. I've been up since five o'clock this morning chasing burglars. I don't like lifts at the best of times. Oh, you'll be all right, love. The lover's out in five minutes. Five minutes? Yeah, don't worry. You'll be all right. And do the police think it was the same ones? Well, they think it probably was, thank you. Apparently there's been a spate of break-ins in the area and they seem to think it's the same gang doing it. Really? Yeah. Oh. Have a bit of please. Oh. So what does the uh, what does the commander of the home watch think about all this then? All what then? You not know, Percy? The cabin was broken into again last night. No. Nah. Yeah. Don't tell me they didn't get your permission first, Percy. Oh, well, they have to, don't they? I mean, don't they have to uh, fill in some forms and then you issue them with some kind of permit? No, they do not. We're, not, we're there to stop burglars, not arrange them. Oh, I see. You got it wrong. I had, yes. <laughs> uh, 50 pence, please. So, did the alarms go off or what? Oh, yes, yes, Rita was up, police came. I don't know who else was there, but I know Mr MacDonald helped her with the clearing up. Good for him. <laughs> do you know what it was? I had a cup of cocoa before I went to bed. It's like knockout drops to me is cocoa. I could sleep through the day of judgment on a cup of cocoa. He's not a bad fella, Jim MacDonald. Oh, no, no, no. It's wonderful, you know. Quiet, well-spoken, well-mannered. No, he puts himself out for folk. 
There's a lot round here. Appreciate that, Alec. So what are you telling me for? He was only standing up for his wife. Now, you can't blame him for that. I'm not blaming him for that. I'm blaming him for coming in here shooting his mouth off him from the customers. That's the way he is. Ah, well, he might be. But he's not coming back till he apologises. And I'm sorry, that's the way I am. Are you on funeral duty tomorrow? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Why? Has he asked you or no? Oh, yes, I shall be there. In fact, I can feel a twinge coming on now. Wait, you're back? Hmm. I'll be all right for coffee, but, you know, it's just a great of ale I won't be able to manage. Oh, that's 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 that. That. Yeah, yeah. One, one. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Ah. Hey, dear, dear. Hey, I, I'm not talking about the children of the I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this. Just try and keep calm, love, that's all. I get cloistrophobia and... Oh, dear. Look, you come on, you'll be all right. I can't breathe. Oh. oh hey. Hey. Oh, no, come on. I don't believe this. Um, right. Think, Marty, think. Uh, let's loosen something. Uh, oh, check the pulse. Oh, come on, will ya? Um, um, oh, come on then. About time, is there anyone there that can help? Eh? Sister, come on. What? What's that? Uh, the list got stuck and she's had heart attack. Room crash call 666. Six, six. I've given a man to mouth, go but. On. All right. But when is he going to be moving back here? Or is he ever going to be moving back here? He is, yeah. Even if I've got to drag his bed down the street myself and carry him up the stairs. So, uh, it hasn't led to a reconciliation? It hasn't, no. In fact, the only thing it's led to is me wondering why I ever agreed to have him in the first oh. place. Hello, Tracy. Hiya. Mum, this is Mark. Mark, this is me mum. Hello, Mark. Hiya. And uh, you're in Tracy's class, are you? Mum, he's not even in the same year. Oh, right. He's in the fifth year. But you do play football. I've got that bit right, ever. Yeah. Right, can we go now? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Will Mark be stopping for his tea? Uh, no, thanks. I'll have to go home. Oh, well, maybe another time. Nice to have met you anyway. Yeah, and you. Bye, love. Bye. 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 Oh, Growing up fast, isn't she? Mm, we all are in our house. She's been admitted onto coronary care, but she's conscious and stable and should be OK. So there was that attack then? Looks like it, yes. I just thought, well, what, you know, what, what can I do? And then I just thought about what I'd seen you lot doing, just tried remembering it. But then you start thinking, well, you know, what if I get it all wrong? <laughs> I might have ended up killing her or something. You certainly didn't do that. Mm. What you might have done, though. What? You might have saved her life. So you've not brought me any grapes or chocolates or a get well card from the rest of the form, then? Ah, uh, no, sir. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm disappointed. You're missing me, aren't you? Go on, you can admit that. Yeah, we're missing you. Especially when it comes to refing. Hey, we don't talk about that. Listen, Dad, is there what I can get you? No, no, I'm fine, thanks, sir. No, we're going to go upstairs, then. Oh, well, uh, uh, don't you think you should stay down here? How can we when you're there? Anyway, Matt's come to listen to me tapes. Come on. Right, you round up all the trolleys you can find out there and you reposition them by the door. Thank you. Right. And for goodness sake, don't scratch anybody's car, otherwise Reg will go through... Oh. What? Nothing, nothing now. Hang on. Young man, can you tell me where I might find Mr Hoonsworth? Um, well, no, not really. I mean, haven't he just started here? Oh, have you really? Well, who knows? You may be only a humble private now, but you could prove to have a field marshal's baton in your pocket. Um, well, if I have, uh, I'll make sure I'll give it back to the field marshal. First time I see him. Ha! 
Brendan. <laughs> Ridge. <laughs> Mr. Watts. Hello. If you'd like to come this way, Mr. McDonald. I was just talking to that young man. One does sometimes wonder at the caliber of employees we're getting nowadays. Oh, one does. Which actually leads me rather neatly to the point of my visit. Graduate recruitment. Oh, yes. Better buy his new policy. From now on, all our management trainees will come to us straight from the universities. <laughs> Whose bright idea was that? Mine. <clears throat> Oh, well, I'm sure there's a lot to be said about oh, glad to hear it. Especially as the first of our intake, Miss Vanessa Morgan, will be starting here, in this shop, tomorrow morning. Mm, finishing the day after she like more students. I beg your pardon. Only joking. <clears throat> I sincerely hope so. After all, it would be a sad reflection on those responsible if our first graduate recruit should meet with any hostility or resentment. No, no, I should be made most welcome. No. I knew I could count on you. No, oh, yes, we'll teach you the ropes, show her the, uh, the way of the world. Yes, I'm sure you will, Red. After all, you started at the bottom. Oh, I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, say what they like. No one could ever accuse you of being overqualified. <laughs> no. Tracy! Tracy! What? Don't you think you've been up there for long enough? Dad. Half an hour. So? So, I want you both to get yourselves back down here. We're listening to music, that's all. All right, well, come on, listen to it downstairs. How can we when you're there? Look, Tracy, I don't want to argue. If you've been up there long enough, I want you both down here. Look, I'd better be going. You're just embarrassing me, do you know that? What's going on? Ask it. I'm just saying it's time they came down here. We're listening to music. Where does he expect us to go? All right, Tracy. You don't even live here. But that's enough, Tracy, thank you. Well? Mark, you said you had to get back for your tea anyway. Yeah. Yeah, well, why don't you and Tracy go upstairs for another ten minutes just to finish it off, all right? Mm, generous. Been up there for a full half hour. Have they? I just think she has to learn. There are certain things that are not acceptable. Look, Ken, I don't want to argue with you, but another time, could you leave that sort of thing to me, all right? You weren't here. No, I was out working. I'm sorry about that. It's just something I have to do to support myself and my daughter. Oh, I'm not saying that you should have been here. Thank you very much. No, no, what I'm saying is that... Oh, come on, Deirdre. She can't be allowed to take whoever she likes up there. Not who she likes, no. Well, then. But if it's a friend of hers who I've met and I know there's someone else in the house, I really don't see any harm in it. Well, I'm surprised. Oh, are you? Yes. Well, so am I. And do you know what surprises me? That you've got such a low opinion of our daughter. What? Well, that's what it amounts to, isn't it? You're saying she can't be trusted to be on her own with a boy. I mean, she's out of your sight for ten minutes and you start panicking. I would not panic. And I won't even ask you what you thought it was she might have been up to. Oh, come No! Because if your opinion of our daughter is so low, I think I'd rather you kept it to yourself. My opinion of our daughter is not low. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. In fact, it's because I have such a high opinion of her and because I care so much about her, they can't just turn my back and let her do whatever she wants. And it's because I don't care that I can, is that no, it? No, that's not what I'm because, saying. Because, let me remind you, it was you who walked out of here and turned your back on her. Oh. So don't you dare come in here and start lecturing me on how to bring her up. I'm bringing her up the best way I can. Yeah, right. And if that's not good all enough right. for you... Um, bye, Mrs. Barlow. Bye, love. Bye, Mr. Barlow. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you. Is it all right if I go back up by myself? Yes. I'll give you a shout when tea's ready. It's like Tracy said, Ken. You don't live here, and we do. So don't come in here laying down rules and regulations and telling me how to bring our daughter up because you lost any right to do that. So I, uh, I felt a pulse, gave her the kiss of life, oh. which I don't know how to do, not really, but, uh, well, I just made it up as I went along. Is she all right? Well, she's been admitted onto coronary care and, uh, well, according to Sister Walker, I uh, might just have saved her life. I'm proud of you. Mm, mm. Thanks a lot. I mean, I'm quite proud of myself, to tell you this, Ruth. So you should be. <laughs> OK, Superman. Who's going for the kids? You or me? I'll go. All right. I'm just doing egg and chips. Is that all right? Yep, fine. Oh. 
I don't know. I felt as if I'd done something worthwhile for once. Hmm. I suppose... Well, I suppose doctors and nurses... Hmm. I suppose they must feel like that every day, eh? I suppose they do. Hmm. Hmm. Right, kids. Now, come on. You can't leave me here on my own. Well, just the one, Audrey. And then I'm going to have to leave you. I've had a long day. Well, you're not going to make it any shorter, so you might as well enjoy the bit that's left. Yes, Audrey. Do the same, look, please. Hey, you don't know any good jokes, do you? I always forget last line. I think Rita's a bit down. Do you know, I think she's upset with all these breaking. Oh, dear. I'll tell you what. I'll come and join you, shall I? I'm not doing much behind here. If you would, love. You know, it's getting a bit hard going, if you know what. Graduate training? I mean, what does it mean? That she's been feather bedded for three years and knows nothing about anything unless she's read it in some book. Well, there's no need for us to get paranoid. I'm not paranoid. Who said I was paranoid? Look, I went to college for three years. It didn't do me any harm. No, but did it do you any good? Now, be honest. Where did you learn the most, eh? Was it from some college teacher or a certain supermarket manager not a million miles from here? Look, all I'm saying is let's give the girl a chance. Mm. Excuse me, Mr Gilroy. Yes, love, what is it? Only... You know, you said I should tell you if I wanted time off for my modelling. Oh, yes. Well, that way we all know where we are, don't we? Only I wondered about tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> That's a bit short notice, oh, that. Oh, please. I'd be ever so grateful, only if I turn them down, they might never ask me again. No, right. Well, well, go on, then. I dare say we'll manage. Do you know, you're the nicest person I've ever worked for. Pant a bit then, Jack, eh? Why should I worry? Why should I have a conscience about having time off? I didn't know you had. Well, no, no. But if I had, I soon blame it wouldn't. After listening to that little madam smarming round Gilroy, having all the time off she wants. So how does that affect you? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't affect me at all, does it? I mean, why should it? If she can have a time off for a modelling, I can have my time off for my undertaking. Right. I suppose I'm going to have to have grills put on side windows as well. Arthur keeps talking about Gary, but of course he won't spend his money. Yes, but it's money well spent and it puts your mind at rest. I don't know what'll put my mind at rest. I don't think he'll ever be at rest again. Come on. Mark. I don't. But it was bad enough it happening once, but with it happening twice. I just feel as if it's put the clock back two years. I feel just like I did when everything was happening with Alan. Oh, now, Luffy, come on. Rita, love, the one thing you do know about this, it's now to do with Alan. No, but it's still the same feeling. I feel as if there's somebody, somebody out there watching and waiting. No, love. I do. That's why I'm still here now. Because I'm frightened. I'm frightened to go back to my flat. I'm frightened of being on my own. Because they've been back once, haven't they? They took what they wanted. What's to stop them coming back again? <laughs> St so Mary's in it. Yeah. Where's the funeral is? Well, it's only a clock shrine. I think I'll have a walk over and watch. No, you will not. You know, that is definitely morbid, that hanging round flaming funerals. Do as you told, just go down to the rovers and give them the message, right? Oh, all right. It's lucky for you, it's my day off. You know, I'd just ring up, wouldn't I? But it's good you're going down, you see. You can tell Gilroy that I'm, I'm that seized up, I can't even make it to the phone. Pile on, you know. Oh, I will. I'll say you're crying out in pain. Oh, now, come on, don't make me look a bit of a man, eh? Man, you know, I know it's good, that. See, Gilroy, you'll be pleased if he thinks I'm suffering, the sadistic little swine. Anyway, you lay it on. Tell him I, I can't move. I'm, I'm flat on my back, you know. I tell you what, I'll say you gravely, eh? Like. Do you get it? <laughs> oh, yeah, terrific, yeah. Is that our yeah. door? It's all right, I want to be done. Hiya. All right, then. All right, okay. What, are you coming in that way for? Now, come on, use your head. I can't go out the front door and get in Don's car when I'm supposed to be flat on my back, can I? Where have you parked it? That looks straight right at the end of the game. Hey, come on, look. Tom oh, likes to see you early. Get his right. suits on. Hey, he lines us up, you know. Checks his appearance. Oh, I'd love <laughs> to see you. <laughs> Forget it. You go down to Rovers and give Scrooge the message. I'll hobble in tomorrow suffering but brave. Turning in for work despite the pain. He'll be impressed. I might even ask him for a ride. Oh, okay. <laughs> on your own? Mm. Audrey's gone into town, keeping in touch with the shop windows. Hey, she's a scream, you know, it's Audrey. If anybody asks her the way to the town centre, all her directions about your dress shops and boutiques. 
It's like straight on at this one and turn left at the other. She knows them all. Oh, Jim's the same. Only his directions are by pubs. <laughs> Oh, I'm heading into town myself in a bit. Try the job centre. Oh, well, I hope you get something. I can but try. How's uh, Ken? Oh. The other night, Tracy brings her boyfriend round. Mm -hmm. They're up in her room playing records. Ken goes on as if it's Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh. Tracy's not speaking to him. A muggins here is stuck in the middle. That must be very awkward for you. It is. Oh, I don't know, Liz. You know when you've been... Well intimate with somebody and it's over well it's hard to explain but i just feel as if there's a strange man in the house would you believe i actually feel shy with him follow the accident um. hello vera i've just come to tell you our jack won't be in today well it's his back you see it's gone hang on vera slow down but, well he woke up with it this morning well, it had locked, you see. Screaming, how can he walk? Couldn't move, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't go to the toilet. Don't right, right like... Vera, thank you, thank you. Don't go on, you'll have me shuddering. Well, it won't, it won't be coming in. Well, it couldn't happen on a worse day. I mean, we could really do with him. Well, he can't move. I mean, he's, 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 he's in agony. Every little movement, is it? Well, we'll just have to soldier on without him. Tell him I hope he soon gets better. Right, well, I'll be off. I won't keep you. Hey, shall I pop round this dinner time, Vera? Take him hot pot, see how he is. Eh? Oh, no, it's all right, love. I've got day. I'll, I'll look after him. Uh, but it was a nice thought, though. Don't mention it, love. <laughs> see you, then. See you, love. Come well, on, Well, it's sod's low, isn't it? Um, what is? Jack's poorly. His back's gone. Him and his back. The man's flaming useless. Well, he is today, and no argument. So you're not still going to this funeral, are you? I mean, there's me and Betty here. We're going to be mowed out this dinner. Oh, you'll manage. Betty, here's a tower of strength. Oh, thank you very much, I must say. Do you know, it's typical of you, this Alec. You're always skiving off. Skiving? I'm going to pay my last respects to an old and valued friend. The dead have claims too, you know. Well, they do in my book. Well, can I ring Liz MacDonald, then? Can you? Hell as like. After what's been said to me, I should think not. Right. Right, you go then. Go on off. Go and enjoy your funeral. I'm there to see an old pal under, not enjoy myself. Mind you, if it were Duckworth, <laughs> not that there's much hope of that. Not this time. I mean, his back will outlast the lot of us. <laughs> He's the last one he managed to say off as a funeral. This is our new addition to our staff, Mr. Watts. Sent to us by head office in their wisdom, our uh, graduate trainee. Miss uh, Morgan, is it? Miss Morgan, this is Mr. Watts, my stout right hand. How do you do? Hello. Right, now I must get you a name badge and some overalls. Better buy policy, I'm afraid, yes. You see, we have the staff, we never ciphers to our customers. And your first name is Miss... Uh... Vanessa. <clears throat> Vanessa. Right, uh, can you get a name badge and some overalls for Vanessa Morgan, management trainee? Uh, shouldn't that be management graduate training? No, no. We at Better Buys, we never have an officer corps, as I've said before. Every member of staff has a management baton in his or her knapsack. You see, Miss Morgan, I, uh, I graduated from the University of Life with first-class honours. I took my master's diploma here on the shop floor in the School of Hard Knocks. Uh, and uh, where did you go to university? Reading. Ah, oh, reading at Reading, eh? <laughs> well, Mr Watts also came up the hard way. As a dean must we all, because at better buys, the hard way is the only way. Unless, of course, some knucklehead at head office with all the brain power of a gnat has decided otherwise. But if so, he has not, of course, told me. Right. I'll leave Mr Morgan in your capable hands, then. Uh, Mr Holdsworth, I've got a lot on my plate at the moment. We all have room on our plates Maybe for one more portion, Norman. Maybe customers that this store now stays open until 8 o'clock on the Friday. Maybe. Hmm? Will you just look over this and see if I've left anything off? Let's have a look. Hello, Ted. What are you doing here? I've come to see you. Are you being done again? Yeah, they came in that way this time. I'm just making out a poem for the insurance of what they've taken and damage mm. they've done. Well, that seems to be everything. I can't think there's anything you've missed. Oh, well, the lads at the insurance are going to love me, aren't they? They'll be slashing their wrists. Oh, you've paid long enough. Anyway, these things happen. Well, I wish they'd stop happening to me. You've had a bad run, that's all. Two break-ins, one after the other. Mm, they say bad luck goes in threes, don't they? Well, that's a cheering thought, maybe. <laughs> well, in a shop these days, you just have to be philosophical mm. and insured. Uh. But it's unpleasant. My nephew heard the news somehow, gave me a tinkle, and anyway, anything I can do. I, I don't think so, Ted. We're more or less back to straight, thank you. Well, then I was just wondering, 
I don't know if you have anything planned for this evening. Only to shut that door at six o'clock and hope it stays shut. It'll do you good to get out for an hour or two. Do you fancy going out for a meal? Uh, just excuse me. Well, that's very nice of you, Ted. No, 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 no. The pleasure's all mine, I assure you. Right. Well, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, what sort of a place will it be? You know, just so I know what to wear. Oh, nice as you like. Oh. It won't be a chip shop job. Right. Well, call for you around uh, seven. Fine. Well, see you then. Bye-bye, Mavis. Bye. Oh, well, Rita, Derek and me would gladly have invited you for a meal, but still I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself with Ted. I've told you, he fancies you. Yeah, well, happened that's my third bit of bad luck. Well, the is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Ever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. side. What's going on? Is it my shoulder boss? I felt somewhere go. Cool. I don't know if you've seen the floral tributes, uh, the one shaped like a question mark, that's mine. Not implying any doubt as to Arthur's destination, you understand, no, no. No, no, it was a wonderful turn. In his pomp, you see, he'd, he'd invite any question from his audience. Cup finals, oh, he'd give you the whole teams, the lot, referees and linesmen thrown in. Oh, yes, wonderful. I assume there's going to be a, a headstone. In memoriam. That's all it wants on it, as far as I'm concerned. What are you doing now? It's me guts boss to give him some jip. God. First it's your shoulder, now your guts are bad. The client's in better shape than you, and he's been dead a week. I... I had expected a bigger turnout, actually. Mind you, the weather's been pretty treacherous recently, hasn't it? Uh, would you, uh, would you care for a minto at all? Uh, there's no disrespect. Not out here. Not, not to my mind, anyway. Uh... Gaffer! What now? Look, it's no good calling age, you kid. Get in there, get that corner, will you? <laughs> feeling? Fine. I'm feeling fine. Well, that's the way. You're the young man, aren't you? In the lift. Sister told me what you did, and I want to thank you. No, no, no. It was nothing. I'm just glad to help. 
I'll never forget you. All right, Mrs. Oakes. I'm just telling this young man. Thanking you. <laughs> oh, no, it's OK. I'm just glad you're doing well, that's all. Anyway, I'd uh, better get back to work or I'll get shot. I'll, uh, I'll come and pop in on you tomorrow, OK? Right, bye now. Martin, yeah? just a minute. Oh. You know, you did really well yesterday. And you've never had any training. Well, no. Well, I've seen on the films, you know. No, I just played it by ear. Hope for the best. Have you ever thought about training? To be a nurse, I mean. You seem to be cut out for it. Me? A nurse? Well, why not? Something wrong with being a nurse? Uh, uh, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Jack, what's up? He's after me. Oh? Gilroy, he was at the funeral. Oh, my God. Look, 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 look I've got a room to get an alibi. He's bound, he's bound to come here. Look, I'll, I'll get in bed and I'll be here all the time, right? Oh, my God, it, it's him. He's, he's here. Look, swear blind and been here all the time. You, you keep him talking while I get in bed, eh? Right. Right. Oh! oh. Come on, woman, I want to get upstairs and get in bed. He's looking through the letterbox and oh see Oh, my God. Look, Vera, just, just get a shot of him. Tell him, tell him, tell him anything, but please get a shot of him. I'll tell you what, get on there, get on there. All right. Now cover you up with, oh. with this sheet. Oh. And try and look, uh, try and look poorly. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. Oh. When your husband gets home, your husband who's supposed to be lying in his sickbed, give him a message from me, will you? Tell him he's finished. What, what's that? I've just seen him at a funeral. Well, he's not acting sick on my time. He can go moonlighting for somebody else. Tell him he's fired. I don't know what you're talking about. No, well, he will. Just tell him he can collect his cards from the Rovers. Well, come in. Tell him yourself. Eh? Come in here, shouting the odds. You mean he's here? Of course he is. Poor devil. He's in agony. Look! Oh. oh, hello, boss. Thanks for coming visiting me. Oh, good God. Something up, boss? Well, I've... I've been... I, I've, I've just... I thought I saw you at a funeral. Me? Well, you might soon enough, it did. I mean, agony. I've lost... lost the use of my legs. It's amazing. Oh. It really... I'll tell you this, Vera. That man must have a double. I don't think I've got a drop in the house. Oh, no, no. When I say a double, I, I mean, I mean, the fella I saw at the funeral is the dead spit of Jack. Well, his dad did ride a bike, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, so what they do say, that we've all got brothers somewhere in the world, don't they? We don't know about it. It's... I apologise, Jack. I'm, I'm very sorry. Anyway, just uh, you rest yourself and uh, try and get well. No, yeah. boss, you, you know me. As soon as I can move up, I'll, I'll be into work. See, I don't like letting you down, you see. No, no, no. Well, uh, just, uh, just rest, Jack. Yes. Oh! I can't explain, boss! So don't bother. As soon as you've got the use of your legs back, get down to that Rovers and collect your cards. I've been all over town this morning trying to find Alfie a decent pair of pyjamas. The ones he's got, are they uh, indecent? <laughs> Give up. No, you know what I mean. Because I'd love to see him in something really snazzy, you know, silk or something. Mm. But as far as Alfie's concerned, there are two sacred words when it comes to pyjamas, Lavisca and Wincy Hertz. <laughs> Mr. Sugden's of the same mind. Does Alf still wear pyjamas that have a string through the trousers? Oh, no, no. Oh, I say this for him, he has moved on to button fastening. Oh, Mr. Sugden still has the cord, and he has a special device for re-threading the cord if it comes adrift. <laughs> ladies, ladies, it's getting a bit near the bone, is this? You're not in the tap room now, you know. You're back soon. Good oh. luck. Oh, I'm back all right. Uh, and while I've been out, I've managed to do a bit of useful work. I've sacked Duckworth. Sacked him when he's ill? Ill, ill me foot. He was at the funeral. Well, I didn't know he was a pal of Arthur's too. No, not as a mourner. No, carrying the coffin. 
Moonlighting for that flaming undertaker. Little rascal. Uh, he tried to dodge me, but I tracked him down. I told him. I told him straight. <coughs> Got a visitor. Well, he's wasting his time. Get on to the job centre. Tell him we need another salamander. Boss, boss can, I, can, I have a, can I have a word? I'm it, not your boss not anymore. Can I, can I just have a, have, a, have a minute? No, you're wasting your breath. There's no excuse for what you were trying on, claiming sick pay off me while you were working in my time, time I was paying for. Yes, but don't, don't you know, I mean, it could have been a cry for help, couldn't it? You're talking about a cry for help. Well, I'm, the money you're paying me, it, I, I got desperate. You'll see. be a flaming sight more desperate without him. Look, I, I admit, I, I was at fault. Oh, that's it's very handsome of you, Jack. Look, if you just give us half a chance. No, no. I've had enough of your bad back and your dodgings. But I'm begging, I'm begging, Alec. I mean, not for me, for our Vera. Hang on a minute, look, Alec. We need another barrel on. But this was a prank, Alec. It, oh, no, it was a prank, I swear. Right, right. Your last chance. And it is your last. You're a prince. I'm not. I'm too soft for my own good. But I tell you this, that bad back of yours ever keeps you off work again. You'll have to show me a full set of x-rays and a sick note from the Pope. Now get down that cellar and change that barrel. Right, boss. Hi. What sort of a day have you had? Usual. Look, uh, Tracy. Uh... Oh, Tracy, come on. This is childish. Uh, no, no, no. I didn't mean that. Uh, Tracy, can we talk about this? Oh. Right, Ginger's running low. Look right, sharp. Right, right. I was surprised you gave him his job back. What made you change your mind? Well, I'll tell you. Stood there in that church at old Arthur's funeral service. I got to thinking of the things that really matter in this life. I suppose you do at times, like I mean, we're not of us here for very long, are we? And as I watched Jack begging me for his job, which I enjoyed, by the way, the begging, put me in mind something the vicar said. Unto them that ask shall be given. And so I let him have his job back. Because there's no way now Duckworth will dare ask for a rise for the next two years, and if he does, he'll not be given. Alec, you're a real Christian on the quiet. Yes, love? No, no, no. Hey. She can't be his girlfriend. Oh, don't be naive, Norman. Brendan Scott doesn't live the life of a monk, you know. Oh, I know he's a randy swine, but there's no way Vanessa could fancy Brendan Scott. Well, let's face it, he's nearly as old as you are. Hey, just a minute. Mature men are like rare wine, you know. See these hands? Time. Good evening. Hello, love. Do you know Ted Sullivan? Oh, sure I do by sight. Hello. Pleased to meet you, Ted. <laughs> Same to you. Now, it's a uh, vodka and tonic and... Let's see. I'll have a dry sherry, please. Right with you. Right. Good evening, Reed. Oh. Hello, Reg. Can I get you and your friend a little drink? Uh, no, thank you. We're just having the one and then we're going to eat. Ah. Bon appetit, then. Right. Right, where was I? You were saying a mature man is like a rare wine. That is right. And do you know why? Yeah. Once his bottle's gone, he's had it. Hi. Brought you a coffee. No, oh, thanks. What are you doing lurking up here? I'm working. I'm doing my own work. Oh, no, yeah. Listen, your dad knows you're avoiding him and it's very embarrassing. That's his problem. No, it's my problem because I'm the one who sat downstairs with him and it's making me feel awkward. You were all for him moving in, love, when he needed looking after. Don't opt out now. Well, he embarrasses me in front of my friends. He treats me like a little kid. He cares about you. I know he's a bit heavy-handed about it sometimes. Not just sometimes, all the time. When's he going home? Australian wines. Well, if you say it's good, I'm sure I'll like it. Thank you. You know, Ted, it's very nice coming out like this. Peter, the pleasure's all mine. Now, look, this bother you've been having at the shop, these break ins and one thing and another. It's par for the course in the retail trade these days. You see it all over. Oh, I know it's not that 
unusual, but don't make it any easier, does it? Doesn't stop me dreading the next, whatever it is. Why put up with it then? <laughs> now look, I hope I'm not being presumptuous, but I've known you and the business a good few years now. And my guess is, you don't have to go on with it. You could sell up and live quite comfortably. I suppose I could, if I wanted to. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that retirement is the simple answer. When you've worked hard all your life, it's a big change. I'm not sure I know what to do with myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> you've got to work at it. Having enough money is a good start. It makes everything else possible. And you can live wherever you want to. Enjoy doing the things you want to do. Now me, I'm very happy about retiring. Mind you, I think you've got to have the right companion. I mean, it's no use doing it on your own. So, I haven't got everything just the way I want it. Not yet, anyway. Cheers. Friendly smile to greet the day, Mrs. Fairclough. I wasn't aware, but I had one. Mm. Little wonder you've got so many admirers. I think you're mixing me up with somebody else. That's 30p. Even if they are ready for turtling. I beg your pardon? Retiring. Isn't that what your gentleman friend does not do for a living? Dead, isn't it? Who told you? Ah, there isn't much you can't do. Scramble round here with a pint of lager and lime. Or a sweet sherry. What's have I done? Well, I'll tell you what, Ted's got a lot more about him than some folk round here in gainful employment serve him. Mm, not that they'd let me retire early, Mavis, the indispensable executive. Oh, no. I think the only way they get me out of better bites is in a wooden box. Really? Well, if it's half as strong as your carrier bags, I wouldn't rely on thandles to get you past front door. Reg, are you coming or what? Is that all you want? No, no, I'll have a package of extra strong. One asset I can't be uh, cheated on is all my own teeth. <laughs> because we've got to shift them chickens before we open. Oh, very executive, Reg. Listen, you're moving the chickens. I'm doing the paperwork, right? Well, either way, they've still got to be shifted and fast. And just keep private business private. When I'm talking to Mrs. Burke, don't say nothing about it. Yes. You're kidding. <laughs> well, it's either that or an air hostess. <laughs> I think it's the uniform that wheels to me. And they all mess. Are you serious? Yeah, well. I'm seriously thinking about it, yeah. I don't know, shouldn't we spend that much time in work? It'd be a lot more satisfying than I thought it was leading somewhere. What's brought all this on? Uh, saving someone's life's pretty good at sharpening your focus, don't you think? That's because you were the only one there, not because you had career thoughts. Yeah. Well, Sister Walker seems to think a bit more because uh, she pulled me up on the corridor the other day, started putting these big ideas in my head about nurse training. Oh, well, both she must know what she's talking about. Mm. But what? Hey, you don't think I can do this, do you, eh? I do, if you put your mind to it. Hmm. But um, I thought you had to have all levels and that. Well, no, I do. I think you do. <sighs> I don't know how far you get with the two CSEs and the caterers to Yeah, well, I'll have to like, find out, won't I? Oh. Yeah. Right, the Pringle calls. Come and get me at the garage, right? Yeah. So I want to see him, and I want to see him now. He owes me money. Uh, nice. Mum, where'd you put my football kit? Back in the chair. Oh, brilliant. Wait, hey, Steve, you died up there or what, son? I've not borrowed a pair of his jeans. That should move you quickly. No more bucket of water, more like it. Right, see you later. Come on, you. See you. See you, Mum. <laughs> Bye, love. Smells all right to me. Are you sure? Well, I've cut worse. What's the complaint? Oh, a lady bought one yesterday, and when she got it home, she reckoned it smelled off. Is it past its sell-by? Of course not. We don't take risks like that with meat. Hey, well, if there's any going cheap, I wouldn't mind a couple. Well, I think it's all right. 
Anyway, you usually get discoloration if it's dodgy, don't you? Is the thermostat working on the freezer? Oh, very impressive. The teacher that at university did they in economics? No, but I occasionally eat in my spare time. Right, well, you can empty the freezer and stock it again with a fresh batch. And you can check the thermostat. Oh, and Vanessa, what it is is some people see their degree as the end of their education. But here, within the Better Buy structure, the bright ones see it as a beginning. Fine, I'll try and remember that. What's all that about? Oh, just basic ground rules. You should try putting in all soft cheeses. I usually shot them up. Uh, hey, hmm? I've got a rotating chickens. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Bet. I don't know where I am today. Where's your team leaders then? <sighs> Half's gone to the council and Audrey's being wax finished by a young bloke called Josh. That's major gossip, Deirdre. Come on. Nah, he's a new hairdresser who's taken over from a regular. She only had it trimmed a week ago. Well, I hope he's got stamina. <laughs> it's no joke, though, Deirdre. There's four of us at the Rovers and it still feels light handed. That's because you got rid of the best one. Jim. Look, I'm sorry about the misunderstanding about Liz. I tried. There's no misunderstanding, but your husband's a two-faced liar. And if I was you, I'd look to your staff, for he's employed the one with the least experience and even less brains. Now, apparently she's good at something, but from what I've heard, it's not being a barmaid. Oh, now, come on, Jim. Hey, I stuck up for her. Oh, well, I mean, pop round and tell her. She'd be absolutely delighted. She'll not be busy, either. Deirdre, there's a wee list there for the garage, love. I'll send Steve round later on. Right. Thanks, love. Hey, you've not put that on for Thalmdale. I'm going... Oh, I just got so fed up with jeans and T-shirts. <laughs> oh, I never tried jeans. I never thought I was tall enough. No, she's not overweight. She's under height. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot. See you later. Hello. Oh, I wish you'd stop digging at me. And I wish you'd learn to keep your gob shut. Well, I never said anything to Reg. How come he knows about Ted retiring? I can see ways he finds out everything I don't know. Anyway, he's been very good to you recently. I don't think you should have been so rude to him. I wasn't rude. I was sarcastic. Anyway, it puts me three stairs above him. Hey, look, you haven't said. Said what? Well, how the meal went. We ate it. <laughs> you know what I mean. Ted and all that. Well, do you know, I just look at him and I think, he's really worked this out properly. Planned for his early retirement, properly, I mean, not just saved up for a garden shed. He's put a bit of energy on one side to enjoy his time. Makes me a bit jealous, to be honest. Jealous? Well, there are days when I really enjoy this job. Days when I wonder whether it's all just an excuse. I don't know. Excuse for what? For not having anything else to go to. What did Ted say exactly? I can't remember exactly, but it sounded a lot better than give us a Gazette Rita. Oh, no, hang, hang on, love, I'll get them. No, thank you very much, yes. Yeah. Yes, boss. That barrel mild once changed, you know. It's all right, I've done it. Oh? I nipped down earlier and sorted it, you know. Oh, good lad. Yes, and I've had a word with better, and I'm going to sort out the backyard because it's looking a bit rough. Yes, the cats have been very active, haven't they? Yes. And they're all stars on your chart, aren't they, Jack? What about that floor? Have you cleaned it? It's on my list, boss. Right. God, I'm knackered. Doing so much, you're showing me up. I have it to do, Raquel. You see, I was about that far off being booted out. Well, you're mental moonlighting at funerals. Oof, I don't know how you can. No, it's a skilled job. Carrying a coffin? Carrying a coffin properly. Now, don't you knock it. They paid me three quid an hour just for keeping me balanced. Do you like an audience while you're working, Jacko? It's all right. Alex asked him to do it. And I'm asking you to give him a hand. Well, I'm not dressed for it. Neither is Jack. Well, where's Betty? Having a day off. Let's face it, she deserves one. She's covered for you often enough. Jack, yes. what about that floor? I've asked Raquel to do it. Oh, it's just silly. The floor's filthy. She's not dressed for it. Splendid. I knew it wasn't the thermostat. Well, cheer up, Miss Morgan. At least you're on a learning curve. Step up from university. I heard it was all blind dates and local clinics. <laughs> See, the main thing about retail marketing is you've got to be clever enough to make it look simple. It's when you make the mistake of looking too clever that you fall down. Right. <clears throat> Me? I don't know how you stick it. I've had more lectures this past week than I ever got at Reading. Oh, techno notice. This is jealous. Of what? Well, you're educated, aren't you? It rubs some folk up the wrong way. Well, it's not as if I've tried to flaunt it. 
And believe me, it wouldn't be difficult round here. Oh. Mr. Watts, man the bridge, have business on the pirate ship. Okay. Oh, come on, Mr. Holdsworth. I'm up to my eyes, innit? I've got two deliveries due. You can cope. You are trained well. But I'm starving. What about me break? Ta da! On me? <laughs> right. Hmm. Mr. Watts. Mr. Scott, you never said you were coming. Mind you, you don't have to tell us that you're coming. It's just that usually you, you give us warning, I mean, notification. It's one of the joys of being an area manager. One is sometimes in the area. It's not just a glib title, Mr. Watts. Mr. Holdsworth? Uh, gone to the dentist's. Yeah? Well, have you seen me? See what you've inspired me to. Real Helen Keller stuff. I'm that determined to get a conversation out of you. Tracy, I apologize. I should never have made any show out of Mark coming up here. Well, we're listening to music, that's all. Yeah, I know, love, I know. I just couldn't believe that you've made a scene. You made me look like... Yeah, look, love, I overreacted. I'm sorry. I just hadn't got used to the house rules. I think you made up a few of your own. Well, anyway, you're probably pleased to hear I'm moving out today, back to the flat. But no, your mother hasn't booted me out. It was my own idea. You're not fair. Well, I'm clearly doing none of us any good staying here, am I? Anyway, if you want some lunch, I'm just putting the soup on. Last week's figures. Two grand up on last year. There's nothing grand about the figure two, Mr. Watt. The, the thousand. Thousand, I meant. We blame the recession. Oh, how clever. Will the supervisor go to check out the door, please? Immediately. How's Vanessa doing? Oh, I think she'll be all right. I, I spent a lot of time with her showing the shop floor, like you told me to. Oh, she certainly looks busy enough. Yeah, well, that's the old trick. Knocking the education out of them before they can start to learn, eh? <laughs> that, that's Reg's quote, not mine. Yes, well, I wouldn't take Reg's philosophy too much to heart, Mr. Watson. After all, I'd hate her father to feel that he's wasted his money putting her through Reading. Mm, too true. Her father? Do you know him? Vanessa Morgan. Mm. Well, well, Walter Morgan. Chairman of Better Buys. Yes, yes, he and Veronica tried for years before they got young Vanessa in there. She really is the apple of his eye. Oh, well, I thought I mentioned. <laughs> is good for business. Anybody who can pull a pint is good for business, Alec. Oh, don't talk so daft. She's young. She brings a bit of light in. And just for the record, Liz pulled a pint a damn sight faster than she does. Don't start that again. Fat, she got less publicity when she got the push. There's your gin and tonic and your vodka and a pint a bit of coming up. Right, there you go, love. What do you want me to do with change? I'll bring it up. I'm sorry, we dropped last week. Don't worry about it. You're not going to do a moonlight on me. Vodka for Rita. Gin and tonic pour moi. And a pint of bitter for the lad in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> do you nope. mind? We're in the middle of a bit of business. Oh, and I'm sorry. I'm shifted and I'm in the way. Well, of course you are. No, no, I've got to get back to my mates. There you go, Rita. Thanks, love. Cheers, Reg. You're welcome. Uh, Ta-ra. What exactly do you want? How's your day been? So far. Tell me, how long does a filling take these days? I've really got no idea. Well, tell Mr. Holdsworth I waited, won't you? Oh, um, do bear in mind what I said about young Vanessa. You see, we view graduate trainees as the company's future. Show her the basics by all means, but don't treat her like a fool. Because one day, we could all end up working for her. Oh, whoa, whoa, 
What do you think you're doing? What you told us. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean you. No, no, I told Vera. Vera's got to do it. What? I can't sort this lot out on my own. Well, you'll have to, because I want Vanessa on wines. Oh, why can't I go on wines, eh? I get all the rotten jobs. She's only just started. Shut up, Vera. You see, Vanessa, on wines, you'll get a, a stronger signal of the economics of this place, you see? As we always say, if they're not buying the booze, they're not buying. <laughs> Come this way. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> mm, well, it's, uh, it's about what you were saying the other day, you know, about uh, that nurse training and all that. I thought it struck a chord when I said it. I wasn't just flattering you, you know. You're sharp, affable, and you're not afraid of hard work. Between you and me, that's a league above some of the students I've had on here recently. Mm. Yeah, well, that's just it, isn't it, really? I mean, they've got something on me already. What? Well, qualifications. You, you haven't been down to the education department yet, then? Uh, no, why? If you had, you'd know that you count as a mature student. You what, 24? Well, nearly, yeah. Well, you can sit the DC test. Entrance exam. Uh, now, I hope you don't mind me saying this, sister, but uh, well, I really don't like exams. I'm, I'm not very good in APC. Martin, don't talk yourself out of it before you've given it a chance. <sighs> Nip down later. Ask to speak to Russell Carver. He's head of nurse training. Just tell him you're interested. Look, if you like, I'll give him a ring and put a good word in. They start a new intake in April. OK, then. All right. You've talked me into it. Brilliant. Let me know how you get on. I will do. Oh, my samples. I think I need a winch fitting. Oh, don't make us feel as if we're forcing, yeah? No, Jibby, you don't mind. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Right. Anyway, thanks for giving me a hand, though. Ah, no problem. I think I'll try to get back to school next week so you can warn your mates. And no trying to take advantage of the fact I can't move very fast, because by the time I catch up, their detention will be double. <laughs> Well, I'll give you a hand. Oh, all right. Hiya. Oh, what the hell's this, then? I've just bought a new blouse. Cheer myself up a bit. Oh, have you know? Well, good for you. I've just lost 20 quid in an engine block that was worth twice what I got for it. It's all right. Don't worry. It's for work. What? We aren't bad. Listen, if you have gone grovelling to Alec Gilroy, I will never speak to you again. What's so funny? It's not at the road, is it? Where is it then? I've just been for an interview down Legion. Well, you never mentioned any. Well, I might not have got it. As it happened, they virtually snapped my hand off. I think I want all my applicants under 50. Well, I mean, are you going to be happy at that? Hey, it's 80 pence an hour more than pug wash pays. <laughs> hey, belter, come here. <laughs> Don't you come near me with them. I'll see you later, when you finish. I'll see you shortly then. You're doing really, really well, you know. It's amazing how quickly you're picking all this up. Thanks, but I haven't really had... Mr. Watts! Reg, Reg, where have you been? What the hell are you trying to do to me, you? No, listen, you see, Reg, you can't is... have her up. Wines and spirits, it's an experienced job. No, no Reg, you see, the thing is... Listen, she... listen. There's not a lot to learn after booze. You're going to have to try to run the joint within a week. That's what Brenda Scott wants. No, Reg, you don't uh, understand... I'm that... sorry, Miss Morgan, no. Uh, there has been a mistake. Stop running with what's mocking. I was put on here. No, it's an aberration on Mr. Watts' behalf. We don't have rookies up wines and spirits. Of course he will not. Monkeys could do it. See, see, I'll leave you in charge a few hours and see what happens. You said you were nipping out for half an hour. Oh well, I didn't know you wanted babysitting. I mean, I could have got you. I don't need babysitting. But Brendan Scott did. Brendan Scott did. Yeah. It's all right, Reg. It's all right. I was quick enough to lie for you again. How are your wisdom teeth, anyway? What did he want? Well, as a matter of fact. Well, as a matter of fact, he was just in the area oh. as a, an area manager. There was uh, nothing of, uh, of, uh, of importance, uh, really. Right, right. I'll get some cover on them wines and spirits and... Are you still here? Well, I haven't had a break yet. Oh, you haven't... Well, you haven't done much work yet, have you? This isn't Reading, you know. God, what are they like, eh? Universities. So how long's the training? Uh, three years. Well, no, three years of a many good. Might be a bit longer of a failure. Eh? <laughs> then again, it might be a damn sight shorter if I turn out to be a turkey. <laughs> like two weeks. 
Gail, I can't work out if you're excited about this or not. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm struggling a bit with this one, Martin. Well, what's the matter? Well, you're making me feel old, to tell you the truth. Oh. The bit left behind. What? Look, we talked about this when we first got together, I mean, me being older. Yeah? I thought then that you'd want to go off, do something different, because you were ten years younger. Yes. Well, it's taken me this long to get used to the idea that you're settled. And now this. This is all getting a bit heavy, don't you think, Gail? What, you think you're feeling a bit old because I want to go off and get myself a decent job? No, not that. I'm feeling old because you're starting off in another direction. I mean, I'm stuck at the cafe with Alma. When I was your age, I had two kids. Yes, and at my age, I've got three. And what the hell are you talking about, Gail, eh? <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. I'm sorry. I've had a bad day. Yeah, well, if it makes you feel this bad, I'll just forget the whole thing, eh? Oh, no. So? Be silly. Look, you go round and see that nursing tutor, eh, and get all the information you need. We'll take it a step at a time. We'll get used to it slowly, won't we? And uh, whatever Vera's drinking. Oh, thanks, John. I've had a lager and lime. Uh, see, what it is, Jack, is Thorpe wants his gear back. That suit you got from me. Yeah, but did, did you explain? Yeah, I apologise then, you but as far as funerals go, the only one he wants to see you at is yours. I mean, you let him down, didn't you? Yeah, what Legging else could like I do? That. Stayed and seen the funeral through like anybody with a bit of decency. Hey, how's Gilroy been then? Miserable. Oh, not a minute's peace. Yeah, well, just think, Con, blow this and you're out of a job completely. And you think that won't appeal to him? Yeah, well, out of work, out of home. Look, I never said a word. Will you give us stirring at you? No, Rita. I've not seen her, Reg. Mm. Must be having a night in. She having company, do you know? I'm a landlady, Reg, not a clairvoyant. Look, Bet, I didn't push Liz McDonald out of the job. I was asked to stop on. I know you were, love. Well, all this atmosphere's doing me head and it's, it's distracting me. Is it, love? Well, I'm sorry. Only, you see, I'm used to somebody who can concentrate on more than one thing at once. Well, if it really grates that much, I'll get my coat and go. You will not. Bet. Just get off that girl's back. And you get off mine. I'm sick of you undermining my authority. Well, just calm down. You're up and down like Eva Braun. I don't like her attitude. Well, I shouldn't think she's mad keen on yours. Now, look, Alec. No, you look. Like how this stopping, Liz Mack isn't coming back. It's done. It's finished. Now, we all have a job to do in serving the medically untellable and underprivileged society. All it involves is manning the pumps and smiling like imbeciles. Bring it down to screaming, will you, Curly? You're not making any sense. You don't get it, do you? All you've said so far is they've put a plant on the shop floor. Well, that don't strike me as suicide material. Not a plant, plant. A plant, Vanessa. The trainee? She's Walter Morgan's daughter. The chairman's daughter. A plant? Yes, a plant. And what's on my record? I've treated her like a skivvy since we got landed with her. Why? Because she's a graduate. Since when were graduates targets for blood sports? Well, it's Reg. He got sensitive about her being overqualified. But that's not the point. If she did decided to grass, she's got all the dirt on me. Why do you think I've been trying to sweeten her up all afternoon? Well, it serves you right, you miserable devil. How do you think she feels? Why, do you have a very shook Uncle Fester? No. No? Well, no, I've, um, I've not had a chance to tell him yet. Well, tell him now. No. You're a naughty boy. Why are you? I'm not doing anything wrong, Angela. Not half. He'll hang himself. Look, I've thought about it, and if Reg wants to dig his own grave, that's up to him. But for every ounce of good guy I might be, I still owe Reggie a big one, don't I? My promotion at Miles Platting, remember? Oh, come on, Curly. You can't hold that against him forever. Well, I'm not saying anything, right? Um, any idea if Mrs. Furcliffe is entertaining tonight? No, sorry, I haven't. I've no idea, sorry. Mm. Guilt by omission. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Kenneth, that's a nice surprise. Didn't expect to see you up about so soon. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, well enough to go back to work, thanks, Alf. Now, you sure you're not jumping the gun? Oh, I shall ease my way in very slowly, don't worry. Mm. No uh, refereeing this dinner time, then? <laughs> don't think so, somehow. <laughs> no. I'll have a ham and tomato, please. All oh, right. It must feel a bit strange being by yourself again now. Yeah, you've got the hang of living with young people again. It's amazing how quickly you lose touch living on your own. Yeah, so 138, please. All right. Oh, good morning, boys. Hello. It's you. Ken, I didn't recognise you with the clothes on. Oh, good morning, Philip. <laughs> a vertical and all. You see, I'm more I'm used to seeing him in a reclining position, aren't I? Well, uh, right, I, I must be going. How is your back, Kenneth, love? Oh, uh, it's fine now, thanks for this. Oh, good. Well, if you want to toil in, or you want a little massage, my hands are still very supple. Yes, well, I'll know where to come, won't I? Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go, although I'll miss my lift. Um, <laughs> oh, bye, bye love. See, see you later. Hey, Al, if you see Percy, you won't tell him I was chatting up another fella, will you? If he found out, he'd kill me. You'll be dusting off your best dark suit this week, then, will you? Hey? For Reggie's funeral. I take it you're still going to keep him in the dark about Vanessa being Lord better by his daughter. No, I'm not, as a matter of fact. I've had me a bit of sadistic pleasure. And after watching him make us swell out the loading bay on Saturday afternoon, I've decided to take pity on the poor bloke. I'm going to put him out of his misery this morning. I'd let him stew a bit longer if it were me. Yes, well, we can't expect you to understand the better by ethos of encouraging the nobler side of the human nature. Says the rat who dropped Reggie in it in the first place. We have to strive above our baser instincts. I can't see the likes of Lord Morgan getting where they are today by letting petty jealousies drive their professional ambitions. They probably knew when discretion was the better part of valour, too. I hope you're not suggested I'm caving in. No, I'm merely pointing out that behind all this nobler instincts flannel is a man who's smart enough to know when to call it a day. What's all this, then? Oh, what? Well, what's wrong with school these days? Free period. Wow, what's wrong with work these days? Ah, well, Steve will be able to manage himself down there for a bit. Chip off the old block. He'll do right enough. Well, good to see you bearing up, anyway. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Rover's boycott. I was expecting withdrawal symptoms by now. Ah, uh, well, I'll tell you, it's not easy, son. I mean, cars up here in front of the telly's all very well, but, you see, you miss that dash of washing up water in the Rover's beer. It gives you that extra buzz, you know what I mean? Still, at the night, I'll be all right. I'm way down the Legion. Well, I make the most of it before Mum gets there, starts cramping your style. Hey, not at all. So she serves me all I want here, and she'll serve me all I want down there. Isn't that right, love? Do you want this inside your stomach or down front of it? Look, I was only joking. Listen, here, I'm dead glad you've got a job. Not that you need it, mind you. Oh, no. All that business you've got coming in at the moment keep us well comfortable, won't it? It's just a quiet patch. Jim, six months ago, you'd have been at work for two hours by now with a couple of jobs done already. Now look at you. Half past nine on a Monday morning, rubbing sleep from your eyes and paying Steve to mind an empty shop. Don't you tell me I don't need to work. And what's so funny? Nothing. Listen, I thought free periods were for private study, never mind private skiving. Ah, oh, well, there you see, Father. Chip off the old block. See you later. See you, Mum. Bye, love. If you're looking for a woman's weekly, Betty, they won't be here till tomorrow. Oh, heck. What am I going to read with my tea tonight? Well, we've plenty of other titles. Take a pick. I'm a bit too long in the tooth to start something new. Listen, it's a taste for new horizons keeps the heart young. Is that what they say? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Anything else, Andy? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, no little treats, like a box of chocolates, a packet of scented envelopes. <laughs> Well, I've been told that you've been stepping out with a lady friend recently. I just thought you might want something to sweeten her Monday morning. Uh, no, thanks. I'll just set them in. All right. Cheers. Thank you very Bye. much. Right. <laughs> what are you trying to do, frighten your customers away? You know, I was just giving him a few ideas. The only ideas you'll give him is to avoid this place like the plague. Poor lad. Oh, never mind. She's given me an idea. <laughs> True romance. You've convinced me, Rita. <laughs> Live dangerously. It's the nearest I'll ever get to the real thing at my age. <laughs> I don't read it all at once. Oh, I'll try and restrain myself. Darling. <laughs> Spring is definitely in the air this morning. In your head it is. Oh, come on, Rita. You can't say that your thoughts haven't been turning that way recently. Who can't? Well, look, Ted isn't paying you all this attention out of the kindness of his heart. We enjoy each other's company and that's it. And when are you enjoying each other's company next? 
Tonight, as it happens... Another candlelit restaurant? No, a bowl of spaghetti and a bottle of plonk upstairs, if you must know. Uh, and before you ask the answers, no. No what? No more questions. Go make coffee. Morning. That all you can say? Right, what do you want me to say? Well, you could get up off your backside and make me some breakfast for a start. Oof, I couldn't do that. Not on my day off. Well... I hope you're going to do some tidying up before I get back. Phyllis will do that when she comes. It's what I pay her for. So what are you going to do all day? Just lie there? Who knows? That's the beauty of having a day off. I lie here till I feel like getting up. Beyond that, well, I hadn't really thought. Hey, I could come in the rovers if you like. Brighten up your day with some of my inimitable wit. Why, what's it to you? I live here as well, don't forget. So, I'm not getting in your way, am I? We're both free to come and go as we please. It's my house, my life. I've got no commitments anymore. I'll do as I choose, thank you very much. Would these be of any help, Miss Morgan? Oh, yes, thank you. Only I know how unpleasant this job can be. Do I get a pair? I, I don't think these will fit you, Mrs Duckworth. Perhaps something from the cleaner's room would be more suitable. I'm not trailing up there. Who do you think I am? Well, you're doing an excellent job here, Miss Morgan. I shall find out who's responsible for this and give them a severe dressing down. Don't you worry. What's got into him? Can only be one thing, can't it? He's in love. Oh, no. Well, he's never given anybody else a pair of rubber gloves before. Oh. Idling again, Miss Morgan? No, I am not. Uh, dear, oh dear, what's all this? Thought we'd build a few sandcastles this morning, did we? Surprised you didn't bring your buckets and spade with you. If I could possibly just see, wrestling and relaxation might be the more despised end of academic life, but here in the real world we order things differently. We've done all the heavy lifting without your assistance. If you'll let us get on with it, we'll do the sweeping up. Oh, well, that's very noble of you. I notice you need a pair of gloves to do it, while an experienced man like Mrs Duckworth does not. Mr Holdsworth? Yes, what is it? Could I have a word, please, in private? Can't this wait? I have a Herculean schedule this morning. No, it can't wait. <sighs> very well, my office 15 minutes. Thank you. Right. I want this lot cleared up straight away. Do you understand that? Anything you say. Tower 105. Thanks, Lorraine. Great. <laughs> Lorraine! Hiya! How are you keeping? You look well. I've just had some very good news, that's why. Oh, wow. Wandering Palms has finally given notice on his room. Who? That Richard bloke who lodges on the top floor. Did you never meet him? Can't keep his hands to himself. Oh, I remember long fingernails and nylon shirts. shirts. That's it. <laughs> so who are you getting in? Well, that's what I've come about. Me and Denise, we don't want to risk another fellow, not oh, no. after the last one. And I know that you were looking for somewhere. Oh, well, that's kind of you, Lorraine. But, well, I think I'm fairly settled where I am, thanks. Oh, somewhere nice? Somebody nice. Tell me more. Spider, <laughs> please. <laughs> Hot. Well, what do you expect? They're not called up puff and out. That's all very well, though, I really, but anyway, blooming tongue, I've been in the oven too long. It's better too hot than too cold. And you'd have your work cut out if they weren't hot enough. How do you mean? Trade descriptions, that. Hot pots are meant to be hot. And you'd have folks complaining to you if they weren't. Councillor. Sandcastles, bucket and spade. <laughs> oh, uh, youngest ever manager gets chess for a minute. <clears throat> ah. You knew about that, presumably. What, the magazine? No, no, the job. Yes, I believe a certain amount have crossed my desk a month or two ago, yes. A month or two ago? Yes. Along with the mother and all the bits of paper I have to attend to. But has this has been a hectic month. And you decided to keep me in the dark again? Well, I didn't realise you were interested in every single appointment in the Better By Chain. I want to know about managerial appointments. You know that. Oh, Mr Watts. Norman, I, I understand your frustration, but... Oh, yeah? No, no, take it from me. You, you wouldn't have been... You wouldn't have been happy at Chesterfield. That's what you said about Miles Platting. Well, call me paternalist. I'm only acting in your interest, you know. I have a right to know about these. I know you will. If I see a job that I think would fit you, to be the first to know, because, hey... Knowledge is paranormal, never forget that. Hey, come here, come here. Look, tell me what you see here. 
Hmm? All I can see is a dungeon where I'll be chained for the rest of my life because you keep holding me back. No, no. What you see is a kingdom. A kingdom where you'll be Lord and Master Supreme. When you retire, you mean? And on that day, you will perch on this chair, issuing orders to all and sundry as you see fit. Hmm? But until then, I want you, I want you to think of yourself as a prince in waiting. Eh? Now, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? Well, I... I don't think it matters anymore, actually. In fact, my problem suddenly dissolved. Oh, good. Was it something I said to you? <laughs> yeah. Knowledge is power. Well, th thank you, Mr. Holdsworth. It's very instructive. Thank you for your time. work a few weeks back and they said they'd like to use me again so well it sounds as if it's all coming together well you just have to be patient good afternoon gorgeous said i'd brighten up your day this is him <laughs> des barnes lorraine kinsey my landlord how do you do oh, pleased to meet you she mean telling tales about me has she what sort of tales would they be oh, you tell me i wasn't here no she's very discreet is raquel you see don't be so suspicious and we're only telling her we're a complete slob yeah do i look like a slob uh, Raquel, <laughs> we're not thinking of setting up in competition with Blind Date, are we, in our quest for stardom? What are you on about? Well, we wouldn't want someone thinking they're doing all the work, would we? Oh, no. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> uh, see you later. Yes, Desmond, can I help you? Um, just have a pint, please, Alec. Are you ready for another? I'll have a white wine, thanks. It's very kind no. of you. Well, I'm a kind-hearted person, no matter what she says. She's not said anything, honestly. Don't you believe me? Well, as my father said when I went on my first date, don't believe anything a beautiful woman tells you. You managed to force it down then, I see. Tasted very nice once it cooled down. Well, I'll bung it in the freezer instead of the oven the next time, shall I? <sighs> uh, vodka and tonic on your way back, oh, Bessie, oh, please. Oh, I'll not ask what all that was about. No, I wouldn't have you. Anyway, how are you, Rita? How's your insurance claim? Oh, I don't know about the cabin. It'll be my eyesight that'll need insuring if I've any more forms to fill in. I won't be able to see straight. Yeah, but no money yet. Oh, you must be joking. Still to settle a final agreement. That's their latest excuse. Listen, they come round first thing in the morning on the adverts and a big fat cheque just to tide you over. Well, they've not been round to me yet. No, well, it's all right when it comes to getting premiums, when it comes to paying out, oh, different right. matter, isn't it? 147, yes. Thank you. Are Thank you having another Daryl? Oh, if you're offering us, yes, thank you very much. Hi, please. Thank you. Who's Des's friend? She's a friend of mine, actually. <laughs> Some friend. It's unbelievable you leave a trail of destruction in your wake. I didn't drop it, it was a customer. Hurricane Vanessa is what they call the next typhoon in the Pacific. You're a walking disaster area, you. Mm. Where's the mop? Mop? Never mind the mop. Get this glass picked up. Some kitty could fall and cut his throat on that. Do you know it's a shame it's taken against her? I mean, she's such a lovely lass. It's a crying shame, Mrs. Duckworth. In fact, it could turn out to be a tragedy. No, no, not like that. Look, sweepy, sweepy, like. Uh... Ah, it looks a different fellow, does Ken. You've done a good job there. Done him proud. Well, I'm glad some good came of his visit. It wasn't the easiest of times. I can imagine, hi. Oh, I think all three of us will be glad to get back to our old routines. Well, you can't whack your own home, can you? <laughs> hi, uh... hi, Liz. Oh, we've had a run on oven chips in our house. Jim's drinking and sees up that bad he can't handle a potato peeler anymore. Well, I think you'll find there's plenty in there, love. Oh, thanks, Al. So, uh, did you have any look at the job centre? I didn't. Only no. I was thinking, if Alex keeping Raquel on because she's younger than you, it's age discrimination, is that? I suppose it is. I never thought. You'd be within your rights to complain. What, to Alec? Oh, I'm sure that would cut a lot of ice with him. No, not to Alec. It's your local council you want to approach. He could be breaking the law. Oh, are all the chips that, That's all there is, is there? Listen, I think I've got some more in back. I'll just... Uh, I'll not be a minute. I'll... Uh... <coughs> People's friend, eh? Oh, don't worry. I have got another job. You have? Yeah, British Legion. More pay, better hours. Oh, Gilroy's done me a favour. Oh, I am glad. He's done the People's friend a favour and I'll tell him. How come? You don't think I could afford these prices without a second wage coming in, do you? <laughs> Tell Desmond I'll polish upstairs next time I come. What? Oh, right. Um, Phyllis. What, love? Would you say Des has changed a lot since he broke up with Steph? 
Well, he's got a right gad about these days, hasn't he? Or haven't you noticed? What have his other girlfriends been like? Well, I've only met one or two. He never keeps them long enough for me to meet. He's like you. Footloose and fancy free. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you ask? I'm just wondering. Mm. Hey, don't let him hear us talking about him. Mm. Hello, sweetheart. I'm just leaving. Oh, another immaculate job of cleaning under your belt, Phyllis. What would I do without you? Get somebody else, I shouldn't wonder. Mm. Hey, there must be 200 women queuing out there to get in here. Well, I can't help it if they fall at my feet. <laughs> you cheeky. ta -da, love. Yeah, see you, Phyllis. See you, love. See ya. Thanks a lot. You don't waste much time with Lorraine. Why not? She's a good laugh. Any more where she came from? Good evening, one and all. Just in time. Uh, 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 just hang on a minute, will you? Cos I've got something for you. Mm. And I've got something for you. Come here, jump to our face. Mm. And I've got something for this cracking little centrefold here. Mm -hmm. Whoever she is. <laughs> You've been raiding the dispensary again? Uh, I don't need artificial stimulants to get me going. Mm. Thank you very much. I've got a lovely wife, I've got three lovely kids, and I've got a very lovely future at work. Oh. Yes, I've just walked home with Nick Norbury. And he reckons I'll be a sight better off as a trainee nurse than I am as a porter. Oh, not a pretty sight or a nasty one? You what? Did he say how much better off you'd be? No, 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 he didn't say exactly. Oh, did he say vaguely? No, he just said I'd be better off. Oh, and he's an expert on medical pay, is he, this Nick Norbury? No, but he must have got it from somewhere. Look, I don't want to sound negative the minute you walk in, Martin, <laughs> but hadn't you better find out about pay from somebody who does know? Oh, come on, give us a chance, yes, will you? Yes, that's exactly what I am trying to do, Martin, give you a chance. If you're going ahead with this, you need to know more about it than some hearsay remark from a bloke who doesn't know a bedpan from a B-day. <laughs> I hate to remind you, Martin. You've got responsibilities. I know I've got responsibilities. That's why I'm trying to do something more yeah. about earning some more well, money. I just want you to be realistic about it, that's all. <laughs> There's no point coming home all excited when you've only got half a story. You don't know what the pay is. You don't know what the hours are. It's going to be a big upheaval for both of us, Martin. Find out. Oh, thanks. Ah, permettez moi? Oh, thank you very much. Yes, I was brought up to Blench at the sight of a young lady paying for her own drinks. And a pint, please, Alan. Right, sure. Right. You're cheerful. Why well, shouldn't I be with you for company? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just didn't expect it tonight, that's all. Tonight? Yeah, didn't you and Curly have a rather important conversation today? I see. Mr Watts is bringing his problems home from work now, is he? Well, no, he doesn't normally. Well, since you raised the matter, yes, we did have a little chat a at lunchtime. And it has all been settled amicably now, I'm pleased to say. Really? Hmm. You see, disappointments are a fact of life in business, Miss Freeman, and they have to be born with impunity. Kirk was gobsmacked when he found out. Oh, really, was he? Well, see, in my book, people have to show that they're, uh, well, they're the right material before I start doling out preferential treatment, and I don't care who they are or what qualifications. Now, if you'll excuse me, I actually came over for a pleasant chat, not the third degree of my management techniques. Excuse me. Rita's seeing him again tonight, entertaining him at home this time. I wouldn't read too much into that, baby. Oh, don't you be too sure. It isn't every man gets invited back to dinner. Romances in the air, you mark my word. She wouldn't waste herself on a dullard like Ted Sullivan. She goes for the more outgoing type, men with a bit of excitement in them. Mm, well, look where that's got her in the past. Mm, I think those two are really well suited. Can I help you, Rita? No, you're all right. You stay there. Thank you. She's a nice-looking girl. Jenny, yes. I fostered her for five years. I didn't know that. Yeah. She was a paper girl here. Mother died six years ago. So I took her in, saw her through school and college, and then she upped and went to live with a married man nearly twice her age. Ah. Oh. Do you ever see her? More than I do my other one. Your other one? Sharon. Len and I fostered her, oh, ten years ago. She stayed nine months and then went to Sheffield to be a kennel maid, would you believe? God knows where she is now. Me and Doris wanted children, but we couldn't have them. I always felt the loss. But at least I've only got myself to look after now. I thought I might go abroad. Sun, sea, wine, the life of the merry widower. Oh, you're a lucky man, Ted. I am. I am indeed, Rita. Hello. Yeah, thanks, yep. There you are. Oh, observant. Oh, very funny. 
slightly less amusing is your penchant for discussing confidential better by affairs with your flatmate. Angie? Yes. Thought that I'd knock the smile off your smug demeanour. We don't want company secrets becoming the tittle tattle of Coronation Street, so see that it doesn't happen again. You've been saying to him? Oh, what's he saying? What's he saying? He's just with the right to me. You look thoughtful. <laughs> Hello, Ken. Yeah, well, I've got a lot to be thoughtful about. Nothing bad, I hope. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just thinking of training to become a nurse. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Well, having been on the receiving end of your pastoral skills, I'm sure you'll make a very good one. Well, thanks very much. <laughs> Only trouble is, I've got to train for three years. Well, it's not as long as you think. Mm, I suppose you spent a fair bit doing that, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> a long time ago. Mm. I didn't give anything away, honestly. He thought I was talking about this Chesterfield business. We were at cross purposes. You shouldn't have said anything. I know, I'm sorry. Hey, what a scab, though, not telling you like that. I said you should have given him more room. Don't you worry. By the time Reggie's finished, he'll be dangling from the rafters of Better Buy's head office. Shouldn't you be striving above these basic instincts? Look, if I get to see Reg Holdsworth swing, I'll wallow in them for the rest of my life. Pint, please, Betty. Right. That was very nice. Quite oh, went out special. Was to me. I don't take things like that for granted. Well, that's very nice of you to say so. Well, I'd better be going. Oh, don't feel you have to go. No, oh, time I was off. You've had a long day. Up early with the papers this morning, no doubt. And again tomorrow. Well, it's no job for a night owl, I'll say that. I'll just get your coat. Do you think you could persuade Mavis to take the early shift one day this week? Uh, say in about a couple of days' time. I don't say I could. Why? I'd like to return the compliment. Take you out to dinner. Somewhere nice. If she were doing the papers next morning, you wouldn't have to rush back. What do you say? I say that'd be very nice. I'll have a word with her. Good. <laughs> well, thanks again for a lovely evening. Oh, my pleasure. And look forward to the next. Me too. Good night, Rita. Good night, Ted. Yes. Do you want to have a go of it? All right, then, we'll make sure he gets a good drink. All right? Yes. Nicky, you've got pee today, haven't you? Go and get your kit, will you? Sarah? <coughs> Have you washed your face? Yeah. What with? Floor cloth? Go on, up you go. This time, soap and water, eh? Nicky, will you put that comic down and do what Martin tells you? We're going to be late. Yeah, you can go now, if you like. I'll take the kids. I'm not due until nine. Are you sure? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I said so, if I wasn't. <laughs> I'm sorry about last night. Oh, it's all right, Skipper. Yeah. Might as well just accept it, aren't I? What? Well, you're dead against it, aren't you? No, I'm not. Not <laughs> at all. Oh, come on, girl. I know what you think. No, you don't, because I don't know myself either way, because I don't know enough about it. And come to think of it, neither do you. Yeah. All I'm saying is. Yes, let's... Martin, forget it. No, I'm not. <laughs> come here. <laughs> what? I think you'll make a smashing nurse. <laughs> And if you need a reference, come to me, eh? Mm. All I'm saying is let's find out more about it. And not from Nick Norbury. Thought you were going to see that nurse, Well, Egypt. I'll go and see him in the break. Right, and we'll talk about it tonight, eh? And the kids are gone to bed together. All right? Oh, you're up early. Yeah, I'm going into town before work. Pick up a new suit. New suit, eh? Fam's out in next week. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, taking us racing. Sort of a busman's holiday. Well, I'll give you an choose and it hang on, I'll get... No, you're all right. Uh, I'm not getting anything fancy, just something ordinary. i better dash or I won't get a parking space. Des? Yeah? You know I've been looking for a place of my own so as I'd be a bit more independent. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been offered a chance for flat, sharing. Oh, aye, who with? Lorraine. Well, that'll be good. You'll make a good couple, you and her. Let the blokes beating the door down. Oh, don't forget, give me your address. I reckon you fancy her, don't you? Lorraine? Yeah, she's a good laugh, but she's not my type. Well, so, what do you think I should do about it? Listen, if you're dead set on getting a place by yourself, I reckon you should do it while you've got the chance. I'll see you later.
Do you want a cold flannel? Oh, I didn't sleep all week last night. It's Derek. Well, I'm glad it wasn't the milkman. Oh, he's like a caged lion. Sounds exciting. He's all night pacing up and down with his cocoa. Do you know, I didn't know they drank cocoa. Mind you, it's years since I was at zoo. Do you ever take anything I say seriously? Well, of course I do, but on the other hand, do you ever tell me a proper tale? I'd have thought it was obvious. I mean, Derek's unemployed, and he'd much rather it wasn't me who was the breadwinner. Well, if you don't book yourself up, you'll get his wish. Oh, come on, Mavis, something will turn up. No, it usually no, does. It's easy for you to be optimistic. Don't suppose Ted Sullivan's got a worry in the world? What's Ted Sullivan got to do with Price of Cement? You tell me. He's a business acquaintance. All right, he's taken me out a couple of times. No more to it than that. You make it sound very humdrum. Do I? Mm, I'd have thought he was the romantic type, but to guess. Well, you just have to go and guess him, won't you? Hiya. Hello, love. Here's my rent while I've still got it. Ah, you're in the money. <laughs> oh, I'll get more in tips than I got paid in wages at the Rovers. Oh. Doesn't it interfere with your studies, all this waitressing? Oh, it's only a couple of nights a week. Mm. Oh, well, I remember, Rita. Mm. Curly says, could you go around this evening? Cos he wants to show you a damp patch behind the sink. Oh, well, tell him thank you very much for the invitation. It sounds very tempting, but unfortunately I'm otherwise engaged. Right. Not Ted again. So? Where to this time? I haven't a clue. Mm. Angie, you're a woman of the world. Do you think you could tell her here that it is possible for two people of the opposite sex to spend the evening together without it ending up like the last page of a Mills and Boone? <laughs> Hmm? Have you seen this bloke? You know that Rita Farkas going out with? I may have done, and pass on. Yeah, well. Hey, shouldn't you be unpacking? No, I'm on pricing. Seems ever so mature. In fact, if I weren't so devoted to our Jack, I'd fancy him myself. Really? <laughs> How interesting. Oh, I could put his socks in my washer any time. Hey, and I say he's not short of a bubble too, neither. Mm, you mean he's the flash type? No, he's just, you know, really smart. Luke, if you want my opinion, Mrs. Fairclough is a discerning and sophisticated judge of character. She'll have his card marked, all right. Oh, yes. Soon send him packing. Oh, soon. Well, you should know. Huh. Oh, Mr. Watts, could you spare a moment? Certainly, Miss Morgan. What is it? It's the sell-by date on these prawn crackers. There's stacks of them, only two days left, and the noodles. I know. It's amazing, isn't it, eh? People think nothing of lashing out on an egg foo young on the way home from the pub. For present them with a packet of dried noodles and suddenly they turn into raving gastronomic sinophobes. Mm, Sinophobia, is that what it is? Mm, it's an aversion to Chinese food. Why do you think that? That's because they're ignorant. Well, look, can I make a suggestion? I've been reading the Better by Cookbook. No, oh, that's not selling well either. Well, it's not bad, it's just the title. Around the world in 80 delicious recipes. It's the chicken and egg thing, you see. They won't buy the book because they don't have the ingredients. And they don't buy the ingredients because they don't have the recipes. Catch 22, I'm afraid. Mm. Could I do an experiment? Set up a display table and sort of demystify the products? I think that's an excellent idea. After all, what is a crispy wong tongue? Exactly. Just a meat dumpling in another language. <laughs> My thoughts entirely. Just after some information, really, about uh, about training to be a nurse. You know, like how long it takes, what the money's like. Just wanted a few details, really. We're talking about you, are we? Yeah. Good. We're keen to attract more men. I presume you uh, already know something about the job. <laughs> Hard not to if you work here. No, it's just how you go on about training, how you get on a course, that sort of thing. Well, we do require certain academic standards. Five O levels or GCSEs at uh, C or above. Well, it appears I've just failed at the first fence. Thanks, anyway. Uh, not necessarily. There is another way you could qualify for a place on the course. Hey, hey, what's all this? Someone's doing it, come on, market. I'm trying <laughs> to get people to be a bit more adventurous with what they eat. Yeah, well, I've got to have a word with my husband. He won't eat chips with the French fries. He won't eat old foreign. What even eat a Swiss roll? Oh, you ought to try him on a stir fry. It's dead easy. Oh, well, I haven't got one of them. Well, just use a saucepan. As long as you keep stirring, chuck it all in and with one of these sauces. 
bag. Do you mean you put everything in one pan? Ah, oh, go on then. <laughs> they need spicing up a bit. <laughs> hey, Mr. Oldsworth. Mm. Look, isn't it great, face? I'm being our jack of surf right tonight. Can't wait to see his face. Get back to your pricing. Eh? What's eh? going on here? What's all this? Some uh, petition to Third World? I'm drawing attention to the Oriental food section. Drawing attention? That's fun, isn't it? My hand looks like a Bombay back street here. Canton, actually, we're in China. Oh, we are, are we? Well, I think we're in Club Cuckoo Land. This is better bars, you know. Not Widow Twanky's Pantry. I'm just trying to get the customers to try something different. Luke, I only stop this stuff because it's company policy, right? Folks are not interested, but you cannot argue with the head office because they know best. Spirit of internationalism? <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. They're after Queen's of War to industry. So you don't think it's a good idea, then? No, I do not. And what's more, it's causing an obstruction. I, I don't know what possessed you to dream up such a notion. I did broach it with Mr Watts, the assistant manager. Yes, well, I'm well aware of his position and his views. Well, he was very supportive. He gave me the go-ahead. Oh, well, he would do, wouldn't he? Encourage anything that's alien, will Mr Watts? I've had him down as a subversive ever since he had that mouthy tongue haircut. I give the orders here, Miss Morgan, and I want it moving. Pronto. Or should I say, chop, chop. Raquel, right. when you're ready. I can only serve one at a time, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't trying to jump my turn. Well, what is it? Sherry? Oh, no, not at lunchtime. Fruit juice, please. Orange, pineapple, grapefruit, tomato. Sorry, yes. Grapefruit, please. That's uh, 45, I believe. Oh, I nearly forgot. And a hot pot. You are sure, aren't you? Don't want to change your mind. Betsy, one hot pot. Right. Hello, Emily. Mean, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. That's what I like to hear, love. Right. Uh, excuse me. If I've offended you in some way, I do apologise. I mean, I hate to be on bad terms with anyone, particularly when we live right opposite. Just forget it. It's me. I'm very, I'm very sorry. I, I don't know what's come over her today. <laughs> She's as glum as a nun in a nightclub. I mean. Does she make you want to stop here and have another half? I must say, Alec, you do seem to adopt a very cynical and mercenary attitude to your staff. I mean, she's a human being, after all. Well, I know that. I pay her wages, don't I? But I'm not getting my money's worth. That's the point. Ah, greetings, Councillor. How's the world treating you? A pint, is it? Ah, uh, why not, yeah. Uh, well, if you want to know, really, I mean, I, I don't know how I'm going to fix everything in. I mean, I've been rushed off my feet all morning. I mean, I've got a planning committee in half an hour's time, then it's leisure and amenities, and then it's town twinning subcommittee tonight, taking the whole evening up. I mean, this is the high spot of my day, you know, coming in here for a hot pot and half an hour's conversation and friendly local. <laughs> Another hot pot, Betty. I'm telling you, Alec, this lad does not know how lucky he is. Well, have you heard of all this? What? Well, I'm supposed to have five O levels, right? But they reckon I can take this test instead. This uh, DC test or something. Apparently, they take them every few months. Anyway, they said I can take mine next week, if I let them know, as soon as possible. Yeah, it's an IQ test. Well, it shouldn't cause you too much trouble. Hmm, do you reckon? No. In fact, I'll put a quid on it. That's how much faith I've got in you. A quid? Is that all? It's all I can afford. <laughs> and that's another thing as well. The money's not what I've been told. I'm going to end up worse off than I am now. Mm, but there are other advantages. I mean, apart from all the pretty student nurses. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm married, remember. Anyway, that's not what it's all about, is it? I know. And I wouldn't encourage just anyone to train, but I think it'd suit you. Well, half the job's your attitude. Quite honestly, I'd be happy to have you on my team. And as for intelligence and academic ability, I'm sure you've got those as well. Ah, yeah. All right, I'll make it two quid. Anyway, you'll never know until you take the test. Put your name down, Martin. You'll only regret it if you don't, won't you? Can I have your glasses now, please? Am I the last? I'll be getting a reputation. You've only had the one drink. If I haven't got one already. What do I do what? Got a reputation. You don't work with Mother Superior. She reckons, because I'm going out with the same blokes two nights running, that I'm beyond redemption. <laughs> That's the way you're going tonight. Do you know, I'm blown if I know. He's carrying his best tie out, which I take it to mean he wants me in my glad rag. Anyway, I'll see you better. Have a nice time, love. Oh, yeah. Ta-ta, oh. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
Lock the door, Raquel. Please. I beg your pardon. I said please. Now listen. I'm not entirely unaware, you know, of women's little problems. What are you on about? Well, if you're not feeling 100%, you know, we can manage tonight. I need the money. Besides, I might as well be over here as over at Rhodes. Yeah, well, you better, you better get off. Betty will do the tables, won't you, Betty, love? Yeah, of course you will. And the empties, and the washing up, and the floors in the toilets. What are you doing? Oh, orders from above. It seems I've been contravening customer mobility regulations, not to mention enticement to eating foreign food. He's one on his own, he's old, but he's off his chump. I've had him up to here. Yeah, at least you can move to another store. I'm stuck with him. Every way I turn, it's like a life sentence. Um, who is it, Mr. Watts? Oh, I was just uh, assisting Miss Morgan. Well, she can manage on her own, surely. This is the age of equality. She doesn't need the assistant manager waiting on her hand foot, does she? Well, what was wrong with her display? Wrong? Well, nothing, apart from being totally inappropriate and a waste of staff resources. And, of course, it was causing an obstruction. She sold a lot of noodles. Never mind about noodles. What we need is produce with a short shelf life. Dairy products, meat, fresh vegetables, not packets of chapati mix. Now, go and attend to the staff roster, will you? Overtime. Reg, don't blame Vanessa. I accept full responsibility. No knight in shining armour, is it? You've got a lot to learn, Miss Morgan. Oh, yes. And one of the first is to keep your emotions under a tight rein. I've uh, no doubt Mr Watts is very alluring to someone such as yourself. Someone clutching at the bottom rung of the better by ladder. Oh, yes, I can see the appeal. Assistant manager. Full career in front of him, regular salary, perhaps a nice little company car and a pension. But let me give you some advice. If you want to do well in this firm, you've got to do it on your own merit. So don't let me catch you in cahoots with him, is that understood? I was not in cahoots with anyone. Don't you raise your voice to me, young lady, else you'll be moving to another store a lot sooner than you planned, and you can get them noodles right back where they belong. Hiya. Let's have a look, then. What at? Your suit. Oh, no. Didn't see one I fancied. What about you? Get yourself sorted out with Lorraine? Been busy. Changed your mind, have you? I don't know what to do for best. Honest, I don't. Oh. What do you think I should do? Well, depends on you. Does it? Of course it does. Depends on how keen you are to move. Yeah, I suppose it does. If you are keen. Wouldn't hang about too long, because finding a place isn't easy. I'd get into a right away. Have you eaten? I'm not hungry. No, me neither. Des? Yeah? Will you be at Rovers later? Oh, I might. Depends if there's anything else on. Why? Nothing. Right then. Gonna get a shower. Right, Thank dear, you. Oh, hello, Alf. hello, Rita. I thought it was Audrey tonight. Oh, don't, don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. You're right, Alf. You look a bit flustered. Well, so would you be if you're married to Audrey. Oh. Well, I'll be off then. Tracy said you'd have me tea ready. Oh, lovely. Mm. See you, love. Bye, love. Hello, Red. Hello, love. Red. Oh, um, shoe polish, have you? It's over here. All right. Hello, Rita. Reg. Going out again? I might be. Why? Well. Still time to change your mind. It so happens I'm available this evening. Oh, I'm sorry, Reg. I'm already spoken for. Ah, going somewhere nice? I hope so, but uh, don't ask me where. I've no idea. Mm, a bit risky. You know what they say, never buy a pig in a poke. I'll take the risk. Mm, dangerous. Make sure he doesn't slip anything to your drink. You could wake up dancing in a Moroccan nightclub. And I'm not talking military two-step, neither. Well, I'll tell you one thing. What's that? I feel a damn sight safer with Ted Sullivan than I would with you. Is that so? Mm, at least he keeps his hands to himself. See you. Ta-da, Bye, Al. It's a waste, is that? Don't you think so, Mr Roberts? Woman like that, a waste. Ooh. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Uh, can I have a gin and tonic, please? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> can I get you that? No, 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 that's all right, thanks. You sure? Yeah. How's your back? Fine. You back at school? Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you very much. Thanks. Ah, cheers. Cheers. How long's he known her then? Twenty years? Mm, possibly. And hardly a word between them except 
How's the humbugs going, Rita? How do you know? Because you told me. You know what it is. He's reached retirement and he can't let go. He can't face the future without his raison d'etre. I bet he's boring a rigid with discussion about his service record in the confectionery trade. And comparing the relative merits of sugared almonds with fizzy pops. Mm, oh, they've gone to the pictures to see a romantic film. Sure. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, more like. When people suddenly finish work, they find it very difficult to adjust. <laughs> Have a pint of the foaming hot, please. Tapstress. <laughs> you trying to be funny or what? <clears throat> right, I'll have a round of good old English beef in brown bread. Just Chris, what flavour? What flavour? Potato flavour, what do you think? Sorry, we've only got plain. <sighs> Flipping wonderful. Go on then, I'll have a packet. This is my supper, is this, you know? Captain of industry, I can't even get a sandwich in his own hostel. It's disgusting. Same again, please, Alec. Right. Do you know, it's nights like this I wish I'd taken up basket weaving for the excitement. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I like it when it's quiet. More relaxing. Oh, it's relaxing, right enough. It's doing nothing to swell my pension fund, though. So Nick Norbury was talking out the back of his hat? Yes. Uh, I thought Porter's wages were rock bottom, but <laughs> seems I'm going to be worse off. Uh, well, to start with. On the other hand, if I qualified, well, at least I've got some scope for a promotion. Yeah. Could be a sister. <laughs> or would you be a brother? <laughs> Could be a matron, even. <laughs> you never live it down in the Rovers, Sister Platt. Uh, well, I won't be getting that for a few years, will I? <laughs> uh, the thing is, Gail, <sighs> can we afford it? Hmm? Well, depends how keen you are. We can always pull our belts in another notch, if it's what you really want. When do you have to let them know by? <laughs> I've got to take this test yet before I can even think about a course. Test? Mm. What sort of test? Like an intelligence test. I've got a few questions here somewhere just to give you an idea. One of the sisters reckons I'm going to walk it, though. <clears throat> anyway, I've got a week to revise. A week? Mm. How do you mean? Well, they have these tests once every few months. And it just so happens there's one coming up soon, so... I'll put my name down. You what? This is just the job, isn't it? Bit of all right, eh? Uh, and before we order, are you sure you won't let me go Dutch? I mean, have you seen what they charge for starters? Behave yourself. You're not supposed to look at the prices. Suppose you come here three nights a week. I've never been here before in my life, but my breast is as good as the next man's. Why should the top dogs get the best of everything? Now, Rita, which wine do you like, red or white? Oh, I'm easy. You choose. Nothing fancy. You like champagne? Not at these prices. Oh, I've told you before. Hey, do you see this? They got sardines. Mm, Seven ninety-five and all. When I come in a posh place like this, I want something different to sardines. I could get them out of a tin. Oh, sorry, Rita. Perhaps you like sardines? No, as a matter of fact, I'm going for the fried egg sandwich. You what? You've got me going, then. <laughs> you know, the best thing I ever did was to retire. Especially with you for company these last few weeks. I'm very glad you invited me. Are you? Honest? Honest? I'm having a wonderful time, really. In that case, we're definitely having champagne. Uh, miss, uh, could you ask the wine fella to come over, please? The wine waiter, certainly, sir. Hello, Rita. Everything all right for you, is it? <laughs> what do you mean you haven't committed yourself to anything? You've put your name down. I uh, know I have. So you've made up your mind. Gail, will you just hang on a minute? Right, look, there's a test, right? And I'm taking this test. And if I pass, which this sister reckons I will do, well, then, then I'll be able to apply for this spare place on the course. But I won't have to make that decision until I get the results, which won't be for two or three weeks yet. So between now and then, we can discuss it between us, right? Martin, have you thought about it? What it means becoming a student? Oh, Gail, come on, will you? Portering is a dead-end job. Yeah, well, it's a good job. Not everybody thinks so. Yeah, well, OK, fair enough. Yes, I like the job, but not for the rest of my life. I just want some qualifications. I want to do something more worthwhile. You're doing now's worthwhile. Oh. Better to run in a cafe, it is. Uh, now, Gail, I'm not knocking what you do. It's each to their own, as far as I'm concerned. I just want to make something more of my life. And I reckon I can make a good go of it, cos it's what I want to do. Well, you 
You certainly seem to know your own mind. Yes, I do. So, what's the odd one out? Where? Number two. Predict, speculate, auger, reminisce, prognosticate. <laughs> Have you read these books? Yes, questions? I've read some of them. And you reckon you'll walk it, dear? What's the matter? Me car keys. Are they up there? Kitchen back kettle. Oh, kitchen back kettle, yeah. If you made me a cup of tea in the morning, you'd have found them. I would, wouldn't I? Well, there you go. Des? Yeah. I spoke to Lorraine last night. Oh, yeah. Said I'd move in Monday. When? Evening? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Good. Make it evening. I'll give you a hand. Car. At least I can do. I'll miss you, but I see your point. Need your independence in danger of being a kept woman here, aren't you? Oh, can you get some milk if you get a chance? Yeah, OK. A couple of pints. Des? Yeah. Ooh, what are you stood there for? I was just off, Phyllis. Hey, I thought you were a man you were going to leap out on me. Hey, <laughs> them were the days. Yeah, well, look, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, I think that's what I owe you. All right, I'll see you tonight, Raquel. What's going on? What? Well, you weren't talking about recipes. We weren't talking about anything. Well, happen you should have been. Well, if you must know, I'm moving out. Satisfied? Oh, it's not to me. You're all alike. What? Well, Des is a good enough boy. But it's you women that spoil him. Oh, shut up, Phyllis! Just shut up! I suppose it's all right. I mean, he seems respectable enough. But Rita is seeing a lot of him. They were out again last night. And, well, I don't think she was in before midnight, cos that's when I looked out, cos I heard a door banging. <laughs> Unless they were in with the lights off. Oh, no. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not serious. I think they went to a smart restaurant somewhere. Really? Uh, yeah, well, that was the plan. Well, I'll say this for Ted Sullivan. He's not my type, but he's certainly put the colour back in Rita's cheeks. Good for her. Oh, yes, good for her. I've nothing against that. I'd love to know what time she got in, though. Oh. You. Morning, Rita. You little monkey. I could have died. Did you enjoy your evening? Well, I did till you strolled up. Has she told you? Told me what? About last night. we just got ourselves sat down in Romano's restaurant, just talking things over. Who strolls up as our waitress? I could have crawled under a stone. Was the service not to your liking, madam? It was not. Was I not punctual? Polite? Oh, you were all of that. It was the ear-to-ear -ear grin I couldn't stomach. Oh, it's just natural cheerfulness, Rita, all part of the service. Oh, come on, admit it. You loved it. Well, it brightened up a dull evening. And it didn't stop you having three coffees and a couple of Benedictines, neither. Hey, any more of that, I'll put your rent up. Oh, uh, by the way, Mavis, in answer to your question, it must have been about quarter to one. I just don't think he knows what he's letting himself in for, that's all. I mean, he could carry on portering, get down the pub of the night and have a good time. Are you doing the hand butchers, Ramai? You're not listening, are you? No, I am, I am. I just want to know who's doing the butchers. You? Make you feel like I don't care. All right, then, well, I'll do it. <sighs> he should be out with his mates. Well, why should he? Because he's young. Well, he's not that young, is he? I mean, he's 23. The more he's kept inside, the better, like the rest of his sex. Where's the letter? Just because you're attracted to Neanderthals. Hey, 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 come on. Yeah. <laughs> if Martin starts studying to be a nurse, that's the end of any spare time to himself. He's got enough on his plate. That's all I'm saying. A wife and three kids is a big responsibility at his age. I just wish he had the freedom to come home from work, get down to the pub or whatever, and forget it all. That's all. No, it's a pity Jack Dot was spoken for. Sounds just like it'd suit you. Right, second there, uh, Miss Mormon, isn't it? Yes. Ah, right. Now, it says here, graduate trainees must experience as many of the store's operations as possible. Well, she is. Right, so it's cheese cutting for that inestimable young lady. I bet you didn't know you had to have a degree in business studies to cut cheese, did you know? Him? Well, <laughs> business studies. Yeah, I said you was a graduate in uselessness, I believe you. I mean, we're, we're, we're 
Where the degrees these days from, eh? You better check the seals, Norman. There might be a free and uh, crisp packet. <laughs> well, she was uh, cutting cheese yesterday. You were. Look, you told me to take her in hand, right? Yeah. So I set her and Vera Duck with cutting cheese yesterday all afternoon. Oh, very good. She'll know all about it then, won't you? Set her on the lawn this after. Well, it's a bit unfair. Unfair? What are you talking about? Unfair? Well, it's the worst job in the store, that, isn't it? Cutting cheese. Are you saying she's too good for it? No, I'm saying she's already done it. She should try her hand at something else. Oh! Like mixing cocktails or powdering her nose? Look, there's lots of cheese already cut. Hey! You're not here to argue. Now get out on that shop floor and get the porridge organised. Miss Morgan can do it before she's done the cheese. And the more she knows about running this store, the better. And that includes cheese cutting, trolley clearing and porridge stacking, because when it comes down I to know, it... I know, I know, I know. Porridge is power. No. If you've nothing better to do, you could count these gazettes. I'm sure they sent us half as many again. I was just wondering when something's going to happen. Eh? Well, it's Friday the 13th. Something always does. It might be something quite small, like dropping a cup or something. Mavis, people drop cups every day, not only on Friday the 13th. But if it's Friday the 13th, you can bet your bottom dollar it'll be your best cup. Oh. Morning. Morning, Liz. Would you believe it? I've just snagged me tights. Oh. See? See what? Your jinx, love. Ask Mavis. It's an unlucky day. I mean, just little things like that. Oh, don't say that. I start work at the Legion today. Oh, oh. good for you. I was so glad to hear you'd found another job. Alec Gilroy wants his ankles slapping. He really does. Oh, cares. There are worse things than getting sacked by Alec Gilroy. One of them is working with him. Mm. I'll take these, please. All right, love. Is Thanks. Jim still bad from the Rovers? I think so. Anyway, he's not showing his face, and I don't blame him. Alec Gilroy's far too cavalier about the way he bars people. I mean, I'm still smart from the time when he barred Derek and me over that hose pipe business. So, I hope you have every success at the British Legion. I mean, I know it's going to seem like second best, and it'll be a very different sort of clientele, but, well, you'll make the best of it, even if you are starting on Friday the 13th. Well, I think I've had my bad luck already today. Well, snagging you tight, you mean? No, getting encouragement from you, Mavis. <laughs> Ta-ra! See you, Liz. Bye. He said the experience would do you good. Well, didn't you tell him I'd had enough experience? Yes, I did. Quite forcibly, as a matter of fact. But he said there's no harm in being even more experienced. How much cheese does he want cut? Well, it's the weekend. Huge demand, probably. Well, there have to be a huge demand to get through what Vera and I cut. There'll have to be a national cheese shortage and panic buying. Really? Well, you've seen how much we've cut. Yes, I have, and very good it is too. Anyway, I'm not going to cut any more. No? You can tell him I'll do any job that has a point to it, but I'm not wasting my or the firm's time on fool's errands. Right. And if you don't want to tell him, you can send him round and I'll tell him myself. No, no, I'll tell him. I'll quite enjoy that. I'll see you in a minute. There's a lot of the old fellows will be pleased to see your face. They've had to put up with me this past few weeks. Oh, well, I can't complain about that. It's a pretty face like yours. <laughs> oh, you know how to butter your parsnips. <laughs> now, Bottledale's here, Mixer's here, and we're starting to sell mineral waters. To wives, mostly. They go here. Now, this might look like a coal shelf, but it isn't, because it started to leak a month ago. <laughs> and Johnty Johnson, who's a member and a fridge engineer, still hasn't fixed it. That's the trouble with a club like this. You get members from all walks of life, and they're always promising you they're going to save the expense of calling somebody in. And what happens? The place falls to bits while you wait. <laughs> so, what if people want cold drinks? They get ice. Oh. <laughs> We're not high-tech here, love. Not like your Rovers return. Oh, high-tech at the Rovers means using a corkscrew instead of your teeth. <laughs> Mind, we are often ready, but at least we have a smile for folk. That landlord of yours, what do they call him? Oh, Alec Gilroy. No offence to the bloke, but he didn't come top in charm school, did he? Now, that depends who he's dealing with. Oh, it can be as charming as you like, can Alec. If you run a big car and say, one for yourself, landlord, it can charm the socks off you. Oh, would he? Well, if it's all the same to you, love, I'll hang on to me money. And keep me socks. <laughs> now, do you think you're going to manage? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I think I'll manage fine. What's this? What's this? Good morning, Mr. Holdsworth. I gave you strict instructions through Mr. Watson to get into that cheese store when you've done up cereals, and now here you are. What's going on? 
I explained to Mr. Watts that me and Vera had cut enough cheese yesterday to feed half Hong Kong. But if that's not enough, and you want to feed the China mainland too, then you can get someone else to cut it. Well, I think you're an obsessive. Chinese recipes yesterday, mainland today. All right, then, Chinese cheese, now get cutting. I'm more use here. I'll decide where it's some use. And if I say you are on cheese, you're on cheese. Never mind Hong Kong. I gave no instruction to have cheese cut yesterday. So as far as I'm concerned, there is no cut cheese. So you can cut cheese today. There is a mountain of cheese cut. If you don't believe it, come and have a look. Miss Morgan, I am a very busy man. I have come here specifically to reprimand you. I have no time to go trips into the cheese store. As far as I'm concerned, there is no cheese cut so you can get and cut cheese. Now, is that clear? Yes, it is. Good. Let's see you going. Come on. Is he having a go or what? Oh, give us a hand, Vera. Where are we going? First to the mountain and then to Mohammed. Blooming it. Shall I get me coat? <laughs> Stick it all on his desk, eh? Isn't that overdoing it? Of course not. Hey, Stilton, that stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I'll stick that on his desk. <laughs> oh, Gonzola, look. Oh, are you? Bat it all on. <laughs> hey, pass us that Wensleydale. I'll put this on his chair. <laughs> <laughs> hey! What in God's name's going on here? Hello, Mr. Holdsworth. We brought you the cut cheese to see. Vera and I cut it yesterday. Do you find this funny or something? I, well, with you saying how busy you were, Mr Holdsworth, and not having enough time to come and see the cheese, we thought, well, obviously, the cheese must come to see you. So here it is. Oh, well, you can take it right back again. My goodness, I've never heard the like. This is my office, you know. Stinks like a rugby club laundry in here. Yeah, well, you should have come to the cheese store then, shouldn't you? Get that cheese off my desk. Come on. So you see, Mr Holdsworth, with all this being cut already, it would be silly to cut any more. We don't want to waste the firm's time. Yeah, well, I can get that cheese off. Come on, clear it all off and back to the cheese store now. And when I've done that, what shall I do? Well, fine, Mr Watson, and ask him. Go, I know, you can clear up the frozen fish. It's in a terrible jumble, is that? Righty-o. I have to tell you everything, all of you. There's not one of you can... You can think for yourselves. Go, dummy. off with Ted again tonight, is it? Yeah, mm. seems like it. Nearly every night. <laughs> Where to this time? Well, I don't really know. He said something about going a trip in the light fantastic somewhere, so I'll just have to see. Did you switch cupboard light off? Uh, yes, it wasn't on. I checked. Oh, I wish I was being swept off my feet somewhere tonight. Well, there's nothing to stop you doing a couple of circuits of your dining room, Mavis. Just think, afterwards you could put your feet up. Ooh, no, not with Derek. Why not? Well, it's... It's this problem, you see. I'm not even going to ask. <sighs> right, have you got everything? Yes. OK, end of a perfect day. See you tomorrow. Yes, well, have a nice time. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> That's a tall order. I can't do both. If I'm going to come up there and sort you lot out again, it'll be with my boxing gloves. All right? Just keep it quiet, will you? Right. It's a madhouse up there. I imagine studying as well. You what? You'll have to. You'll be at work all day, come home, kids to feed, bath, bed, and then it's books out and head down no. till bedtime. Come on, Gail, it's not going to be the end of the world, is it? No. I promise you. Just do us a favour, eh? What? Don't keep me in the dark about things. I hate it when you spring things on me. It's going to be difficult for all of us. There's a decision to be made. Let's make it together, eh? OK, fair enough. OK. It's just that... Well? Well, sometimes I feel like I'm dragging a rock behind me. I mean, I have an idea and you say no. It's always. Without even thinking about it sometimes. I mean, look at when we moved out. I said yes, you said no. And then, you know, we spend days, weeks, you with your heels dug in and me trying to persuade you. And eventually, oh, eventually, you'll come round, but... I don't know, it just feels like it every time. <laughs> feels like you set your sights against things without even considering sometimes. You know, couldn't you sometimes just say yes first? Or if not yes, then at least not no. Just sometimes. I know. <sighs> I'm sorry. I keep thinking you'll do something stupid. Such as? I don't know. It's 
thinking about the kids on my own, bringing them up by myself. Uh, mm. I tend to be overcautious. It's worked, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Caution's not a bad thing. And then you come along. <laughs> You're younger, rasher. Oh, come on, Gail. Eh? Look at me. I'm 23 going on 60. I mean, look at me. I'm settled, I've got a family, I've got a whacking great mortgage and a, and a wife. Rash! Blame me, you can blame me for a lot of things, but hardly impetuous youth. Next daring thing I'm gonna do is paint the garden fence. Oh, God! What's up with you now? You say you're old before your time, I'll blame myself for that as well. <laughs> Come here. Oh! Come here. Ah. Well, Gail, the way I look at it, there'll always be one consolation. What? Mm, I'll never be as old as you. <laughs> oh, well, that question's just been answered. Yeah, listen, so have a good time, enjoy yourself, and be good. Cheerio now. What about your son? How you doing, Paula? Right, thanks. Uh, I thought you were going out. Uh, well, yes, I was, but then I thought, no, I'll put my feet up and have a nice, quiet night in front of the telly. Well, we were going to watch the telly, actually. Oh, well, come and join me, eh? Sure, we can all have a nice, cosy night with your old dad in front of the telly. That'd be right, Paula, eh? Mm. Um, look, we've got a video, and you're not going to like it. Well, how do you know? Sure, it might be right up my street. Look, why don't you go to the Legion? Spend the evening with Mum for a change. Well, no, I couldn't do that, son. She'd be leaving you two together on your own. I mean, Steve, down the cinema, you're going to be wanting some company, aren't you, Paula? <laughs> don't worry. I'm away down the Legion. Good. Look, are you going to be staying all night, or what? Well, no, that's for me to know and you to find out, isn't it, eh? I wouldn't be too proud, would you, Betty? Well, it's got nothing to do with it. I'm just not interested. Get away. I'll bet you'd love a toy boy. Would I? Cos I can like me peace and quiet. Oh, that's one thing you don't get with Des Barnes, I promise you. Mm. Hey, she's supposed to be going on Monday. She was packing the bags this morning. I said, aren't you worried you'll walk in here while you walk out? She said, mind your own business. I said, Desmond, is my business. Why don't you run round there and knock on the door? You are joking, Phyllis. No, he had his chance and blew it. Anyway, he's just a bit of rough. I want a bit of quality next time. A bit of rough? My Desmond? Did you hear that, Betty? <laughs> so, I'm trying to make the most of me freedom while I can. Mm, well. Mm. Right, please, Betty. OK, love. Thank you. you. Somebody showing some initiative for once. Oh, thank you. Uh, how does Gail feel about it? Oh, she's coming round. Trouble is, I sprang it on her. Told her I was taking the exam before I discussed it with her. My fault. Threw her into a spin. Yeah, what's the exam in? General intelligence, you know, like an IQ thing. Oh, I may have some books if you like, sample papers sort of thing. Oh, well, thanks all the same, but I've been down for life now. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's all right, pay for the rest again. Okay, no, thank you. Evening, Sister Platt. Got your pinny start? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, very funny, Gilly, very witty. Better keep that one going till next Christmas. Juvenile Norman. Take no notice of him, Martin. I don't, Emily. <laughs> and let's face it, eh? Who does? <laughs> Fella in the black toupee. He's giving me a heck of a bruise on my chin. Well, she looks as if she's hanging on for grim death. <laughs> she must be black and blue. If it's all the same to you, we'll sit it out until he gets off the floor. Discretion's a better part of valor. Absolutely. And are you enjoying yourself? Oh, I'm having a lovely time. I'm so glad we came. So am I. One of those nights you wish would never end. Lovely lady not in evidence tonight. Which lovely lady is that exactly? <laughs> I mean the other lovely lady. Queen of the counter, Countess of the Confectionery, Empress of the Everton Mints. If you mean Mrs. Fairclough, she's out for the evening dancing, as I understand, with Mr. Sullivan. It'll all end in tears, does she know? Mark my word, no good will come of it. It will, it'll all end in tears. Some people never get the message. <laughs> you know, I'd like to go dancing sometime, Mavis. Be nice if we did, wouldn't it? Well, Rita was suggesting that this evening. Oh yes. What did you say? Well, I said we couldn't because of your problem. My problem? What do you mean my problem? Well, you know. Mavis, what have you been saying? Oh, I haven't been saying anything. You just said you said to Rita I got a problem. But that was all I said. I didn't say what. But you mean you said I got a problem and left it at well, that? She didn't want to know, Derek. I just said Derek's got a problem. We can't go dancing, but she didn't want to know. I haven't got a problem. Oh, Derek, you have. I have not. Derek, you have. You've got flat feet. If you don't think that's a problem, well, I jolly well do. Oh, well, thank you very much. We can't all be Fred Astaire. No. 
deeply hurtful. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not the one with flat feet. I'll have you know I've had some very successful times on the dance floor. With Angela, I suppose. Among others. And I resent you implying I'm some sort of incompetent. And look what you've done now. You've set Rita wandering around thinking I've got... Well, a problem. Totally humiliating. Is this something you do often, Ted? What? You mean dance badly? Oh, come on. You're a good dancer. Am I? Oh, I feel all feet. <laughs> a bit nervous, I suppose. Well, I don't know why. I do. I'm trying to pluck up my courage. Oh, to go and thump that fella in the toupee. <laughs> no. I want to ask you something. Well, I won't bite your head off, I promise. I just wondered if... <laughs> do you like Florida, Rita? Florida? In America? I don't know. I've never been. I'd like to take you there. If you'd like to go. Take me to Florida? Ted, have you won the pools? <laughs> oh, I thought you might like it. I thought we could have a good time. Have you got friends there? No. Well, oh, this is a bit of a surprise, Ted. I'll have to think about it. What were you thinking of? A fortnight? No, Rita. I intend to live there, and I'd like you to come with me as my wife. Oh, Ted. This is such a bolt out of the blue. Uh, sorry. I'm going to have to sit down. To sit down. I mean, you'll know yourself what it's like. By and large, you stuff the docile and containable. That's right, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes. Then all of a sudden you get a rogue elephant that comes along. I've got one now, sent to me by the head office. Graduate, God help me. Do you know, if I have to tell her once, I have to tell her 5,000 times. And I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Then she thinks she's a smart pants. Hmm? Thinks she knows how to run a supermarket better than somebody who's been doing it for 15 years. Right, well, I'll be on to the head office in the morning and it will be thank you very much, but you can take Vanessa Morgan back and fire her under waste of energy. Right, right, right Reg. Dead wood. Weed them out. Another one, please, Alec. Evening, Reg. Ah, she's got you wrapped round her little finger as well, hasn't she? Disgusting. None of your calibre. You should be able to see her like, through glass. Who? Who? Vanessa Morgan. Who do you think? I've been meaning to say, Reg, I really admire the way you've treated Vanessa Morgan no differently from the rest of the staff, mm. despite who she is. Oh, well. In fact, I think it's fair to say you've treated her worse than the rest of the staff. <laughs> Commendable and courageous, Reg. Oh, well, thanks very much. <laughs> Total disregard of the consequences. Uh, Black Jack would be proud of you. Cheers. Black Jack you. Morgan, what's he got to do with this? Well, I think he might have something to say about you making her cut cheese that was already cut and not letting her show initiative on the recipe display. But he'll be proud of you for showing no favouritism. Favouritism? What are you talking about? Favouritism? Vanessa Morgan, the chairman's daughter. Chairman's daughter? Oh, come on, Reg. You must have known. You must have put two and two together. Morgan, head office, head office, Morgan. I thought that's why you were giving us such a hard time to show no favouritism. Is this true? As I stand here. Oh, what the hell have you done to me now? Why? Oh, not me, Reg. You did it to yourself. The day you didn't tell me about the Chesterfield promotion. Remember the password, Reg? Porridge is power. Thank you, Alec. Would that be a large scotch you were after, Reg? Perhaps a brandy or two. I thought you weren't going till later. I'm not. Just making sure I've got everything while I can still find it. Before Phyllis gets her hands on it and puts it in a safe place. So you won't be here tonight when I get home, I take it? No. I'll pick my gear up when I finished at Rovers. Right. I'll post my key through at letterbox when I go. Hang on to it. Give it to me when you see me. I told you. We ended up in a piano bar, we had a drink, and we talked. Talk, just talked. <laughs> 
Well, what's wrong with that? People do, you know. Well, I know that, but it's not the first time you've been out with them, and, and relationships do move on, don't they? We're not a couple of teenagers, maybe. It is possible for two mature adults to have a pleasant evening out without ending up in bed together. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that at all. I wish I'd never mentioned it now. I was only trying to take an interest. Look, Mavis, I'm not trying to get at you, but it seems you can't look at a fella twice round here without people having you waltzing up the aisle together. Well, I hope you're not putting me in that category. For one thing, you haven't been going out with him more than five minutes, and for another, I can't see that Ted Sullivan's the marrying kind. Yes, Mr. Holdsworth, you wanted me? Yes, Mr. Holdsworth. No, Mr. Holdsworth. Three bags full, Mr. Holdsworth. Very commendable attitude for you to adopt towards a superior Norman. But unfortunately, it's a bit late in your case, isn't it? Uh, look, I'm really very busy. Oh, you're very busy, are you? Well, I'm glad somebody's very busy. Very busy because they still happen to have a job. Some of us might not be so fortunate before long. Some of us who have to rely upon our subordinates for vital pieces of information Appertaining to job in hand. Like me telling you that Vanessa Morgan just happens to be Lord Morgan's daughter. That's right. The owner of this store. He owns the very ground we walk on to, to make a living. You let me treat that girl like a... Like, like, like a, an like, ordinary employee. Exactly. If only you just told me. How could you do... How could you do that to me? How could you let me go steam in it with all guns blazing? If you'd have just told me... I like could... you told me about the manager's job at Chesterfield. Oh, no, no. I had your best interest at hand. I, I You've always thinking... got my best interests at heart. Like the time you didn't tell me about the job going at Miles Platin. What am I going to do now, Norman? This, this, this work's been my life, this business. I'll be in the storeroom for the rest of the morning if you need me. But I'm really very busy. No bother, I'll not be a minute. Oh! I'm sorry, Mavis. <laughs> Hello, Ted. <laughs> Hello, Ted. Hello, Rita. I thought you were on your way to Alf's. Oh, it doesn't matter. If you're not bothered about a biscuit, I'm not fussy. Well, I've changed my mind. There's nothing I'd like better than a digestive with my tea. <laughs> Look, Ted, if you come here expecting an answer... Oh, no, I haven't. You haven't? No. You said you wanted more time to think about it, and I appreciate that. Marriage is a big step. I said I wouldn't press you. I think you'll find I'm a man of my word. No, I was just wondering if you were free tonight. Tonight? Dinner? Oh, well, I had thought of having a night in, actually. Oh, well, it's up to you, of course, but uh, I shall be away for a couple of days. Away? Yes, I'm going down to Brighton. See my sister. She's just had a hip replacement operation. Oh. Oh, well, in that case, you've just got yourself a date. Oh, Miss Morgan, what is she? Oh, she's come down to Colstone. Oh, I see. No, she has only. She's not on Skype. Well, I never said she was, did I? Well, you don't have to, do you? What do you mean by that? Well, where you been going on at Alarius? It's, it's the one she hasn't walked out. She's doing her best, you know. We all have to learn. Yes, yeah, so and some of us still are, Mrs. Duckworth. Some of us still are. That's just um, Brilliant. Right? Excellent, Miss Morgan, first class. Sorry? Customer relations. Very important aspect of her work is that. You handle that one perfectly. Well, he only wanted to know where the tin fruit was. Ah, yes. But it was the way you directed him, you see. Your manner. Confident, friendly. Oh, yes, it does definitely make a difference. It? And what does? Breeding. Well, obviously, you have got. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine Mrs. Duckworth directing something like that with your flair? I wouldn't think so. And that's why in 20 years she'll still be stocking the old freezers. Well, you, you. Uh, I have to get on. Put this in the freezer. No, no, Mrs. Duckworth will deal with that. Um, I was thinking about that little, uh, you know, display. The one with the Better Buy Coop book and uh, yeah, the ingredients. The one you told me to take down. Oh, complete misunderstanding that. Largely down to Mr. Watts. You know, he's very, very keen the land, but he will go off half cock. <laughs> if only he'd keep me fully informed, anyway. It's all water under the bridge, that now, isn't it? No, what I wanted is for you to set it all up again. Set it up again? Exactly, yes. Yes, Alf. Uh, just half, please. Right, Derek? Alf. Uh, are you joining me? Uh, no, no thanks, Alf. If you spend any more time on that half, you'll have Alec charging your rent. I see. So unless you're prepared to pour ale down your throat like it was going out of fashion, you're not welcome here anymore, is sorry, that Sorry, sorry, only joking. Uh, oh. No sign of a job yet, then. Can cows fly? As bad as that, is it? Worse. Mm. Well, try not to worry. You know what, I think it's the same for everybody. I got my invoices just before I came out. You would not believe the way prices... 
Chris has gone up. My offer's still open to you, know. B&B at Duckworth Towers couldn't be easier for work. Get lost, Jack. See, I knew it wouldn't last between you and Des Barnes. I mean, what does he know about life? What does he know about how to treat a woman? I'll tell you something else that won't last much long if you don't belt up your breathing. There we is a sight for sore eyes. Eh? I was beginning to despair of ever seeing another human being again. Look at them two. I've seen happier faces in crematorium. Well, they can't all lead wild, exciting lives like you and me. True, Bob and Tommy, please. <coughs> you on your own? Yeah, why? I thought you and this fellow you were inseparable these days. That's the way Maeve sees it, any road. Yes, I know. And she's not the only one. Mm, Martin. Thought he might have to cover for one of the lads tonight, but he won't. He'll be back at the usual time. And well, that's the problem? No, he's delighted. He'll be able to do some more work without testers taking. So what is the problem? Hmm? There is no problem. Oh, come on, something's bothering you. Not the price of tea cake. It's this test. It means so much to him. So? So what if he doesn't pass? What if he fails? All his dreams go out the window. Why does that leave him? He what? He wants to marry me. Well, by heck, he don't waste much time, does he? So are you going to? I've told him I need time. I need time to think about it. Get it in perspective. Get my life in perspective. When do I settle for what I've got? Getting up every morning just as birds are clearing the throat. Working seven days a week. So whacked at night I can hardly open the door. And for what? So some yob can smash my door down and help himself whenever he feels like it. Or do I snatch his hand off and take off to Florida with a man who seems to think the world of me? Well, that's down to you, isn't it, kid? There's only you can answer that one. I only wish I could, Ben. Only wish I could. <laughs> It's not a matter of what I like, is it? I like the other one you did. But his Imperial Majesty had other ideas, if I remember correctly. He'll go spare if he finds out you're at it again. No, he won't. He told me to do it. He said it was up to us to use our creative talents for the wider interests of better wives. He what? The two-faced rattlesnake, the four-eyed little... Mr. Watts, everything all right in the storeroom, I take it? Yes. Well, what do you think of our little display? I mean, as fellas go, he couldn't treat me better. He's kind, considerate, generous. I can't fault him. As a companion, you couldn't ask for better. But when there's just the two of you, he's just the same. It's just that that's as far as it goes. I mean, if I am to start a new life with this fellow, I'd like to think that till he's fancied me. Am I asking too much, Beth, when we get to our age? Our age? Thirty summer, you mean? But I'm alive. Me and Ali can't exactly in our first flush of youth. But we still have our moments. It's nothing to do with age. We happen to suit each other. We get somewhat out of life as a couple that we'd never have got as individuals. That's the way we felt when we got hitched. It's the reason we got hitched. When you meet the right fella, there are no doubts, no unanswered questions. You just know this is the fella you want to spend the rest of your life with. Forget Florida. If this Ted's the right fella for you, you'll be happy to shack up with him in a tent on the Red Wreck. And if not, I reckon the sooner you put him out of his misery, the better. Yes, Miss Morgan. Have you seen Mr. Holdsworth anywhere? I think he's gone back to his office. Oh, thank you. Uh, Miss Morgan, uh, nothing wrong, is there? Oh, no, nothing wrong. Anything, anything I could help with? I doubt it. I just wanted to tell Mr. Holdsworth that I wouldn't be able to make the evening shift tomorrow. Oh. My father's just been on the phone. Father? He's going to be in the area on business tomorrow and has offered to take me out for a meal, as I don't see him that often. 
tomorrow evening. Fine, fine, no problem. Oh, I'll tell Mr. Holdsworth it's all right with you then. No need, no need. Staff hours are my responsibility. Um, Mr. Holdsworth doesn't really want to know. You see, there's still a few decisions around here I can make off my own bat. Well, I'll go to lunch then. Yes, yes. Hiya. Oh, there's. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I thought you were at work. I came home early. I had a blinding headache. Wouldn't you be better lying down? No, I don't think so. I was just about to put kettle on. I thought I'd have a quick brew before I went. Do you want one? No, no thanks. Well, I'll get the rest of my gear together. Where are you going? It's what we agreed. It's what you agreed. You and Lorraine. It's what we want. You and me, both of us. Is it? It's what you want. I never said that. You never tried to stop me. Well, I am doing now. Raquel, I don't want you to go. I never wanted you to go. Well, why the heck didn't you say something? You've let me go through all this, packing my gear away, all my memories of this place, wondering where I'd gone wrong. You couldn't wait to get shut of me. We're a right pair, aren't we, me and you? When I think what you've put me through. Will you stay? What do you think? Come here. I thought you had an headache. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. You know, I think you could be right. A lie down would do me the world of good. Thank you. Well, you tell him to let me know if he's interested. Oh, I will mention it, Mr. Sugden, but I can tell you now it won't be. Well, you won't know that till you ask him, will you? Look, Mr. Sugden, I'm sure it's a very great honour to become a member of your bowling club, and, and we appreciate you thinking of Derek, but I'm afraid you just won't have time. Won't have time? You'll have plenty of time. Oh, well, now, maybe, but come the summer, hopefully, you'll be working again. Well, that's highly debatable, the way things are looking. Anyway, I know if he's not interested, I know plenty of people that will be. So I'll, I'll bid you good evening. Oh, honestly. If I have to listen to one more suggestion from that man about how Derek can spend his time... Now, come on, calm down. He was only trying to be neighbourly. Yes, well, I don't consider it very neighbourly, implying that every time he comes in, that all Derek's fit for is the scrap heap. Is that what Derek reckons? No, of course it isn't. Well, that's all that matters, isn't it? What the heck does it matter what Percy Sugden thinks? Oh, I suppose you're right. I know I am. Thanks, Thank love. You. Look, if you want to get away, I'll finish off here. Oh, you're all right. Ted's not picking me up to up, I said. Ooh, so where is it tonight? Or uh, is it another surprise? We haven't decided yet. A meal somewhere and then back here for a drink. Oh, you are lucky, you know, finding somebody like Ted for companionship. I mean, he's steady and reliable and no complications. Oh, it's just what we want at our time of life, isn't it? Oh, what's tickling you? Just found a tennis stuck to the bottom of a pint pot. No, no, no such luck. No, I suppose it's down to Madame there. Really? And what has she been up to to bring a smile to your pudgy little chops? Now, look at her. She actually seems as though she's enjoying working here. Different than dinner time, she had a face to turn the milk. Aye, we all know the reason why, don't we? I that Des Barnes must have something going for him. Well, if it keeps my staff happy, I'm glad he has. Because you know what they say? A contented ship's an efficient ship. Right. Well, as long as everything's ship shape, you won't miss me, will you? Miss you? Where are you going? I'm going to treat myself to something I've been promising myself since I got up this morning. A nice long soak in a hot bath. Not to leave me stuck here on my own? Oh, come on, Bert. No, I mean, fair, fair. I mean, you were stuck for over an hour at dinner time. I've not been with Fanny Fairclough. And I reckon that still leaves me with a fair bit in credit. Eh? Like the best part of six weeks. When you were sailing through calmer waters, like the Caribbean, right, Skipper? Yes, 
Hi, please. Hi. Settled in, then? Sorry. Your new place. I thought you were moving out today. Oh, supposed to be, yeah. Supposed to be? I didn't. Stopping with Des. Oh, I thought you decided it was time you moved on. Well, so did I. Seems I got it all wrong. 105, please. Another block. Oh, Ta. no, thanks, Cam. I've got to be on my way. Hey, listen, you won't be uh, seeing Martin tonight, will you? Who knows when I see Martin nowadays? If he's not at work, he's got his head stuck in some sort of book or another. Why? Oh, no, no, if you're not likely to see him, it doesn't matter. No, 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 go on, I might do. Well, you know this test he's doing to get on the nurses' course? Well, mm -hmm. if you get the chance, do you think you could just get it through to him? Well, it's not the end of the world if he doesn't pass. Why, what's brought all this on? Look, I don't want Martin to know I've told you this, nor Gail. Only she's just worried he's attaching too much importance to it, and that, well, if he doesn't pass, that, well, what's he going to do to Martin? No, I'm sorry. Hey, come on, you're supposed to be his mate. I know. And I know as well as what you do, well, how important it is for Martin to pass this exam. And nothing's going to undermine his confidence more than folk going round, putting into his mind that he might just fail. If that happens, in, in my book, that's a big if, but if it does, that's the time to start picking up the pieces, and not a minute before. She wants you to go up. Oh, come on, Gail. You can see how I'm fixed. Do you want to watch to say goodnight? I don't want you to read to her or anything like that. Right, well, I'll be up in a minute, then. Can you have a look at this yet, Martin? Oh, come on, not now, Nicky. It's only something simple, I know it is. Well, it'll be the batteries, won't it? It's not the batteries, they're nearly new. It's a loose wire, I'm sure it is. Nicky, when I say no, I mean no. Some other time, all right. Now, if you don't mind, I'm trying to work. Nicky, go clean your room, there's a good lad. Martin might have time to look at your car later. Well, he might. Martin? Yeah, right, I suppose so. Now, can I get on? Thanks, Martin. Sum it up. Look, I know how much this test means to you. And I want you to pass. I want you to get on the course, because it's what you want. But, well, if you don't pass, it's not the end of the world, Martin. I mean, there are some things more important than passing tests. At least I like to think there are. Like your family. <clears throat> May I join you? Well, we weren't planning on staying long, actually. Mm, very wise. If I had a companion as charming as your lady wife, anxious to see to my every comfort, I don't think I'd be sitting in here either. So what can we do for you? Do for me? I can't a neighbour join you for a friendly drink now without there being an ulterior motive? I'm sorry? Well, actually, now you mention it, there is, uh, there is something that, uh, of concern to me. And what would that be? Rita Furclough, fair maid of this parish. Rita? What about her? Well, I'm concerned about her, naturally. Concerned? Well, to be precise, the company she's keeping. Oh, I've told you before, Mr Holsworth. You've no need to worry on that score. There's mm. nothing unsavoury about Ted Sullivan. Yes, but what do you really know about him? I mean, is he sufficiently endowed? I beg your pardon? I mean, set up money-wise. Well, I don't think that's any of your business. No, Mavis is right. Yes, but I think it would be my business if his intentions were not entirely honourable to Mrs Fergliff, and I think yours would be. I'm sorry, I'm not with you. Oh, come on, Derek. Every man in the world's not as honourable, as honest as you are, you know. Or me, more's the pity. See, you've got to admit, for many men, Mrs Fergliff would be a very good catch because She's an attractive woman, you see, Derek, and financially independent. And Mr. Holdsworth, hmm? your concern is totally groundless. Ted Sullivan is a perfect gentleman in every way. I'm so glad you like that place. The food's nothing special, but it's the atmosphere. So relaxing. <laughs> well, come on. Take the weight off your feet. <sighs> A perfect end to a perfect evening. Thanks again. To us. To us. <sighs> Ted, before you get too comfy, there's something I have to say. Oh, I know. You have to get up at half past five to do the papers. <laughs> well, no, I don't, actually. Not tomorrow. Mavis is doing them. Really? Yeah. Well, perhaps you shouldn't have mentioned that. 
Well, a good meal, good brandy, a beautiful companion. What more could a man want? And neither of us has anything to get up for in the morning. Happy? Oh, I can see I'll have to have Mavis do the papers more often. The last thing I wanted to do was to push you into anything you didn't want to get into. Give you the impression that I was only after one thing. I have far too much respect for you for that. I wanted you to get to know me. I wanted to get to know you. And if anything was going to happen between us, well, it would be for the right reasons at the right time for both of us. Oh, Sarah, slow coach Louise. If you're not down here in two minutes, your breakfast goes in the bin. Hmm. And yours has gone all over your face. Isn't it, messy face? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Gonna be a long, hard slog, you know. Mm. It's on the test. I don't mean the test. I mean, if you get on the course. Three years, solid studying. No, nothing worthwhile comes easy, does it, Titch? Hmm? You certainly didn't. I'm only saying... I know what you're saying, but I'm just asking you to have a little bit of faith in you, all right? I do. Hmm. <laughs> what have you got on your head, madam? Is that what Martin would have on his head? Oh, is it now? <laughs> there you go, you see. When I'm going around with my knickers on me bones. <laughs> Be proud of me, then, won't you? Ah, another late night. I had allowed to stay up after the witching hour, you know. Past that watershed after my <clears throat> birthday. <laughs> well, you can't blame me for being interested. I mean, if I came into work late with a little secret smile all over my face, you'd want to know the reason, wouldn't you? Heaven forbid. <laughs> I don't know why you've been so coy about it. One thing I've never been accused of, Mavis, is being coy. I mean, it's not as if you're having an illicit affair. I'm not having an affair of any kind. I'm just having a nice, ordinary, middle-aged friendship. Well, you make it sound very boring. Good. It'll stop you asking questions. Do you think you could hold the fort for me later on? I just want to nip out for half an hour. To see Ted? Sorry to disappoint you, Miss Cartland, but the answer is no. We're not planning a mid-morning gallop across the moors. It's just that I've got a little bit of personal business to attend to. All right. Tell me, as a fashion student, which goon dictated that men have to wear a piece of cloth round the neck all day and strangles them? You could wear your Red Not Dead t-shirt. Or are you worried that might shock the boss's daughter? Less is not like that. Not like what? Well, stuffy. You mean she's not terribly sloony or super young? No, she's a nice girl and very down to earth, despite her background. Which remind me, Daddy's coming today. Oh. And when he finds out how his daughter's been treated, one of us will come up smelling of roses and it won't be audible Oldsworth. What's them? Curtains? Colots. Well, they look like curtains to me. Yes, well, that's because they were. In my bedroom, till they shrank. It's all right, Rita knows. She says I can get some more as long as I don't go mad. What beats me is why she never said anything. Who? No, Rita? No, the Honourable Vanessa. The way revolting Reggie's been using her as a human punch ball, I'm surprised she wasn't tempted to tell him who Peter is. Well, what would have you done, Miss Independence? Me? I'd want to get where I'm going on my own merit, even if my dad was flipping King of England. Well, don't knock her for doing the same thing. All right, clever bombs. So, what does she look like, then? Old puffer jackets and velvet headbands. I'll tell you something. She wouldn't have seen dead in a pair of old curtains. <laughs> Someday the prince will come. Oh! Oh, do you know, you'll nearly get me an heart attack, young lady. 
frosted raspberry cream, what do you think? Fine if you're planning on somebody licking your toes. Well, you never know your luck. Uh, pass us that off there, will you? There's a doll. Oh, what is it? Well, it's nothing naughty. Oh, you've got a wicked mind, you. It's a toe separator. Any road, what are you doing here? You're supposed to pack your hettles and shettles and gone yesterday. Oh, well, that were then, this is now. Things have changed. Mm. Staying, are you? Well, he begged me, I couldn't say no. Oh, I'll bet that's been a problem with you all your life. So we're back to square one, are we? I wouldn't quite say that. I'd say we were on to square two or even three. Really? Well, I'll get on with my work. Uh, Phyllis. What? I just want you to know that no matter what happens with me and Desi, I don't intend to interfere. As far as I'm concerned, you're the one that runs the household. Really? Well, I've got a routine, you see. Yeah, and it runs like clockwork. I wish I was half as efficient as you. Ah, well, we were brought up that way, weren't we? To do cooking, ironing, sewing. Yes, we were brought up tough in my day. Oh, you're lucky. We did rotten computer studies. I hated computer studies. Eh? I bet you can turn an end so you wouldn't know hands had touched it. First prize. Two years running, needlework. Only I've got this skirt once shortening. I don't suppose you'd be an absolute angel, would you? Park your backside, Flower. Let's be having it. How do you know it's not a social call? Since when did you make social calls in the middle of a working day? Not now, Jacko. Girl talk. Go on, love. I feel like a schoolgirl right into Claire Rayner. Well, don't think I'm not pleased to see you, Flower. But didn't we go through this whole scenario yesterday? Well, there's been a development. What kind of a development? Alec, out. Girl talk. Again, she'll be moving her toothbrush in next. Alec. Take the notice, love. Go on. Well, you know I said I liked him, but there didn't seem to be any spark between us. What you mean is, he behaves like a perfect gentleman, when really you'd like him to leap on you with unbridled passion. Oh, I want no such thing. But if Phyllis Pierce can still yearn for a bit of romance, why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't any of us, Cock? The problem is, none of us send the hormones whizzing round like we used to. I mean, look at me. Once I only had to walk in Ritz Ballroom, I'd be fighting fellas off in truckloads. Now, I reckon I could swan in in the nuddy, They'd not even give pause from swilling lager down the gobs. If it was still there. Aye. Demolished like us. Speak for yourself, lady. What has this girl been up to? Well, let's just say that certain things I thought were missing aren't. You mean you did a spot check? I mean, he's not as cool, calm and collected as I thought he was. Well, the old dark horse. Look at you. So where's your problem now? Well, I must admit, I'm flattered. I mean, when you think you've been put out to pasture long since, it's very nice to know somebody still fancies you. It's more than nice, Flower. If I were you, I'd grab it with both hands, well, in a manner of speaking. Alan was the last fella I was really attracted to. Look where that got me. Comparing Alan and Ted is like comparing a sabre-toothed tiger to a fluffy hot water bottle. Different species altogether. You can't let the ghost of Bradley haunt your life forever, lady. I just don't want to walk into any more major cock-ups. That was enough for one lifetime. If we don't take risks sometimes, Ray, we might as well be dead. This Ted's a nice bloke, and he's asked you to marry him. I might quit, granted. But who's got years left to work up to these things? You've said yourself you like him. You're even beginning to lust after him a bit, judging from your girly blushes. Go for it, kiddo. I would. Well, sir, this might go stuck. You keep a decent pint. It's very reasonable, too. As a matter of fact, I don't know why I'm coming, coming down here more often, you know. I do. We didn't used to have your wife as chief attraction. Aye, well, she's not a bad wee barmaid, so she's not, eh? Hey, less of this patronising stuff, if you don't mind, lads. I am a working woman, not an ornament. Mm -hmm. Be an even harder working woman once we get the grub back on. Hey, listen, Liz told me about that. What's your problem? It's not just ours. Since the new Food Safety Act, any place that cooks and serves food on the premises has got to get its house in order sharpish. And what, why? <laughs> you name it, 
Environmental health want to change it. It's not just the standard of your food. It's your fridges, your ovens, your microwaves, your ruddy walls, floors and ceilings. They've all got to come up to scratch or you're in dead lumber. It's costing us a ruddy fortune to meet the new requirements, I don't mind telling you. But, like I said to the committee, we've got no option, if we want to stop in business. Mm. It does make sense, though, when you think about it, all that salmonella going around last year. I mean, nobody wants to take risks, do they? Ah, you're right there, sweetheart. I mean, you're half the food you eat out. You don't know who the hell cooks it or what they put in it, you know? <laughs> no, you can't blame the local authorities for getting tough. Environmental health, you say then, Michael? Oh, Betty, yeah. Two hot pots, please, and two pineapple juices. Coming up, love. Oh, so, how's the big romance going oh, then? I can't really say. You know Rita. She has to know everybody else's business, but clams up when it comes to her own. <laughs> One hot pot, please, Raggle. Uh, all of the same. I don't think I'm supposed to serve you. Hey, you can't turn down a devoted admirer. If I wasn't a happily married fella, I'll tell you what. Young Des knew what he was doing when he asked you to stay on. Don't suppose an hot pot can do any harm. Ah. Ah. Hey! What are you doing here? You're bad. Betty, we both know that was a passing whim on Alex's behalf. He no more wants to see the back of a good customer as he wants to see the tax man underneath his bed looking in his cash box. Well, <laughs> he has a fit. Don't blame me. Here, take these to the two ladies over there, will you? Not two ladies, that's Emily and Mavis. Hey, 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 take them and cut out the cracks. Look, I am not a waitress. What about Blondie? She'd look well in the penny. Raquel is serving customers, Bet's on the phone, and Alex at the bank, and Betty is rapidly running out of patience, right? Two hot pots on the double. Can we have two hot Now then, girls, watch your tongues on these that they mad at. So, what plots of your boss and mine actually now? Plots? Well, they've always got together, it's together in that back room, have they? I mean, today, yesterday, cackle, cackle, cackle. All they need is a flaming carnival. Me and Rita was here this morning. Wouldn't even let me in the room. You know, I didn't get my elevens till 12, and it's not good enough, you know. What was all that about? I think I can guess. There we are, Lambert. Oh. Right. Lovely. Oh, okay. Betty. Yeah? Where was this cooked? What kind of a question's that? Mm. Well, it's very reasonable. I mean, if I'm expected to eat it, I'm entitled to know where it was cooked. I think it was cooked on a campfire in Eaton Park, in the same place as I always come, in the back. What's going on? What's he doing here? Just doing my bit for the community, Squire. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this dish of food here, delicious though it may be, does not meet the standards required by the environmental health. I just thought you folks would be interested to know this. Well, what's up with it? There's no framing up with uh, it. Look, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but as a concerned member of the community, it is my duty to remove this dish and have it checked by the appropriate authorities. On your behalf, landlord, ask your fellow victuallers. They have been fining them. They have been closing them down wholesale. Cheerio now. <laughs> I believe you went to see Bet this morning. I believe I did. When you said you were going out on personal business. It was. I suppose it was about Ted. Look, wouldn't it be easier to give me a questionnaire and get me to fill it in? Oh, forget it, Rita. Subject closed. I should know better than to try and take an interest. Oh, Mavis, it's just that I'm a bit of a model over the whole situation. Well, of course, you've every right to choose in whom you wish to confide, but... Well, I must say, I thought we were friends, and I've been... It's just very hurtful to be excluded. I'm not excluding you, Flower. It's just that I, I wanted to sort out my feelings. Well, for what it's worth, I think he's a lovely man and you could do worse. But obviously you prefer to trust Beth's judgement over and above mine. Oh, it's just that she's more streetwise, experienced, you must admit. Uh, what advice does this streetwise, experienced friend have to give you that I couldn't have? She thinks he's a lovely man and I could do worse. I've never been so insulted. Oh, you must have. I am. Here, stop sniffling, woman. Take that. It's me he's getting at for barring him. He's trying to wind me up. It's his idea of a thick joke. No, I don't think so, Alec. I mean, you know, he's got it right. They are on the warpath. I thought you'd have known that. I was reading in the paper only on Sunday how they're taking a much more serious view of food hygiene offences. One licensee was fined thousands of pounds. Oh, they barred the Legion from selling grub last week. Taking so well down, you know. Oh. Well, thank you. 
Thank you all very much. You've been a great comfort to me, I must say. I suppose crisps are all right. See, they can't complain about crisps. They come in sealed bags. Well, Hot Pot doesn't, does it? Bangers and Mash doesn't. Shepherd's Pie doesn't, does it? Do you happen to know that the profit margin on a bag of crisps wouldn't even buy you one half of a pair of false flaming eyelashes, miss? I don't wear false eyelashes. Hmm. Please don't squeeze me till I'm yours. I beg your pardon? Are you aware of that little homily, sir? As manager of this store, I am seriously thinking having such notices put all over the fruit and veg. Mm. An interesting idea. I can do without your sarcasm, sir. Have you any concept of the wastage caused by people like yourself wantonly bruising our prized fruit and veg here? Actually, I do. Oh, excellent. Then perhaps in future, sir, you will comply with my wishes and keep your hands off the merchandise until you pay for it. Thank you. Um, it's self-service. Mm -hmm. How am I expected to buy without handling the produce? Ah. Well, handling is one thing, sir. Pressing, poking and prodding is quite another. Yes. Do you actually intend to make a purchase of any kind? Actually, no, not today. Oh, I say, I understand. <sighs> Dirty old men in supermarkets, is it? Can I help you with your trolley, miss? Uh, Mr Holdsworth. Right, Mr Watts, I'd be uh, obliged if you would accompany this gentleman to the door. Thank you. Um, I don't think you two have been introduced. I'm Norman Watts, assistant manager. I recognise you from your photograph in the company report, sir. Mr Holdsworth, Lord Morgan, Vanessa's father and our chairman. So serious, is it? Very. I could strangle that flaming Irishman. Oh, even if you got within six yards of him, which I very much doubt, how do you think that'd help? Talk sense, Alec. If what they say is right, we'd be done sooner or later anyway. That's what I was hoping it'd be later rather than sooner. So you did know about well, this? Of course I did, but I was hoping if we kept a low profile, they wouldn't bother us a little backstreet pub like ours. Well, if they can clobber the Legion, they can certainly clobber us. Well, they will now. That mad Irishman giving us away. No danger. So what's we going to do? Simple. We re-equip the kitchen to meet the new requirements at a cost of thousands. Oh. Or we give up serving food. And you can forget about new clothes. If you're lucky if I can afford to buy a new pair of tights. The only reason I have for not recognising your lordship is uh, pressure of work. 24 hours a day job is this. At least it is the way Reginald Holdsworth does it. Duty, first, last and always. In fact, I think when I die, they'll have better buys engraved on my heart. It's taking its toll. But if only a lordship had notified us that we were coming, we'd have had the red carpet well and truly unfilled. We wouldn't. Precisely why I didn't. Can't stand fuss. Oh, hello, Daddy. I didn't expect to see you today, night. Doing one of your spot checks. Oh, is this your dad? Aren't you going to introduce me then? Not now, Mrs. Duckworth. Lord Morgan has more important things to do with this time than to uh, stand chatting to Shell Stackard. Lord who? Daddy, this is Mrs. Duckworth. She's been a great help to me while I've been here. You mean your dad's big boss? Like? Not now, Mrs. Duckworth. You mean it's a real live lord, you know? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Duckworth. Would you like to return to your duties? Smoke mackerel is not going to jump on the shelves of its own accord. <laughs> Very popular, it's a smoke mackerel round here. Forthwith, sweet Mrs. Duckworth. Holdsworth. Please remember that every member of staff, however lowly, is a vital link in the Better Buy chain. After all, the grassroots is where I started. Wheeling trolleys uh, back from the Middlesbrough branch. Uh, I've always wondered, sir, is that story apocryphal? Absolutely true. Of course, the chain was much smaller then. Yes, story of true grit and determination. An absolute example to us all, that was, sir. Yes. And now, if you like a nice little cup of tea in my office, I can show you our current sales graph. We're on a very positive upward slope, if I might modestly say. Oh, what the heck's this? Out there is cold hot pot. Actually, I suppose it should be called cold pot, really, shouldn't it? <laughs> Jim, I'm very tired. It's been a long day, and I get enough daft jokes from the lads. What's it doing here? Not a lot, really. I was just going to chuck it in the bin. Hey, listen. I'll tell you what, I've just had some mighty crack with Gilroy. I told him I was going to report him to the environmental health because he was serving food out of his kitchen and it didn't come up the regulations. <laughs> Actually, I got the idea off your boss. Wonderful. I'm sure Alec fell about. Oh, you want to see his face? It's always worth paying money for, I'll tell you. 
Jim, it was a horrible thing to do. Spiteful and vindictive. Oh, aye. Just like when he sacked you. He didn't sack me. He just didn't give me my job back. <sighs> anyway, listen. He had it coming to him, Liz, didn't he? And anyway, I had no intention of reporting him. I was only having a bit of crack with him. Yeah. I'm sure Betty found it very funny. Right, that's them two settled. I'll give Nicky another ten minutes across the road and then I'll go for him. Do you, I don't know who's the biggest kid with that remote control car. He's more done. Now, oh, come here. Sit down. Do you want it to be left to your books? Yeah, well, there's something I think we've got to sort out before I can concentrate. Something wrong? Well, I hope not, no. But why don't you think I can do this? I never said that. No, but you're not 100% about it, are you? Oh, come on, there's something holding you back. Is it me? Do you think I can't do it or something? No, of course I don't. First time I saw you, I said the more to that lad than meets the eye. Yeah, so what is it then? It's me, I suppose. <laughs> it's you? Yes. <clears throat> I'm scared that if things change, we'll grow apart. You'll grow apart. Oh, come on, Gail, I've never heard such rubbish. Look, you'll be meeting all sorts of different people. Better educated than me. Younger than me. You'll have different interests. Oh, right, I see. So I won't want to bother with me ignorant, boring, elderly missus anymore. Is that it? I'll thump you in a minute. Well, I wish you would. Give me an excuse to thump you back. Gail. <sighs> I love you. Did the most important thing to me, you and the kids. And I'll never change that. You know, even though I became the top surgeon down there, which I won't, it'd never change. I thought you knew that. I'm being silly. I'm sorry. Hmm. Hmm. So we should be. Hmm. Come here. <laughs> <sighs> Is that really what you thought then? Hmm? What? Hmm. There's more to that lad than meets the eye. Hmm? I did. <laughs> and I was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Little training. You turned out to be the best chip rat we've ever had. <laughs> hey, all them weeks and her practically royal turns your pals up with me. She didn't have much option, did she, if Reg put us to work with you in double harness? Well, trust you to put the mockers on. Might be hard for you to grasp, Jack, but Vanessa likes me. Or else why else won't she tell me her father was? Because she didn't want me to feel inferior. I think she possibly had one or two other reasons for that, Vera. <laughs> I'd like to have seen Reggie's face when he realised, though. <laughs> well, it serves him right, silly old fool. <laughs> I can't believe we didn't know who Morgan was. Hey, Lord Morgan to you, miss, and she is a honourable. So, she goes to the toilet like the rest of us, doesn't she? Do you know, she can be very cause your girlfriend at times. <laughs> I've got no truck with all this fallout tugging. As far as I'm concerned, we're born in the we're dying in the But in the middle, I'm interested in kids. Oh, I believe you had a visit from a VI. P today, Reginald. Yes. Yeah, and incognito as well. I must say, I admire the way you treated him, just like any other dodgy customer. Uh, can't imagine what sort of lure he tells, Mr. Watson, been telling you. Oh, only how you accused him of being a dirty old man, and how he was uh, pinching the tomatoes in a suggestive manner. Uh, well, that's all part and parcel of my current campaign against uh, in store sexual harassment. But then again, I would have thought uh, somebody in your shoes would appreciate that, Emerson. Eh, well, I do. <laughs> Did his lordship? Yes, as a matter of fact, once we cleared up the uh, general misunderstanding, I thought that the chairman's thinking was generally in line with mine. Yes. More like yours in line with his creep. Yeah. So his Reginus didn't talk himself into getting the sack then? No, he came up smelling of roses as per usual. Oh, I've got to celebrate, Dad. Well, it's only an interview, maybe. Oh, but it's the first proper interview for a half decent job that you've had. Now the drinks are on me. Well, I haven't got it yet. Aren't you being a little premature? Positive, Derek, I'm being positive. It's the power of positive thinking. You have to say to yourself, I will get this position. I will. Well, I'll certainly give it my best shot. <laughs> I must say, these last few weeks have been endless. There's nothing more diminishing, more mind-destroying than being out of work. Yes, oh, please. Uh, sweet cherry and a small whiskey, oh, please. Baby. No positive thinking, Derek. <laughs> There's no point in discussing it anymore. I mean, we've got to face the facts and act accordingly. Seems such a shame, though. Shame? It's more than a shame. It's a flaming tragedy, isn't it? Oh. What else can I do, though? <laughs> I haven't got thousands to spend on refitting the place. No, we just have to face the facts. It's the end of an era. 
I mean, apart from how else, there's Betty. She'll take it very personal when she finds out she won't be cooking no more. I don't think you've quite fully grasped the situation, love. Betty Wood does not be cooking here anymore. She won't be working here anymore. Simple economics, isn't it? I mean, no food equals no Betty. Q-E-D. No, my tie's all right, maybe. Well, I'm only trying to... I know you are, but you're not. Well, I'm sorry. It's my nerves. I'm all on edge. It's a traumatic experience these days, a job interview. Yes, but this job's right up your street. I mean, office furniture, it's absolutely you. I know, of course it is. And, and you're highly motivated. Well, that's what they want, highly motivated. It said so at the I know, advert. granted, maybe. And a proven track record. Oh, Derek, it's you. And you're bound to impress them at the interview with your, your personality and your voice. Oh, I know that's your opinion, Mavis. Well, they'll think that as well. Because just think they'll have been seeing all these young men. Well, they won't have any manners at all, will they? Young men, yes. Young. That's the rub, I'm afraid. Oh, but the old have a lot to offer, and people are beginning to realise that. Oh, Derek, when I say old, I don't mean that you're old. You're mature. Mm. I'm not old where it counts, Mavis. Inside. Inside, I'm still a young man. Still a teenager, almost. I know that, I know. Oh, don't worry. Just suppose they ask you why you left your last position. Well, I shall tell them the plain, unvarnished truth. Oh, is that wise, telling them that Victor gave you the sack? Oh, no, Mavis, no, no. The real truth, which is, of course, that I was too big for the job and my employer was too small for his. It's like I told you before. As of right now, we are out of the hot food business, so you know what that means. You tell me. It means Betty has to go. Oh, come on, Alec. You can't fire Betty. Look, she's here to do hot pots, isn't she? Well, no hot pots, no Betty. But hang on a minute. She's a barmaid and all. Betty was here before me. She's been here donkey's years. Yes, I know that. She's probably the oldest barmaid in Weatherfield, but you've got to be practical. Takings will be down. We've got to shed staff. All right, then. Get shut of Raquel. She's only been here for ten minutes. Now, if anybody should go, it should be her. No, come on, Raquel. Bring straight in. There's blokes only coming here to lean on the bar and drink and stare at her, aren't there? No, no, you, you've got to face the facts, Bet. I mean, uh, Betty's had a good innings. His business is this. And I'm sorry, don't blame me. Blame these food laws. Morning. Ah, oh, uh, Betty, uh, the, 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 there's no need for you to set to in the uh, kitchen this morning. Look. Oh? Uh, no, no, we're uh, we're not doing hot food anymore. Ah, oh, a lot of people like my hot pots. They're coming here especially for them. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, I, I know that. And if it was up to me, of course, we'd go on giving them what they want. But it's, uh, it's these new hygiene regulations, you see. The Abbott's landlord's jumping through blazing hoops. I mean, we'd have to have the kitchen ripped out for a start. New plumbing, new wiring, mm. tiles everywhere, two sinks. That's before you start buying new freezers, new cookers. Cost thousands. Mm. We just can't do it. Oh, well, it's one less job. I'll go and make a start in the bar. <laughs> when are you going to tell her? Ah, yeah. Well, I, I was thinking, you know, um, you and her being such old pals. I thought you might like to tell her. You what? Well, it'd soften the blow, wouldn't it, coming from you? It will, hell is like. Oh, no, I'm not doing your dirty work for you. If you want to sack her, you do it. I'm having no part of it. Yes, I must say, Miss Morgan, I really am very sorry. Yes, indeed, I am very sorry. Morning. Hi. I was to say, Mr Watts, how very sorry I was. Yes, I heard you, Mr Holdsworth. I've never heard you apologise before. Apologise? What are you talking about? I wasn't apologising. I was merely voicing my distress. Obviously, you haven't heard the news. Miss Morgan is uh, soon to be leaving us. Oh? Well? Yeah, moving, I'm afraid. My father's idea. Yes, Mr Watts, our loss will be Walsall Superstore's gain. Walsall? Oh, well, you have my sympathy. Sympathy? It was a bit uncalled for, eh? Isn't it? Yeah. Miss Morgan will soon be going to one of the holy places of the Better Buy organisation, the very first store. Yes, I actually remember Miss Morgan travelling at my own expense one Sunday to uh, Walsall <laughs> so I could stand outside and look on with reverence at that very first manifestation of your father's business genius. Number six checkout's flashing. Oh, Mr Watts can attend to that. It's all right. No, no, it's good practice for me. <sighs> Wonderful young woman. 
my opinion, every inch of her father's daughter. My, it's a thin wind out there this morning. That's what the wife suffers from, that wind. It's me that gets it, yet it's her that suffers from it. You know? What do you used to call a lazy wind up, Catrick? Way, rather go through you than round you. No, you don't get it, do you? It's me that gets it, yet it's her that suffers from yes, it. Yes, 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 I've got it. I wouldn't dignify it with a flicker of interest. Mrs Turpin, I could manage one of your hot pots, please. Uh, I'm sorry, Percy Love. No cooked food now, Mr Sugden. Why's that? No, it's all these new food regulations, you see. It's got to be all hygienic now. It was hygienic before. Nobody ever got food poisoning from one of my hot pots. No. Are you telling me I can't get a bite to eat on this establishment? Oh, yeah, you can still have nuts or crisps. I'm talking about food. Something that's looked over a gate. Well, there's pork scratchings. Oh, well, if that's the best you can do, I'll, uh, I'll bid you good day and I'll go somewhere where I can get some proper food. Trouble, Percy. Oh, it's a big pot. Betty, uh... Alex said to tell you you'd like a word. Now? If you're not busy. No, I'm just standing here twiddling my thumbs. Now's as good a time as any, I suppose. Right. Did you want me? Ah, uh, Betty. <laughs> uh, come in, shut sh sh the door. Uh, would you like a drink? Sherry? Uh, no, thank you. I'm all right. I don't like to drink at dinner time. <laughs> no, no, right. Very wise. <laughs> Sit down, Betty. Uh, is, is there something wrong? Wrong? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Well, yes, yes, there is. Uh, I mean, it's no good beating about the bush, Betty. <laughs> It's these new hygiene regulations, you see. Oh, yeah. We won't be able to do the hot food anymore. You know, it cost us a fortune to comply with the regulations. I see. Yeah, so we'll all be having to tighten us belts. <laughs> We're overstaffed, Betty. That's the, the top and bottom of it. I mean, you can see see how it is, can't you? I mean, we, we just won't be doing the trade, you know, to justify the staffing level, you see. So... <laughs> Anyway, I mean, you've had a good innings. Um, what are you trying to say, Alec? Are you saying I'm sacked? Sacked? Are you? Oh, good gracious, Betty, no, no, Ooh, no. For a minute, I thought you were getting shot at me. <laughs> oh, well, the, the point is, uh, I mean, you, uh, you have earned the right to sit back a bit, haven't you? I mean, worked a long time, haven't you? Eh? And it's not as if you really need to work, is it? You know, you being a policeman's widow. <laughs> they look after the widows, don't they? The police, eh? Yes, I wish my pension prospects were as rosy. I do, really. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll all miss you. But I think you know that, don't you, Betty? There you go. Hello, Mr Sugden. Not your usual visiting time. No, but from now on, it can very well be. Well, what's up, Mr Sugden? Well, I've come to get some hot foods. That's something the Robbers return are not serving anymore. How come? Oh, it's the new food regulations, is it? You've got it in one. Food regulations. Some jumped-up clerk in Brussels, I dare say. Drunk with power. And an issue with a new set of rubber stamping pads. Snaps his fingers, and that's the end of Mrs Turpin's off. Oh, no, that'd be Alec Gilroy. I won't fuck out for the new equipment. But, but why should he? There's nothing wrong with that hot pot. Why should some pen push you stop me eating it? Only food, regulations and hygiene, Mr Sugden. I mean, if we have to keep this plane clean and hygiene, it, why shouldn't a pub if it's serving food? I know, I'm a grown man, I can protect myself. I know when the place is mucky or not, and the staff. Oh, well, we'll interpret that as a compliment, won't we? Yeah, we will. And if you'd like to give us your order, Mr Sugden, we can be getting on with it while you're talking. Right then, let's see. Oh, I'll tell you what, the cannelloni is very tasty. No, thank you. If and when I desire Italian food, I shall open the tin of spaghetti in the normal manner. No, I'll have two sausage, chips and peas, please. I can see that the Rovers lost is our game, can't you, Mum? Well, that's one way of looking at it. Oh, are you do a buster from now on? Oh, I'll eat Gilroy, I'll lose some custom. I mean, what's a what's a pub without food, eh? It's just an alehouse. <laughs> oh, well, I think I want the sausage done proper, browned. Not all pink and nasty down one side. You know, you should write a letter to Brussels, Mr Sugden. We could do him a regulation. There's something going on in there. What sort of something? I don't know, but I can feel the vibrations. And your Vera swears blind you're an insensitive pig. Right, Phyllis. Oh, Tal. Has my friend been in? Who's that? You know very well about me. Percy Sugden. Oh, him? Yeah, he was in. But he went storming out, said he was looking for something hot and tasty. Hey, I'll bet he meant me. Betty. You knew. 
You knew who was going to sack me. Excuse me, Betty. I've just been sacked. Me. Betty, it's not exactly the sack. It's the same. He says there's no job for me. Please don't go Listen, like this. I am not stopping here one minute longer where I'm not wanted. Betty. Oi, where what? are you going? What's up? I've been sacked. You what? Don't be surprised if you're not the next one on his hit list. <laughs> Oh, Alvick. Oh, come on, Ben. You know, I can't stand not knowing. It's no good asking me. His name's up over that door. He's the boss. Oh, I in theory, yes. But we all know the woman pulls the string and the husband jumps. Well, that may be the way it goes in your house, Jack. I can well believe it. Oh, come on, Ben. We all know that he, he does everything that you tell him really? to. Really? Well, I told him not to get shut of Betty. He took not a blind bit of notice. Have you nothing to do? What, me? Yeah, yes, yes. Lots of work to do in the cellar and back-breaking work. It is, boss. You know, but I, I, I love it. I, I'm not complaining. Oh, you can forget about cellar work. Oh, give it a chance, boss. You need a cellar, man. Yeah, look, look. Don't panic. Anything I hate to see about trembling. I've got work for you. Hey, you're a good one. You know, you know, I've always said that. I've always stuck by you. You know, you can ask anybody that comes yes, in. Yes, all right, Jack, all right. Now, listen. Hmm? In that kitchen, there's a stack of hot pot dishes. I want them taken down that cellar. The cellar. When you've done that, I want that, I want that kitchen scoured. I want it mopped, cleaned and scrubbed. Right. What's right? all this for? Them town hall snoopers. If they come round, as well they might, with Jim MacDonald tipping them off, I don't want a scrap of evidence left for them. All right, you've got your instructions. Jack. Welcome, boss. Leave it to me. Yes, oh, and by the way... Yeah. You do right to be worried about your job, Jack. But you will do your best for me, and I'll do my best for you. While you're in such good form, why don't you go and put the wind up, Raquel, as well? There, Raquel's all right. Look at her. Like bees round a jam pot. Yeah. But it's 40 years since anyone went in a bar to chat up Betty Turpin. You're a rat, Gilroy. Yes, I know, maybe I am. But a shrewd, business-like rat. Just as well for you, I am. Rat. I was a bit awkward with you at the beginning, wasn't I? I'm oh, sorry about that. It's working with Reg. It tends to make you a bit paranoid. Anyway, I hope you don't look back on your time here with us uh, with too much horror. It's been an education, just like Reg promised. University of Life, Miss Morgan. School of Hard Knocks. Yeah, well, he's one on his own, he's Reg. Listen, if anyone at head office asks if I'm managerial timber, I hope you put a good word in for me. Well, it wouldn't do much good, I'm afraid. These things tend to be counterproductive. I mean, look at Reg and Daddy. I told Daddy all about the hard time Reg had given me here. And do you know what he said? He said, good for Mr Holdsworth. The first branch manager with enough guts to treat a child of mine like less than royalty. Oh, God. Look, Vanessa, this is very, very important. You mustn't tell Reg what your father said. It's too late, I'm afraid. Daddy told Reg himself. It's all there, right up until the end of last week. Good lad, smart keeping your books up to date. That way you always know where you stand. Yeah. Look, I've uh, also added up how much we've made for piling on for work we haven't done and parts we claim we've replaced. Well, what did you want to do that for? Comes to 1,018 quid. <laughs> so? So, the money you give Aliwell, the backhander, it's only 1,000. What is your point, Kevin? You got your money back. The money I had to slip Hollywell. So you keep telling me and I keep saying, so what? So what I'm saying is we don't have to do it anymore. I don't have to invent stuff just to jack the bill up. I can start doing genuine invoices again. What you're saying is a load of ponies, sunshine. Where do you think you are in a Sunday school class? This is business, son. We are in it to make a profit. Yeah. Well, we're not here to do a fiddle. Oh, it's not fiddling. I mean, it's business. You may call it a fiddle. I call it uh, adding a percentage. And I tell you this, the day you start cutting the profits down from what they are is the last day that you work for me. So I'm inventing stuff and charging for it, eh, that I haven't done? How can you tell me that's not a fiddle? Call it, uh, creative impulse. Yeah. Well, I don't like it. End of argument, Kevin. Do it. Hey, Kev. All ready for me. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. You take the invoice, will you? Think of a number. Eh? Think of a number, then double it, then multiply it by the first number you thought of. It's a game, or what? A game, yeah. Here. Give that Mr. Alliwell. I hope he enjoys it. That's wrong! Nicky, shut up a minute, will you? You've done it wrong! Look, I'm trying to concentrate. I'm going to concentrate with you bowling down my ear hole, eh? Do you up in five minutes? What are you doing? 
Doing his sums all wrong. Yeah, I'm trying to do a practice test here. I've got him putting me off. See, question 10. He's put 36 and it should be 36. It's 36? Let's have a look. Uh, you put 264 tablets into four different size bottles. Mm. Half into one bottle and half the remainder into the second. Half the remainder into the third. And how many have you got left? 36. Three. Sorry, Martin. Nicky's right. It's 33. <laughs> how do you know that? I've just done it in my head. You haven't? <laughs> <laughs> must have a lot of empty space up there. Yeah, well, your mummy's good at the sums, isn't she, Nicky? It comes from adding up in the cafe all day. That and the fact that I grew up on old money, unlike you two, which makes you good at sums. OK, so you're old. <laughs> Ooh, oh. I'm clever, <laughs> OK. And tough. Yeah. So watch it. You're ganging up on me, you two. Good evening, Ted. Hello. Uh, give me a scotch, please. Right. I'll make it a double. On your way to Rita's, then? Yes, I am. Well, what's this, Dutch carriage? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, I'll just say good luck. Me and Rita are old mates. Oh, I see. Hey, hey just look at the state of them hands there. That's too scrubbing Kilboy's flipping kitchen. Oh, stop moaning. I'll buy you a pair of rubber gloves for your birthday and a new pinny. <laughs> you're hard, you know what? Scoff like you. No, don't do. get on to me. Get on to Alec Gilroy. Tell him I'm not scrubbing your kitchen floor. Oh, and he'd sack me just like that. Just like I did Betty. Oh, Emily. Uh, come on in, love. I hope I'm not intruding. No, of course you're not, love. I just wanted to come round and say, well, how sorry I am about what happened. And I'm sure everybody who knows you feels the same. Yeah, well. It was a shock, but I should have seen it coming, Louie. It's, it's just the way it was done. I mean, that's what hurts. Was there no warning? No, was the heck. But, I mean, I would have thought that Bet would have said something. Mm -hmm. I saw her face when you walked out of the Rovers this lunchtime. I must say, she looked very upset. Yeah, well, that wouldn't be her idea. That'd be Alex, but still. I would have thought she'd have said something. Please. Evening. Ah, how do? How do do? Little bird tells me you're in the wholesale confectionery trade. Yes, I was. Forty years, near on. God, love me. Forty years there. Eh? Where does it go? Oh, when I say a little bird, I don't mean Mrs. Fairclough, of course. No, uh, we have a, a mutual acquaintance, I believe. Uh, Vernon Hargreaves. Hargreaves? Oh, well, he knows you. Yes. Chamber of Trade? Vernon Hargreaves? Oh, him. Yeah, a bit of an old woman. Old woman? Vernon? No, no, he's a mine of information. A dedicated member of the Chamber of Commerce. This town's never seen the like. And, of course, Past worship master, but no tales out of class, eh? I believe you were on the uh, old square yourself, Tony. Oh, sorry about that, Ted. I was oh. on the phone. That's all right. <laughs> evening, Rita. Are we to enjoy your presence at the Rovers this evening? No. Come in, Ted. Night, Red. If I stand here drinking till closing time while you're here working, you know what's going to happen, don't you? Yeah, you'll fall over. That's right. So it's plan B. Which is what? Well, instead of standing here drinking till closing time, I'll have a few, then I'll buzz off home. About ten minutes before closing time, I'll nip to the chippy, get you supper, so it's nice and hot for you when you get home. Oh, great. What about supper? <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. Oh, Miss Dizzy, there, she hasn't got a brain in her head. It said they should have fired not Betty Turpin. Are you telling me how to run my business now? I'm telling you, you don't know when you've got quality like them that wouldn't have me as a crossing warden any longer. And me in the prime of life. Quite right, Percy. There's many a good tune played on an old fiddle, isn't there? Ah, Reg, there you are. Good to see you. What are you having? Well, I will take the Scotch and Canada with you, Norman. Coming up. Well, we're saying goodbye to Miss Morgan. Yeah. And I honestly think she'll assure her father that the Weatherfield branch has a remarkable management. Yes. 
Well, Lord Morgan has seen that for himself, Norman. In fact, I can tell you in confidence, of course, that he had some pretty, uh, pretty nice things to say to myself. Well, I'm not surprised to hear that, Reg. Yes, I think my position in the better by scheme of things has never been uh, stronger, Norman. In fact, if somebody did try to undermine me, whether it was Brendan Scott or someone closer to home, he might find himself uh, whistling in the wind. <laughs> Always remember that, Norman, will you? Mm -hmm. Do you know, Rosie's been chatting away to herself all day today. She's gonna have a lot to say for herself, that one, when she grows up. And don't say like a mother. Mm. You're quiet. Something the matter? Just did something really stupid today when Baldwin come round to have a look at the books. There's nothing wrong with them, is there? The books? They're fine. I just had a go at him about not having to jack the bills up anymore because he's got back what he slipped tally well, but... I may as well have been talking to myself. It just got me so wound up. You're not a row with him, have you? No. Just made out a stupid invoice dinner for that van I've been servicing, you know, like mink line brakes, gold plated spark plugs. 500 pound a charge. You're not going to give it in, though. Already have done. So, come tomorrow, I'll probably be in trouble. There we go. Ah, ta. I mean, Reg Holdsworth may think he's your rival, but he's not. I mean, come on, give me credit for some sense. <laughs> anyway, you haven't got any rivals. Well, I'm pleased to hear that. Oh, you fancy going out? No, not really. I'm quite happy here. I thought I'd make us a bit of supper later. Fine. You seem a bit edgy. Me? No. Well, I suppose I am a bit. You know why. You're a remarkable man, do you know that? How do you make that out? I'm the same as anybody else. You're not, you know. In what, three weeks? You've turned my life upside down. Are you sure you know what you're doing? If you mean about asking you to marry me, oh, yes. I'm sure, all right. Well... But if you want more time, Rita... No, I don't. Yes, thank you. Are you saying... I'm saying yes. If you want me, I'll marry you and be very happy too. Rita! Right, well, i better get off, Gail. All right? Hang on a minute. After three, everybody. One, One two, three. Good, Good night, Martin! Martin. <laughs> <laughs> and he's thinking... Oh, only mean it. Yeah, I know. Right, well, I've got my pen, I've got my spare pen in case my first one comes out. Packet of mints. I'll see you later. See you, darling. Sarah. So Good luck! Cheers. And we've all got to keep our fingers crossed all day, all right? What happens if he fails? And he doesn't get to be a nurse, but... He's not going to fail. He's a very clever fella, is Martin. He couldn't do my homework. He's a bit out of practice. Get on with your breakfast. Now, I have something to tell you. Oh? I'm getting married. You're not. Ted proposed. <laughs> and I thought about it, and what I thought was, yes. Oh, <laughs> Rita! Oh, that's wonderful! Oh. What? Oh, it's, it's nothing. We were Bet. just talking. I said yes. You did. Well, that's great. She's right. It's <laughs> wonderful, is that? What do you know about this? I don't miss much, Maeve. Are we still talking Florida? We are. Florida? Yes, we're going to live there. Oh, I didn't tell you that, did I? Oh, oh. never mind telling her. You'll be taking Maeve with you, won't you? Oh, yes, if she wants to come. You're not joking. You really are going to live in Florida. That's the deal. Marry him and we're going to live in Florida. And you've always wanted to go to Disneyland, haven't you? Well, that's what's wrong with it. <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe this. Well, I can, and I am delighted. Absolutely delighted. Oh, thanks, Beth. Well, now I've heard what I came into here. I don't need to spend any money. I'll see you <laughs> later, Mum. Right. <laughs> well... Thought you might be interested. Oh. <laughs> Morning. Morning, love. I'm still leading, then I. I am. I'll let you into a secret, though. I'd rather I were going to it Rovers. Tell you what, we'll do a swap. Nobody will notice. <laughs> <laughs> I think they might. Anyway, listen. Give my regards to Betty, won't you? I'll have a job on love. She picked up a car, didn't she? No. Yeah, well, there's no food. 
No better. Simple as that, Louis. But why is there no food? Now, come on. You don't need me to tell you that. So, you having a quiet day then, Kev, eh? Well, I'm hoping to. So, uh, do us a favour, eh, Jim? If you see Baldwin coming, give us a shout, eh? Hey, come on. You're not afraid of that wee man. Well, I'm not afraid of him, no. He just gets Jim. on my nerves and... Hello. I've just been talking to Jack Duckworth hearing about this Rover's business. Well, what Rover's business is that, love? Oh, don't come it. You know full well. All that stuff I told you about food regulations, you've been in there laying law down. I'll uh, catch you later, OK? See you later, Kev. Telling them you were going to town hall, going to report them. Love, I was pulling her leg. I have no intention of going anywhere near the town hall. Oh, you've not? No, I told you I was joking. It was a joke. A joke? Oh, well, I'm sure Betty's not laughing. Betty? Yeah, you know, Betty. She used to work there. Worked there for years. Till some joker went and got her sacked. Oh, no. I'm, I mean, what is this place, eh? What is it? What do you mean, what is it? Well, I mean, is it a cafe? Is it a burger bar? Is it a pizzeria? No. No, no, it's a pub. It's an English public house. So what do I want food for anyway? We're not here to sell food. We're here to sell beers, wines and spirits. To folk who come in to eat half the time. Yes, well, if they're not eating, they'll be drinking that much more. Alec, folk aren't going to stop eating just because we've stopped selling food. They're going to eat somewhere else. Well, there'll be just as many who welcome the fact we've gone back to basics. Beers, wines and spirits. What shall we do? Pull the carpets up and put sawdust down? Uh, you're just upset because I've had to lay Betty off. That's what's behind all this. What's behind all this is brass. Brass that you're not willing to spend to bring this place up to standard. So, ready to admit the thirsty hordes, are we? <laughs> if there's any of them want to come in. Uh, yes, all right. Well, I know we're not serving food just now. No more hot pot. All right, then more things in life to hot pot. Personally, I'm getting very tired of hot pot myself. A man who's tired of hot pot is tired of life. But if they do ask for food, you know, well, we've got crisps, we've got nuts, we've got... Uh, pork scratchings. Pork scratchings, yes. It's making my mouth water talking about this. And there's that little fella with uh, a squint that comes around selling shrimps on a Friday night. Walter. What mm -hmm. oh, was that his name? Yes, well, I think you've got the general idea. We don't want to be negative about this. We must look at it as a positive step. It's not that we've stopped selling food, it's just that we've placed the emphasis elsewhere. You're going to spill, like we not, Kerr. What are you doing? Hold it roughly. Oh. <laughs> She's got her fingers crossed. It's for Martin. I told her she had to keep them crossed all day. <laughs> is that what it is? I wonder what she's been doing. Yeah, but you don't have to keep them crossed while you're drinking, darling. <laughs> no, hygiene's important. Of course it is. You know that as well as anybody. Yeah, well, I do have a bath every morning, Mr. Sutton. No, I'm talking about this business. Selling food to the general public. Oh, yeah, right. Mm. You stopped her doing it at the Rovers, you know, put Mrs Turpin out of a job. Yeah, well, you did tell me that, Mr Sunderland, yeah. It's a disgrace. It's just bureaucracy for the sake of it. That's all that yeah, is. I mean, what can you do about it? Well, we can just let our feelings be known. That's what we can do. Yeah, well, I'm sure you'll do that, Mr Sunderland. <laughs> but it's very clever, though. I mean, I've always thought he is. Who's this? Martin. Well, I'm not denying he's clever. There's a difference between being clever and passing exams, isn't there? Yeah. And... He's asked her to marry him, and she said yes. And that's not all, Derry. They're going to go and live in Florida. Florida? Florida. Goodness me. Mm, she seems absolutely certain, doesn't have any doubts at all. Well, I should think not, going all that way. <laughs> Tell you one thing, though. She won't be able to run the cabin from there, will she? I know. Has she, uh, has she said anything, you know, about what she intends doing with no, it? No, not yet. I mean, all she can talk about is getting married and the new life and everything. And, well, I didn't like to ask her outright. In case she thinks I'm only pleased, because it gives us a chance to get in the cabin. Of course, yes. We don't want to appear selfish. Oh, no. And we are pleased for her. Oh, yes. Rita deserves the chance of some happiness, doesn't she? To be cared for and cherished. She does. I wonder what she'll be wanting for it. So, who are you going to sack next, then? What are you talking about? Who says I'm going to sack anybody? Well, I mean, look at it. We're down to, what, 50% of what we might normally expect? Oh, it'll be cool. It'll go down. Half the folk in here have been asking for food and moaning when we've said we've not got none. You can't help that. Yes, you can. You're the one person that can help it. You can help it by spending the money so we can pass an inspection and get food back on again. Better. I will uh, paint oh, no. Oh, oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no, we're not serving this gentleman. Alec, please. No, I'm sorry. Out. I don't want you on these premises. If you'll just let me explain. Jack! Yes? Would you show this individual the door, please? Alec, I'm perfectly capable of finding the door myself. Can I just say something first? No, you cannot. I've heard enough from you to last me a lifetime. Alec, it's for your own good. Jack! What? Have you been to the health inspector? 
No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I haven't been to the health inspector. I have no intention of going to the health inspector. Out. You have been told out. Go away. Go away. So, so, right. so what was all that performance the other day, then? Well, uh, it was a joke. I mean, I'm sorry it got better done. A joke? Yeah, well, it wasn't a very good one. You, you try and put me out of business and you call it a joke? Look, I didn't know you were going to take it as seriously. I, I could sue you, you know that, oh, don't now, you? Now, Alec. Yeah, I mean, I could. I could sue him, in fact, if I could mind to. The money has cost me. Oh, well, go on ahead. Sue me. Then we will be talking health inspectors. Look, nobody's suing anybody. Jim, are you telling us the truth? Yes! You've not made any complaints? No, I've no intention of making any complaints. A joke is his. All right, all right. <laughs> Let's have a quiet word. To do a further, my wife. Yes. No. Yes. Right. Let's calm down, shall Hi, we? Please calm God. down, calm down. I tell you, if I were a younger man, Yes, I'd... well, you're not, so let's look on the bright side, shall we? Now, look, if nobody's complained, we won't be being inspected, will we? You know what that means, don't you? We can go back to serving food again. Oh, simple as that. Why not? We've no to worry about now, have we? Now, let me get this clear. You want to make a complaint? No, I do not. There's been enough complaints already. Well, I'm sorry. I don't really follow. I hope I'm talking to the right man. You are environmental health, aren't you? Well, yes. Right, then. You've had a complaint about the food at the Rover's Return in Coronation Street. Now, I'm here representing the customers who want to protest. Do you know a lady's lost her job because of this office? We don't have any record about this. You must have Rover's Return, Coronation Street. If you say so. I do. In a better run establishment, you'd have a job to find. You want to go down there and see for yourself, instead of hiding away in this place. Well, yes. I think we might just do that. You know, I just wonder if that firm's so used to paying without checking the invoices that they might just go and pay the last one. What, £500 for a service? Yeah, but if they're not even bothering to look what it's for... Well, you're going to have to send some of that money back, Kev. Oh, yeah. Then they wonder what's going on, eh? Start checking all the others. Well, I don't know why you did it in the first place, honestly. I don't. I've never known you do anything so stupid. Me neither. Why don't you just phone Mr Baldwin and tell him? Yeah, sure. Well, at least you get it sorted out and you won't have it hanging over your head like this, will you? No, I think I'll just hang on. Wait and see what happens. Well, the longer you leave it, the worse it's going to be, and then they really are going to think you were trying to cheat them, aren't they? I've never known you do anything so stupid. You're enjoying that, you, aren't you? Yeah. So is food back on tomorrow, what? Well, if it's not, we might as well not bother opening. What about Betty? Leave that to me. See ya. Weren't it nice and quiet? I wish it were always like that. Do you really, love? Just tell Alec that, will you? Alec! Well? Raquel's got something to say. No, I would just say how nice and quiet it's been. It makes life so much easier. Yes, well, I'm glad you found it to your liking. Oh, I have. It can be like that every day, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Ta-ra. Bye-bye, love. So, do we keep Raquel happy and have an empty pub, or do we start serving food again? Hey, I don't know. I mean, all right, I, I'm the mad Irishman hasn't been to the authorities. He hasn't, you heard him. We're still in breach of the regulations, though, aren't we? No more than we have been for years, Alec. Face it, love, we either do food or we go under. All right, you've convinced me. Well, you haven't convinced me. It wasn't the flaming till that's convinced me. All right, as from tomorrow, hot pot pies, sandwiches, all back on. See to it. Hang on, hang on. Business back to usual, is it? Yes. What about Betty? Oh, come on, we can manage. No. Oh, Bet, come on. Anybody can make a hot pot. It's hardly a hot cuisine, is it? Well, whatever it is, that's why we employed Betty. And if we needed her before, we're going to need her again. And how's that going to make me look? I mean, I sack her one day, I take her back the next. I look like a man who doesn't know his own mind. You look like a man who can respond to a changing situation. Anyway, most folk won't have even noticed she's been gone. There's just no getting rid of her, is there? She should be written to the deeds of this place. Yeah, all right, go on. Let's have old Mother Robert back. That's if the Savoy haven't snapped her up first. I'll go around and see her this afternoon. So, how do you think you went on? Yeah, well, I found the right room at the right time. Good start. Yeah, answered all the questions. Oh, that's something. Yeah, well, not if I got them all wrong, it's not, is it? Yeah, but how do you feel you went on? Oh, I don't know. But one thing I did, though, is I stuck ten quid to the top of the answer paper, so that might just have swung it, eh? Martin, you didn't, did you? Yeah, I would have done if I could have avoided it, didn't I? But if you look 
at it this way. I mean, this exam, it's to find out whether you're suited to a nursing course or not, whether you could cope with all the studying. Yes, correct. Yeah, so it's not a matter of whether you pass or fail, is it? It's a matter of whether you're suited or not. Yeah. Oh, come on, Gail. No, well, that makes sense to me. Look, if I'm not suitable, then I've failed. You can call it what you like, you can dress it up, you can turn it upside down. But as far as I'm concerned, I'd have failed. So, anyway, there's no reason why we can't get back to the way we were. Mm. Which means, well, with both of us, me and Alec, we'd like you back in there tomorrow. I see. This lunchtime. I'm not kidding, Betty. There were hardly enough in there to make it worthwhile as opening. Well, Raquel was working, was she? Yeah. As near to it as she ever gets. <laughs> Never mind about her. You see, I just thought that she was taking on their temporary. Well, yeah. Whereas me, I've been there over 22 years. God, has it been that long? I mean, and then what happens? You start with these, these staff cuts, she stops here. And I'm out. I'm sorry, Betty. I am honest. You see, I think Alec only associated you with food. And then, when he thought we wouldn't be doing food any longer, well... <laughs> 22 years. I get five minutes' notice and I'm out on the street. Look, Betty, I know Alec's sorry about this. He asked me to say that to you. He asked me to tell you how badly he feels about it. Oh, yeah. Well, he can't feel as bad as I do. It's been a big upset for me as all this. I'm sure, Betty. You know, and it started me wondering. I mean, if that's how I was regarded, I might be better off not coming back at all, mightn't I? Betty, love. Look, I know it was none of your doing, lovey. And I don't want us falling out. We shan't, kid. But I do feel as if I've been very, very shabbily treated. And I mean, and now you're here saying you want me back. We do, love. Yeah, well, that's what I think about it. I mean, I'm sorry, love, if I'm going to leave you short-handed. But pff, Alec thinks so highly of Raquel. It'll give her a chance to show her talents off a bit, won't it? Oh, you still work here, then? Yeah. I'd have thought the men in the white coats would have dragged you off to the funny farm. No. No? Oh, you do surprise me. What is all this thing, Kevin, eh? 500 pounds? 500 pounds? Is that what we're charging for a service now, is it, eh? No. No? Then why is it I've had Jack Elliwell on the phone all morning telling me that's exactly what you're charging for the last job you did? Well, come on, I want to know. Look. It's your own fault you just wouldn't listen, would you? Oh, wouldn't I? No. Well, I'm listening now, so you tell me. Look, you wanted me to add bits onto the bill. You knew I didn't like it. I said, I'm not going to do it anymore. But you said I had to carry on. Oh, yeah, and you carried on. Yeah, I You did. carried on right over the top, so Jack realised what we were doing. Now, what do you think his reaction's going to be to that, eh? What do you think he's going to do? Call in the police, put me in the dock? No. Is that what you want to see, eh? Me in trouble? Do you want to see this business go to ruin? No! Well, you came close. Very close indeed. You just think yourself lucky I managed to persuade Jack it was a mistake, a mistake that should never have happened, and it won't happen again. Will it, Kevin, eh? I'm not going to fiddle any more invoices, no. What is wrong with you? I gave you a job and I thought you needed one, and what do I get in exchange, eh? Smart alley ideas and dodgy invoices. Yeah. Well, you're the one who wanted them, not me. Yes, I did, didn't I? And I'll tell you another thing, this is my business. I decide how it's going to be run. Now, if you want to stay, you stay, but under my terms. And if you don't want to stay, that is fine. It's your decision. You think about it. Mavis, we need to know soon. Oh, I know, Derek, but she still hasn't said. that. I don't like to ask her. For one thing, there's that job I went for. Suppose I'm offered that. Well, we'll just have to tell her our situation and ask her what she has in mind. And what she'll be wanting, cos we'll have to borrow the money. It's going to be quite a commitment. Oh, well, Derek, do we really want it? I mean, at our age, do we really want that business? Well, we said we did when she wasn't selling. We'd be rather foolish if we say no, now that she is. Ah, we think she is. She still hasn't said. No. Well, maybe she will tonight. Mm. Ah. Got you. So what are you going to do? I'm going to go to work, aren't I? 
No more silly invoices. No, nope. from now on everything's gonna be straight as a die. Good. I mean, when Baldwin hears that, that's when he'll sack me. Oh, you don't know. That just might be talk. Now, I'll tell you, one thing blokes like him can't stand, it's having employees who stand up to him. Well, Kevin, you're only doing the right thing. And I'll tell you one thing I can't stand. It's having people telling me everyone's on the fiddle, everyone's dishonest, so why should it matter? Cos I look at her and you think, it does matter. It's got to matter. I'll tell you something, shall I? I hope I've failed. Oh, I do, yeah. You do? Yeah. Well, think about it, eh? What I do now is I enjoy, don't I? Well, don't I? Have you ever heard me say I don't enjoy it? No. No, because I get about. Always got time for the chat with the lads. Overtime when I want it, and when I clock off, well, me time's me own. Sounds a doddle. Yeah, well, it is a doddle. Compared with student nursing, isn't it? Well, don't they enjoy it, then? Well, you've only got to look at them, haven't you, eh? Pale faces, bags under their eyes. <laughs> Worrying about essays, exams, marks. <laughs> half of them end up in psychiatric wards. Only half. All right, it might be more. <sighs> what I'm saying is... <sighs> well, I'm not cut out for it, am I? Me, eh? Hey? Happy go, lucky. Easy come, easy go. With a smile and a song? Yeah. <sighs> I'm not one of them pasty-faced... Studying all night sort of individuals, aren't I? Oh, well. Good job you did a lousy paper, Could then. Be Liz, yeah. yeah, let's hope you get the lowest marks anybody's ever got. Oh. Oh, Gail. You know. You know I'd be really chuffed if I could get the lowest marks ever. <laughs> In fact, what I really want is a minus mark. One of them's possible. And you mean that, do you? Yes, every word. Yeah, well, you might be a terrific porter, and you might one day be a terrific nurse, but I'll tell you something. What? You're a lousy liar. Mrs Sullivan. Rita Sullivan, though. I mean, it's going to take some getting used to, that. Well, there are worse names than Sullivan. Oh, I'm not complaining. Well, look at me. I've been Nugent, Bishop, Swain, and now Bishop again. <laughs> well, I didn't like Wilton at first. Oh. I, I thought it sounded dozy. Oh, it did not sound dozy. Oh, that was just at first. And have you set a date for the wedding? No, but we will do very soon. Are you going to be a summer bride? Oh, don't you think I'm more autumn? The sooner the better, I think. Oh, well, we don't want a long engagement. No. Can be very trying for the man, you know, a long oh, engagement. <laughs> and will he be off to Florida straight away after you're married? As straight away as we can. I certainly don't want to spend another winter in this climate. Oh, Florida, though. I know. <laughs> Me born in Fallowfield. <laughs> be quite a change, won't it? No more getting up at six to do the newspapers. Well, no. <laughs> It'll be a completely new life. And there aren't many people get the chance of that. I know. No more weighing out quarter pounds of sarsaparilla drops. Yeah, careful what you're saying about sarsaparilla drops. They were one of our bestsellers. <laughs> really? No more birthday cards, Christmas cards. Uh, do you know, I think what you're trying to get at is am I selling the cabin or not? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, sure no. sure it wasn't. Never gave it a moment's thought. Well, all I can say is there's a lot of things to sort out and I haven't really started yet, but when I do, I promise you two will be the first to know. All right. Open that, will you, Jack? I'll just go and find another couple of glasses. Right, oh. <laughs> Have I missed something? What's all these celebrations in here, Doggy? Oh, it's uh, Reet. She's getting married. No. Hi, oh, hi. Oh. What, to that spoiled sweet salesman? Oh, is that what he is? Maybe she's got a sweet tooth, eh? Oh, <laughs> really? Well, I do wish her the best, of course, to do. It makes you wonder about the woman's judgment, though. Why? Because she gave you the push. Give me the push? What are you talking about? Nobody gave me the push. I was just a friend and neighbour. Because that's as far as you'd let you get. I don't know what you're insinuating. I should warn you to be careful. You know there's such thing as a slander in this country, Oi, you know? oi. Don't be taking that on me, pal. Go and have a word with the boyfriend. Have a go at him. Them as well, Jack. Right, love. Hey, what, what, what's all this? Oh, never mind that. Have you thought any more about Betty yet? Thought about her? I try and avoid thinking about her. Has anybody paid for that bottle? You see, it's a pride that's been her, Alec, like the way she was pushed out ahead of Raquel. Well, if she's that proud, perhaps she doesn't need a job here. But we need her. And I think deep down, she would like to come back. I think what would swing it would be if you went round there and had a word with her. Me? Yes, and I'd do it first thing tomorrow if I was you. Either that or get your pinny on and start peeling spuds. How was Phyllis this morning? Did you see her? Yeah, but we hardly spoke. I think she's still sulking. Yes, well, she spoke to me and she's still not very happy. Look, try and be nice to her, eh? Me be nice to her? What about her being nice to me? Yes, yeah. Well, I mean, both of you. Hey, listen, I've had an idea. What, about Phyllis? No, about us having a dinner party. You know, inviting folk round. What do we want to do that for? Because that's what people do. But, I mean, couples. 
I thought we might invite Angie and Curly. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's all right. But you don't mind? No, not a bit, because they won't come. Well, why shouldn't they? Well, last time I had anything to do with Angie, she poured a pint of bitter over me head. Last time you had anything to do with Curly, you left him to move in with me. Invite him round for a meal, I think we're trying to poison him. Oh, this is very good of you, Bet. Oh. I know, I surprise myself sometimes. <laughs> I just hope nobody resents me taking Rita away from all these great friends she has. Oh, we're trying not to, <laughs> just so long as you make her happy. Oh, I'll do that all right. So, listen, a toast to these two. We're delighted about your engagement, and we wish you all the best for the future. Ted and Rita. Yeah. Ted. Ted and Rita. Rita. Oh. <laughs> Executive Coordinator, Northern Region. Oh, you've got it! 16,000 a year, plus car allowance. Oh. All I have to do is accept. Derek! I've got oh. it, I've got it! That's wonderful! <laughs> oh, Derek, well, what are we going to do about the cabin? But we have an alternative now, don't we? I know, but all our plans... All our plans are... remain exactly the same, Mavis. If Rita is selling the cabin, mm. and we can agree acceptable terms, then the cabin it is. But if not... I still have the excellent option of sales executive coordinator. <laughs> but one thing's certain, though. We must know what Rita plans to do so I can decide whether to accept or decline. <laughs> what time do you call this in? Time to open up, why? I wouldn't have thought you'd have bothered. A man of your high principles. No options, have I, eh? Can't feed your family on principles. Ha-ha! <laughs> now you're learning. Now you know me. What can I do for you? I didn't come to check up on you, Kevin. I, uh, came to have the handbrake fixed. Oh. Well, uh, just leave the keys in it then, eh? Pick it up lunchtime, all right? Whatever you say, you're the boss. Well, if that's not convenient, I'll pick it up later. Wouldn't like to stop you earning some money. <laughs> I don't earn money round here, Mike. I just take all the risks. Lunchtime it isn't. Hey, I'd almost given you up for lost. I'm sorry I'm late, Rita, but things haven't been quite normal on our domestic scene this morning. Well, it can't be bad news, bit looks here. Derek's been offered that job. Oh, Mavis, that's great. <gasps> Sales executive coordinator, Northern Region, plus a car allowance. I mean, not that he'll do much travelling, of course. He'll be coordinating the movements of others. Oh, so I take it your interest in shops gone now, then? Oh, no, Rita, no, this has been our dream. Oh. Just Derek and I together. It's just that, well... We do need some sort of decision from you now so that he can make a decision about the job offer. I see. I realise I'm pushing you. Uh, no, no, you're right, love. I can't keep putting it off. Look, why don't you and Derek meet me in the Rovers after tea and we'll talk about it over a drink. Kev, thought you could use one of these. It was something a bit stronger, if you want to know the truth, Jim. Is he still giving you a hard time? You know, I'd never have took the job if I'd known it was going to be like this. Well, I suppose guys like him, when they invest their money, they wanted to work for him. Me? Hey, I don't mind work. I'm used to work. Well, at least you have a job. Yeah. So try and remember what it was like without one. Oh, I do. At the moment, I think about nothing else. Have you ever fiddled anyone, Jim? Phew. 
It's a hell of a question. What, you mean Liz or someone like that? No. I mean the garage, you know, the bikes. Oh, I see what you mean. Like cut corners in a job or jack the bills up, something like that. That sort of thing. Well, I can't say I haven't been tempted. Yeah, but have you done it? Not exactly. Mind you, I've persuaded people to part company with more money than they needed to. How's it mean? Get them to buy some new forks, new shocker, and they need to bother And did you ever regret it? It's not on, really, is it? No. Mind you, I'd never forgive myself if someone came to grief because I'd cut corners in a job. Yeah. Cheers, Jim. Thanks for the brew. It's my pleasure. Oh, and, uh, if you heard of anything, go and give us a shout, eh? Yeah, it's unlikely I will. Yeah, but if you do. Sure. See you now. Do you think you can turn that thing off? I'd like my breakfast in peace, if you don't mind. I'm only here for two hours, you know. So do something else till I've had my breakfast. I've got an established routine. So break it, Phyllis. I won't do it for to get out of bed at proper time. What? No. Phyllis, if you've out to say, say it to me face. I'll go and do it bathroom. And then complain about me to Des when he gets back. I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. He's told me you've been having a quiet word. That's supposed to be a confidential matter between me and my employer. Yeah. Well, I'm your employer as well now. So, if you've any more complaints in future, just bring them to me. All right. Hello, Al. Rita. If you're after Mavis, she just popped out. No, no, no. No, I just came over to, uh, well, to wish you congratulations. Oh, thanks, Al. And to say I hope you'll be very happy. Oh, that's nice of you. So do I. We go back a long way, don't we? Aye, we do. Mm. And there was a time when things might have been different for a pair of us. Uh, uh, morning, morning Angie. Morning. Anyway, it's time you had a bit of luck in that direction. Oh, you're right there. Just as long as you're quite sure you know what you're doing. Well, none of us can be sure about that, Elf. But I am hoping. Yeah, well, I mean, a nice business, you know. Lovely flat. It's a lot to give up. I know. But I'm hoping what's going to replace it will have a lot more to offer. Aye. Right. What do you want me going as far afield as Florida if you weren't sure, would you? No, I wouldn't. And uh, I've thought about this, you know, Alan. Oh, yeah, I know you have. It's, it's just like I say, you know, we, we go back a long way. Yeah. Well, I'm grateful for your concern, Alf. Anyway, well, uh, I'll see you. Yeah. I suppose you're wondering where all this leaves you and Curly. I did hear you were getting married. But you didn't know I was going to Florida? No. Well, you do now. I'm sorry, Rita. I couldn't help overhearing. Oh, that's all right, love. It's not a secret. It's just that uh, I haven't exactly decided what's what yet, but rest assured, when I do, I'll let you and Curly know exactly where you stand. Right. Yeah, I wanted a chat. I'm just on my way to catch a bus for Polly. Later, maybe. Hey, no, wait a minute. Hang on. It won't take a minute. Um, Des and me wondered whether you and Curly would like to come round to dinner tomorrow night. Eh? Well, you know, to show there's no ill feeling her out. What do you think? I'll ask Curly. Great. <laughs> Be nice for four of us to get together again. Yeah, well, like I said, I'll ask Curly. And I'll let you know. Great. Yes, I'm going. Good. Though I don't exactly see the need. It's not as if she holds a patent on hot pots. She holds a patent round here as far as I'm concerned. Well, I'm well aware of that. And she's seen this place all right for over 20 odd years. I'm going. I'm going. And be gentle with her. Her pride's out. I'll do my best. Yes, well, I'd do more than my best if I was you. When I see you come back, I won't see her on your arm. She's not said she'll come yet. She will, if you apologise and ask her nicely. Well, like I say, I'll do my best. Though why I should jump through hoops for some ex barmaid who I could replace at any time. And you, get yourself down them cellar steps, smartish. I want all them hot pot dishes and that kitchen stuff back upstairs and installed when I get back. Oh, but boss, I've just got them all down there nicely and out of the way. Well, you can just get them all back up here, otherwise you'll be the one out of the way. And what time do you call this lady? Not quarter to yet. Half past ten I pay you from, not quarter to eleven. 
And Jack, don't just stand there. I want all that stuff up here and installed when I bring Betty back. What, Betty's coming back? She is. And as from this dinner time, it's business as usual. So you'd better look to your laurels, young lady. And I'd better hope I've not lost my powers of persuasion. <laughs> Well, where's he gone? Testing a new motor. He asked me to look out for you. Oh, thanks. Bit worried you packed it in then, were you, eh? Why should I be? Well, it doesn't take a genius to work out he's not very happy. Mind you, plenty more where he came from, eh? You can say that again. Ten a penny mechanics. You tell him that. I don't need to, he already knows. Mind you, a good manager, now they're hard to find. You think so? Oh, aye. Someone you can trust. Somebody who's going to work for you and not rip you off or your customers. What's he been saying? Nothing. Now, come on, if he's been shooting his mouth off, I've got a right to know. Don't worry, he hasn't said anything. He wanted to, but he kept his mouth shut. He's a loyal wee fellow, you know. You want to look after him. He's a good mechanic. He's more than that, Mike. He's an honest man. And honest men are hard to come by. I think you'd do well to remember that. What is it now, Betty? 22 years, eh? Mm, 23 before long. You know, if you aren't to sack me. Sacked? Yes, well, that's a bit of a hard word, Betty, isn't it? Accurate, though, isn't it? Well, well, yes, I, I suppose it is. But, you see, that's why, I, that, that's why I'm here, Betty. That's why I'm uh, paying you this little visit. Now, you know how things are at the moment, <laughs> and you know me. Yeah, I know you are right, Alec. <laughs> yes, well, in times of stress, I, uh, I do have a tendency to panic. And when I do... It has been known for me to make the wrong decision. Not, not often, you understand, but uh, it has been known. Uh, see, what I'm trying to say, Betty, and I know I'm not saying it very well, but what I'm trying to say is I think I may have made the wrong decision with you. Been too harsh too soon. And I'm sorry. It's a bit too late for that now, isn't it? It's never too late, Betty. Never too late to admit you're wrong. Now, what I'm trying to say is that we, I mean, I, I want you back. Now, what do you say? I'll tell you what I say, Alec. It isn't the first time that this has happened. You've said some very hard things to me, things you shouldn't have said. You just presumed that I could manage without the money that you pay me. You just presumed that my Cyril's pension would see me all right. Well, I'll tell you something, Alec. Each year that goes by, that pension is worth less. And I can do with the money that I earn at the Rovers. Yeah, yeah I can see that, Betty, and I couldn't agree with you more. Well, you've hurt me, Alec, you have. I mean, I've been a very loyal employee to you and a good friend to bet over all these years. And I deserve better. And, and you shall have better, Betty. I promise. I've got a brand new kitchen planned. Luxury that you're long overdue would make life a lot easier. Somewhere where you can go on producing them wonderful hot pots that you're so famous for. So what do you say, Betty? Will you come back to me? Please. Uh, ice cream, hamburgers, hot dogs. Roll up, roll up. I hope not, for their sakes. Listen, when you see what's in it, you wish it was hot dogs. That bad? Yeah, help yourself. Mm, I see what you mean. Yeah. So, how did you do yesterday? Uh, I don't know yet, do I? Managed to finish? Most of it, yeah. So now you're just waiting to be summoned and told the worst. Uh -huh. Do you get a kick out of watching me fall apart before your very eyes? Bit of the sadist in every nurse, Martin. You'll learn that. Yes, if you ever get a chance. Right. Sister Walker? Yes? Hold on. Martin, it's for you. Hey, what's that cabbage? He's still alive. <laughs> Hello, Martin Platt? Yeah? OK, sir. Hmm. Will I go to admin? They've got my results. 
There you are, Percy, love. Just one left. <laughs> oh, very nice it looks too, Mrs. Yeah. Turpin. Thank heaven somebody's seen sense and got this place on its feet again. <laughs> You're right, Betty, love. Oh, yeah. I'm just glad you could see your way to coming back to us. Well, like I told that slippery husband of yours, I don't get a lot of fun, you know, staring through my window. I'm just sorry it had to happen at all. Like I told him, any more. That's it. I'm too old to be messed about. Don't you worry, Cock. Any more moves like that, I'll have it on a skewer. I always thought we should do more of the sweet line. <laughs> This is a private joke. Or <laughs> can anybody be privy to it? <laughs> we were just discussing exotic dishes. Ah, oh, well, of course, when the kitchen's completed, we would be able to go into all sorts of alternative recipes. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, if anybody's looking for something a bit different in the kebab line, I'd watch out if I was you. <laughs> Anyone need a bed pan? Of course, I did. Flying colours. Oh, well done, love. Uh, mm. What's that bed pan? Oh, it's, uh, it's something you cut beds in. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the shop to get some champagne, couldn't afford it, so I thought we could make do with some ice cream oh, soda! idiot. Right then, Mickey, shake your feathers. Go and get us some glasses, will you? And not the old jobs, eh? Get the posh ones. Hey, they were a wedding present from your Uncle Don. Oh, so they're there for special occasions. This oh. is a special occasion, is it not? Yeah, hey? that's all it's made of, anyway. <laughs> Marty's passed his test to be a nurse. Do you have to wear the hat, then? No, do I yet, clothed. <laughs> right, we've got all these here. So, what do I do, eh? A Nigel Mansell or what? Oh, no, yeah. you don't. Yes, God. take the I top up. You <laughs> do <laughs> Wow, it's gone everywhere. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Let's no. get some porn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's all right. So, <laughs> here's to me. Hmm? Uh, Nurse Platts? Yes. Sounds mm. daft. Hey, yeah, you. You won't be getting your legs set when it breaks next, huh? Nurse Platt. <laughs> be a while yet, though, won't it? Start training for a week on Monday. A couple of girls dropped out of the course, so they put me in to fill the quota. Cheers. You know, life's an extraordinary thing, Mavis. One minute you're washed up on some inhospitable barren shore. You struggle to survive against insurmountable odds, but hope slips imperceptibly away. Then, one day, you're sitting on the rocks looking out to sea, and there's a bottle bobbing on the foam, and in the bottle a note, and on the note a map showing you the way out and a route back to civilization. <laughs> but just as you're reading the note, a great big luxury liner appears on the horizon, and suddenly you're faced with a choice through the jungle and across the island, or hail the ship and sail away. Derek, you're not having second thoughts about the cabin, surely? Ah, <laughs> no, no, maybe. Oh. But we do have to go into this with our eyes open. Rita's not going to be giving it away. I know, but if we sell this house... Caution to the winds, eh? <laughs> Where will we live, then? Well, in Rita's flat, of course. If she's selling it. Of course she'll be selling it. <laughs> I wish you could see yourself now, maybe. <laughs> Why? Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Still the wild, abandoned thing I married. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. Wouldn't you, I would. Still the romantic, I'd say. Still the lady with the dream. Go on. It is your dream, isn't it, Mavis? Yes, it is, Derek. Our own little shop, just the two of us together all day in our own little world. And I could change that magazine rack around, you know, I never liked the way Rita's always put practical woodwork and extra horse and hound. <laughs> you shall be mistress in your own house, maybe. <laughs> you do think we'll be able to afford it, Derek, don't you? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. I want that shop, Derek. I want that shop. And if it's within the bounds of possibility, you shall have it. Lock, stock and barrel. Audrey thought we ought to give her a bit of a break, you know, a bit of celebration, like, so uh, while she's putting the kiddies to bed, I've nipped out for her quickly. Oh, no, so I am pleased. I think it'd be very good. I'm sure you're right, Emily. He's a very caring lad, is Martin. Mm. Mind you, what they'll do for money, I don't know. Oh, I'm sure they'll manage. They're only young. They've got the whole of their lives in front of them. That's true. Not like some of us in this street. You mean Rita? Yes, I do mean Rita. I just hope she's doing the right thing. I mean, they haven't known each other that long, have they? Oh, but Mr Sullivan's been selling sweets to the cabin for ages. Yeah, but why this sudden romance? Well, we're none of us getting any younger, Alf. Maybe she thought if she left it any longer, it'd be too late. Aye, yeah. 
It's all over before you know it. Really. You're very philosophical tonight, Al. Oh, like I say, I've known Rita for a good long while. I'll miss her. I think we all will, Alf. But I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. It's no fun ending up after 60 years with nobody to turn to, is it? No, all I'm saying is, if ever I come in for my chest rubbing, it'll be you I'm asking for. Oh, well, I don't have to be qualified for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason he's doing it is so he can chat up the glamorous ladiness. Yes, Curly. Yes, Curly. Yes, Curly. We're on. Are we? Yes. Gail? Uh, not just now, no. Well, you don't mind if I have a game, do you? Of course I don't. Right. See you later. Why are you trying to look pleased, but I'm not sure you are? I am. Of course I am. It's what he wants. Just scared he'll... wonder. Martin! Hey, you must be joking. It's as solid as a rock, is that lad? A lot of young girls in that place. That's yes, well, they have been all the time he's been working there. Come on, stop worrying. Now, if you were married to young Desmond there, well, there might be some cause for concern. <laughs> Hey up, Curly lad. Right. Oh, perfect right. timing, Des. Just been looking for a new partner. Oh, right. Want a drink? No, I'll get me right. No, 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 it's my shot. He's uh, just passed his exam. Uh, oh, hey, well done, mate. Cheers, Oh, mate. yeah, Thanks. and while I remember, thank you for the invite uh, for dinner tomorrow night at your house. Oh, she's uh, asked you, has she? Oh, yeah, and we'll both be coming. Oh, right. That's nice, isn't it? Wonderful. Isn't it great, eh? There's Derek. The opportunity of two jobs and ears mean nothing. Not even a prospect to one. <laughs> Except all those nobody else wants. I'll get it. And if there's anyone to do with money, tell them we could do with a bucket full. <laughs> Mr Baldwin. Hello, everyone. Fine. OK. And what do you want now? Nothing. I just thought we might have a little chat, see if we could settle our differences once and for all. Look, if you two are going to argue, go down the rovers and do it. I've got a little girl asleep upstairs. No one's going to argue. Don't I get a cup of tea? Look, Mike, just say what you've come to say and leave us in peace, OK? Looking for another job, eh? Oh, I might be. Well, it can stop. I decide you were right about those bills. Eh? That's what I come to tell you. If you feel so strongly about it, it's fine by me. You're running the place, we'll do it your way in future. By the book. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I just hope the profits don't drop as a result. Oh, they won't. I'll make sure of it. Right, well, that's it then. I'll leave you in peace. Uh, Mike? What's brought on the change of mind? Well, you may be a bit stupid when it comes to making money, but at least you're honest. I thought that was more important. See ya. Mm. See ya now. Oh, yeah? thank you, Derek. Hmm. Nervous. Well, you must be very thrilled with your offer, Derek. Oh, I am. It's nice to be off the scrap heap, so to speak. <laughs> Aye, now you feel. Does the old ego a power of good to know someone out there wants you? But are you sure you want to go ahead with the cabin? If you're selling, we're buying. <laughs> That's if we can come to a suitable agreement. Now, are you sure the pair of you want to work together day in, day out? Oh, yes, Rita. That's the main reason we want it. You'll have to be an early riser. I'm aware of that. <laughs> well, as you know, Ted wants to go to Florida. And there'd be no point in any of this if I didn't go with him. No, quite. So, I mean, I had toyed with the idea of just selling the shop on its own, or hanging on to the lot and just selling the business. And then I thought, no. No, a commitment's called for here, so I'm going to burn my boats. So it'll be the cabin, the flat and the business that goes on the market, plus the goodwill, etc. Now, are you still interested? Oh, yes. I'll win this. Oh, definitely, Derek. Yes. Right, well, in that case, I'll have the lot valued and get the figures to you as soon as I possibly can. And there's a mark of goodwill, because I know it's going to people who care. I'll knock off 5,000 off any valuation my man comes up with. Oh. Now, I can't say fairer than that, oh, can I? Rita, that's very generous. But is it acceptable? Absolutely, oh. and very thoughtful, Rita. Right, well, here's to my new life, and here's to your oh, new life. Yes. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Derek? Oh. Derek, are you all right? Oh, I couldn't sleep. But it's a hangover. No, it's not a hangover. All the same, I think it's probably the morning after. Well, well would you like me to get you anything? I mean, you and Ted did finish on doubles, you know. I said at the time, was it wise? Oh, well, drinking to success, eh? In the warm, cheery glow of burning boats, maybe. Oh, Derek. Four o'clock in the morning. I was suddenly wide awake and... Oh, I don't know. Well, I know. 
I know what we've done. Yes, thrown up a salary, a car and a portable pension, saddled myself with a small shop and a large debt. Oh, I'm going to bed. I wish I was sure. Well, you were sure last night. Oh, at four o'clock I wasn't. Fortunately, there's not a lot of business done at four o'clock in the morning, Derek. Now, I'm going to bed. Are you coming? No. I'll make another pot of tea. I'll, uh, I'll bring you a cup. Derek, you've decided. You have. You will ring them about that job and tell them first thing. Then we'll have no more of this. Oh, it's great. I bet he's dead chuffed with himself. Oh, yeah. Thinks he's dead brainy now. No talking to him. So he's definitely going in for nursing then? No stopping. Oh, I think it's great for Martin. Oh, Everybody seems to think so. Oh, yeah, you only have to see him with the children. He's wonderful. So when does he start? About four weeks. Oh, so there'll be a lot of swatting and everything then. You should think. I hope you don't mind me saying, Gail, but you don't seem too keen on this. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> Is what he wants. Well, he don't sound very enthusiastic about I it. I am, I am. Only. I am. Really. Come on. Okay, that's what I Portering's a job. Nursing's a career. Yeah. It's going to occupy all of his time. He'll have new interests. It's a big change for him. It'd still be the same old Martin. Mm. Same old Martin that's always like black stockings. Oh, don't say it. I'm being daft. Martin's not like that. I know what you're going to say. Oh, Gail. <sighs> I'm off, darling. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Mm. See? Even your kids find new interests and drift away. <laughs> Go on. Ta-ra. <laughs> pizza. What, you can cook pizza? No, but they're delivered, aren't they? You can't ask people round for a takeaway. Well, they'd be better off than eating anything I cooked. Well, I eat your stuff. Yeah, but you're you, aren't you? What do you mean, I'm me? Well, they don't necessarily think I'm all that wonderful like you do. Yeah, well, you seem very sure about that. Yeah. Well, you're very convincing sometimes, aren't you? Look, I'm trying to get to work here. Oh, couldn't you ring in and say, you know... What? Sorry, I can't manage it this morning. I'm being seduced by my lodger. I don't believe you. Yeah, that's what worries me. Look, I don't care what you give them to eat. I don't know why you invited them round in the first place. They only keep us up. <laughs> Half past five this morning, it was wet, miserable, 200 weight of newspapers flopped in the doorway, and I thought, am I going to feel a pang? Am I going to miss all this when I'm in Florida? You're not having second thoughts, though. Do you remember when nights were drawing in? I said to you, didn't I, that I couldn't stand the thoughts of another winter. Well, Florida sounds better to me with every day that passes. Because if you were, I wish you'd let us know, because Derek's going to say no to that job offer. I mean, you are sort of definite. You can't be sort of definite, Mavis. You either are or you're not. And you are. I've made my mind. Because <gasps> he's going to say no. I've this... told you. <sighs> well, then. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you didn't want to think again. I shan't be thinking again. Because I'm in a state of shock and it's not me getting married and going to live in Florida. A state of shock? I think I might be half delirious, but I'm still going. I never thought it would be Ted, the boiled sweet salesman. Well, nobody else has walked through that door with a better proposition lately. So, if you and Derek want it, it's all yours. <laughs> and I'll even throw in the alarm clock. Hey, look. Quiet, look. Tardo. There you go, sweet Tardo. So what's the state of play then, boss? Eh? How do you mean? Well, with regard to Betty. Oh, well, I've uh, given her a dose of the old unction, smoothed the ruffled feathers. Uh, Groveled a bit. No, I've not groveled. I groveled to no one, not pot or no up pot. So, uh, is she stuck in for good then? Well, as far as I'm aware. Shall I tell you something, Jack? You can tell me anything, boss. You think you could run this place as good as me, don't you? Better. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Of course you would, when I'm not there. Anyone who can blow froth off the tash thinks they can run this place better than me. Could all run the best little boozer in the world. It's true, that, isn't it? Hey, boss, I, I plead that amendment, mate. You know, you know the one that the Mafia lads use? I Send out. I that. tell you, Jack, you've no idea. The grief, the heartache. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't say that. No, no, you wouldn't begin to know it, Jack. Nobody knows. I have to go crawling 
to get Betty Turpin back. Probably the oldest barmaid in the business. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. It's not the oldest barmaid. She is. Same as you're the world's worst seller man. But there you are, you see, it's a cross I have to bear. And there's you sticking up for her, and she hasn't a good word to say for you. Yeah, well, it's only her way, isn't it? Goes on at you like a two-ton canary sometimes, doesn't she? Goes on at the customers the same way, you know, if they cross her. Yeah, well, I mean, she does give some people a hard time, I suppose. Yeah, it's a cross I have to bear, though, you see, as I say. Of course, her and the other canary, the missus, they're in the same lodge. Yeah. Mm. And then, of course, <laughs> there's the magic hot pot. <laughs> <laughs> but myself, I mean... I... <laughs> I've always thought it were just a pot. <laughs> 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 That's like the story of the little lad who said the Emperor had no clothes, isn't it? You know what happened to him? Huh? <laughs> Got shot. So you're looking for somewhere else to live, then? Well, I assume I'm going to be. She's selling up. I don't suppose you've got a spare room up there, have you? Well, I've got a sort of box room, but it's piled out with stuff anyway. <laughs> well, if you're here of anyway, you know, anything going. All right, well, I'll let you know. <laughs> Thanks. See ya. Tra. See you later. <laughs> hey, what do you think about all this business? You know, Florida. Think she's balmy. Mm. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. You wait till she goes sick. Oh, I Get sick over there. First thing they do is amputate your bank account. Yes, but I mean, then again, the climate's healthier, isn't it? Doctors don't go hungry. Of course, they get a lot of business out of folk getting shot. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of that's exaggerated, though, isn't it? I suppose if they do fall ill, first thing they do is jump on a plane back here <laughs> for National Health. Very handy if you've been gunned down by a crack dealer. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there must be nice bits of Florida, mustn't they? Because all them rich people go there, don't they? Yeah, rich people are all right anywhere, aren't they? Hey, listen, are you telling me if somebody walked through that door and offered you a trip to Florida, you'd say no to I mean, forget about Martin and the kids, you just say no thank you. Because you know what I'd say? Where is he? What I thought, we might go into town, if Mavis will oblige. Oh, yes, I'm sure I can. And, uh, fit you out in your tropical kit? Oh, now, doesn't that sound inviting? I thought we were just going to a pub for lunch. Well, you'll need this and that, won't you? Mavis, can you manage? Yeah, of course I can. Go on. Well, I can think of worse ways to spend an afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'll just go and... Um... Powder your nose. <laughs> I know. I'll be waiting. Isn't it exciting? You've been very understanding, Mavis. Thank you. I hope you don't mind me taking Rita away. I'll look after her. I promise you that. Oh, I'm sure you will. It, it's just nice to see you so happy together. Mavis. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, Derek, what is it? What's the matter? Well, I rang them. I rang them up. Have you had bad news? I don't know. I don't know. <gasps> How can you call it bad news? Derek, tell me, what is it? Well, I rang him. I rang Mr Hyssop and I said, you know, I said uh, another opportunity had presented itself and, and I hoped he didn't think I was wasting his time. And... Well, was he very annoyed then? Or... Well, no, he, he said he wanted me to think seriously about it and, uh, and would it help my deliberations if, uh, if he stuck another 2,000 on the basic <gasps> salary? Two thousand. By heck, he must be keen on you. Oh, Derek, what, what did you say? I said it had to be considered. Oh, dear. Now then, who's the bib and tucker, Joe? Uh, that's me, not before time, neither. Hey, hey, don't be provoking. I've been through hell and high water to fetch you this hot pot. You've not brought it yet. No, honestly, some people. Hey, it's back on again, is it the food? Uh, that's the rumour. Uh, right, one hot pot. Over here, look. Well, you might give it a round of applause. Never mind about all that. Here, get it down you while it's hot. Ah, oh. oh, it smells very good, does that? I might be tempted myself. Uh, Mr Gilroy? Yes, yes, that's me. Ah. My name's Steele, environmental health officer. I see you're selling food. I'd like to inspect your kitchen, please. Ah, well, uh, could, could, you, could you come back after the rush? I've come to inspect your kitchen now, Mr Gilroy. Yeah, yeah, well, it's not, uh, it's not convenient uh, just at the moment. I've yet to find a time to call when it is convenient, Mr Gilroy. Now, will you uh, show me the way or will I find it myself? Uh, now, is this going to be a long do, only it is dinner time? As long as it takes, Mr Gilroy. Ah, well, look. Well, I might have been tempted. On the other hand, I think I'll wait to see what my lad has to say about the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, we uh, we do all our own cooking in here, you know, me and the wife. <laughs> I mean, we're not poisoning ourselves. <laughs> Does that ventilator work? Oh, I, I... Usually. Sod's law, Mr Gilroy. It, it must just be on the blink. Ah, this is the sort of thing you see. Eh? And similarly here, cracked tiles. You see here, cracked? Oh, yeah, but, uh, but they're clean, that's what matters. I mean, scrubbed every day, them tiles. And the ceiling? Ceiling? Oh, well, well no, I grant you, we don't, we don't scrub the ceiling every day. Emulsion paint. Hmm? Flaking, you see, it's not a washable surface. Not the ceiling? All surfaces are required to be washable. Um, I'm looking at a washing machine here, am I? Aye, 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 that's a washing machine. That's clean enough. Not in your kitchen. I've got a washing machine in my kitchen. So have I, but I'm not preparing food for the public. It's mm. just a washing machine. Which means dirty clothes. Means contamination. Means it can't stay in the kitchen. And the coat's behind the door, you see. Once again. That's my coat and it's perfectly clean. <laughs> How do you come to work, love? On a bus? Oh, usually, yeah. People could have spat on you without you knowing. People behind sneezing on you. Anything. <laughs> Come on, now, let's keep this in proportion. I mean, it's just a few hot pots of the old balm cake we're doing. It's not what you call catering per se. Mr Gilroy, we are talking about the Food Safety Act 1990. It was debated by 600-odd MPs. They didn't invite me to debate it with them, and I'm not going to debate it with you. You are a caterer. This kitchen won't do. Start to finish, top to bottom, won't do. Oh, wine as well. <laughs> You're going posh tonight. <laughs> You got somebody nice coming. Oh, it's only Norman and Angela. Oh, have I met them? Well, I should have thought so. They only live over at Road. Oh, Curly and Angie. Do you know it's one thing I'm grateful to my mother for calling me Raquel. I mean, it may sound like a brandy disinfectant, but at least nobody shortens it. <laughs> Ta-ra. Bye. You know, maybe if it wasn't for this Rita business, we'd be opening a bottle of wine tonight and having a little celebration. We still will, Derek. I find it hard to open a bottle of wine when I'm about to turn down 18,000 a year. No, after the past few months, it does seem feast or famine. Maybe before I ring him back, are you sure you've no doubt about this shop? Oh, Derek, of course I've got doubts about it if you're not going to be happy. No, no, leave me out of it for a minute. Have you any doubts yourself? No, I don't think so. That's not a very positive reaction. Well, I know, Derek, but I can't leave you out of it. I mean, the whole point of the shop is it would be ours, the, the two of us, together. I mean, well, that's what I'd like, and it's what we've talked about. Yes, we borrow all this money and they screw the interest rates up again. We'd find ourselves working for nothing. Well, at worst, there's a living in it, and I'd sooner that than all the money in the world if I was never going to see you. Mm, it could be a lot of travelling. <laughs> Aren't you here, there and everywhere for 18,000? And bonuses? You'd never be home. I still can't believe I'm going to tell him where to stick his 18,000. I didn't get it all. Mm. What have we got to do? Oh, demolish the kitchen, build another one, that's all. I've got to have a nail brush with my name on. <laughs> well, we might just manage the nail brush, Betty. And? Well, go on, tell me the worst. I've told you, build a new kitchen. But he's not going to do us for out. Well, that's not that bad. No, no, he's given us a deadline, you see, and we've got to come up to the level of the regulations. And is he not stopping us from selling food now? How can we sell food when we're building a kitchen? I mean, if we build a kitchen, because it's going to cost a fortune. Well, at least we don't have to throw the rest of the hot pot away, then. What are you talking about? You've a pub full of people out there that are just a health inspector condemn it. Couldn't give hot pot away to next door's cat. There you go, Jim. Instead of bring it back, brought it back. Oh, good man. Listen, you're just in time for a brew. Oh, I wouldn't mind. Well, I hope you're not particular about the cups. Nope. Mind you, this is how your man discovered penicillin, you know? So, how's things with you and that wee piranha? Oh, all right, I suppose. Now he's changed his tune a bit. Oh, uh -huh. has he done? Oh. At least he's agreed to do the bills my way from now on. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Well, it is, but I'm sure he considers me a total nana. No, I reckon he's probably figured out that you're an honest man, Kev. Yeah. Is there a difference in his book, eh, between that and a total nana? Well, if you want someone to run your business, not rip you off or make you go broke, then yes. Thanks very much. Glad I come round. Making me feel better already. 
So we're not going to be up there, though, are we? Where's that? On top, in charge. Filthy rich? Nope. No. Did you want to be there? Yeah. Nah, you want to be a nice guy, Kev. That's your trouble. You don't want to kick people when they're down. And the only way to get to the top is to kick people when they're down. Hey, have you heard? They've had the public health at the Rovers. You're kidding. I'm not. Apparently, they've been all over his kitchen and they've put him on a warning or something. I thought you said you were only joking. Hey, I was. Oh, well, Alex's certainly not laughing. Liz, they're not down there because of me. You know, honest to God, they're not. It's Alec. You'll have to convince, not me. Oh, great. So he's running after me with a pump handle now, is he? Oh, hang about. Where do you fit into all this? <laughs> it, was a wee, it was a wee joke. I mean, you know how mad he's got me over the last few days. I mean, I just did it to pull his leg. <laughs> Mind you, you've got the laugh, don't you? Listen, tell you what, fancy coming down for a pint tonight with us at the Legion? <laughs> Come in. Did you have a good journey? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks. <laughs> this travels well and all. Oh, ta. Very nice. Hiya. Um, well, just sling your coats anywhere. Hiya. What about a beer to start with? That all right? Yeah, yeah, why not? Angie? Beer, yeah, fine with me. Right. Um, well, just sit yourselves down then. Be with you in a minute. How about you, Pet? Do you want a drink? Oh, no, not just yet. Um, see to our guests. Right. Well, there we are. Thanks. Right. Twiglet. Ah, thank you. So, are we uh, celebrating anything? It's like your birthday or something. No. Raquel got a job at all? No, we just, um... It's just nice to see good friends, really. So, Raquel, they're uh, still doing the modelling, then? Bits and pieces, you know. Yeah, she makes more with the bits and pieces than I do slugging me guts out all week, don't you? <laughs> well, that's with her bits and pieces being nicer than yours. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, well, it was you two that got her into it in the first place, wasn't it? Well, I think we're about ready. What are we eating? Chicken a la king. Ah. <laughs> I'm impressed. Well, I'm a girl of many talents, me. Only I wondered because I can't smell anything. Oh, yeah, well, that's another advantage of boiling bag, isn't it? I've just gone snip it out onto plates. No, well, there, there is a... There, there is a, another reason, a good reason. Well, we've all been mates, haven't we? And uh, we still are mates, as far as I'm concerned. I'd like it if we... We'd like it if we could carry on being mates. Because, uh, well, that just seems a good enough reason to me, being mates again. Well, I want to expect in a speech. <laughs> no, no, it's ever since they're doing a curry. They've gone mad altogether. Aye, well... Thousands, it was always... thousands it's going to cost me. Who gets the benefit? That's what I want to know. I mean, I wouldn't mind if they could tell me it's unhygienic what comes out of my kitchen. But where's all these customers I'm supposed to be poisoning, I ask you? <laughs> They'd soon let you know. Oh, no, it's the little Hitler syndrome, isn't it? They want to try running a business. Different tale altogether, then. Thank you. Well, you look like a couple of fiddler's chins, the pair of you. Grocery business that bad, is it? I'm oh, sorry, Mrs Gilroy. I've done my best to don the motley. Ah, oh, I thought I'm health officer had done you over and all. I've never out to my shop. I bet he in tears, practically. What do you say in the end? Spend a lot of money. Sorry I was so long. That's all right. Only your pal over there was going on about Acts of Parliament concerning food and hygiene. Oh, dear. And uh, something to do with Edwina Curry's family tree, as I didn't quite catch. <laughs> oh, poor old Alec. <laughs> hey, he's been out there, you know. Well, oh. to Caribbean. That's handy for Florida, isn't it? Yes. They're doing all right, these publicans, aren't they, for all their complaining. Holidays oh. in Caribbean. No, no, no. Alec was working there. He was on a cruise ship. Well, by the sound of it, he wishes he still were. <laughs> hey, that's something we should think about, you know. Cruising in Caribbean. Where do you keep all these millions of yours? Where I can get at it. <laughs> you can't take it with you, Rita. Well, what do you think? Hey, for our honeymoon? Honeymoon? What do I think? I think I've been swept off my feet. Oh, I do hope so. All my life I've wanted to sweep a lovely lady off her feet. Oh. Now I'm realising all my ambitions. I am. Well, I can't see it. I'll be honest, I can't see it. Can't see what? No, 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 what she sees in him. Oh, no. Hey? I can't lie to her. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 
Well, maybe they're not right for each other, but they don't seem to know it's that, have they? I'll tell you now, it won't last. Hey, did you notice? It's, we like to do that, we like to do this, we think we like the other. Notice! I thought it was pathetic. And when she actually fed him with a spoon, I nearly threw up. It won't last, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got the key. There's no point in getting on to me. But you wouldn't be on that council if it wasn't for me, Al. Look, I can't tell environmental health what to do. You're supposed to be in charge of these people. Yeah, I get all this, you know. They come in the shop, they see a, a sack of potatoes in the back room, and I get the riot act. It's got to be 350 millimetres off the floor. I get all that. Yeah, there's far too many people just employed, dreaming up new laws and regulations. It's Brussels that do all that, you know, Brussels. Yes, yeah. yes. No reasoning with folk. Who's this? No, they're them at the town hall. I mean, people have been selling pies and ale for centuries. We're still here. It's no good telling them that, though. I told them that. Hmm? In the same words, practically. And they had an idea what I was talking about. Do you know, they don't even keep proper records. I didn't half tell them I did that. Well, what are you complaining about, then? This business. Stopping Mr Gilroy. Stopping the food. Cos I know something about the catering business and I can educate them. Yeah, well, they haven't actually stopped me as such, Percy. Well, I thought they had. No, you, you went to the town hall today, did you? No, I went down there Monday and gave them a citizen's opinion, which, in my view, is a citizen's right and privilege. You went down to the town hall on Monday? We're not just talking about a plate of hot pot here, I said. We're talking about heritage. You went down to that town hall and talked about this pub and hot pot on Monday? Come on. I haven't got it. I didn't put it in. I thought you had it. <sighs> I did ask you. Well, Knock yourselves out, then. She said she had a key. I never. I said got a key. Question. Well, it sounded like got a key statement to me. Do you know the only people get inconvenienced by locks is them to lose their keys? I mean, a burglar being in ten seconds. Oh, thank you very much, Jim. A very interesting thought. We'd better find Rita and see if she's got a spare. That's a thanks I get, is it? That's a thanks! Yes, well, you needn't bother coming back, cos you're barred. I never want to see you in here again. Don't worry. Never. Don't you worry! Never, as long as you see that name over that door. You were a right one to be talking about Little Italy's. No, not you as well, Percy, eh? Well, come on, son. Join the Ever Expanding Club. You're just in time for one down the Legion with me. Come on ahead. I'll tell you what, the beer's not bad down there. Right, Jesus. <laughs> in the Rovers at lunchtime. Sorry? Lunchtime in the Rovers. Uh, yes, all right. Anything interesting? You could say that, yes. Oh? It's from Hewitt. Oh, that's the firm that's offered you the job. Not just a job, Mavis. Sales coordinating executive. Salary of 18,000 a year. It's confirmation. <gasps> Derek, I know that's a lot of money. It's more than that, Mavis. It's a first-class position. It's it's recognition of my managerial capabilities. No, not again. Oh. Derek, we've been through all this. I thought we'd decided we're definitely going for the cabin. Yes, I know. So, you'll give them a ring. Tell them you've decided not to take it. Yes, I will. Today? Leave it with me, Mavis. Morning. I ain't you're an early bird. I never was one for laying in bed of a morning. As soon as I feel that sunshine on my bedroom window, I don't need telling twice that a new day has started. Oh, I quite agree. That doesn't mean to say you can hot-foot it round here as soon as the sparrows have rubbed sleep out their eyes. Thanks, love. Well, I thought I may Thank be you. able to make myself useful. Well, if you fancy doing a paper uh -huh. round... No, I was thinking that uh, selling a business, not to mention the house across the road, well, it just doesn't happen, does it? I mean... There must be a thousand and one things to do. Oh, you don't have to tell me, Ted. I've been up half a night thinking ah. about it. Do you know, I haven't even been in touch with an estate agent yet. I could do with the value around here, sharpish. So tell me what to do. You? Well, I do have more time on my hands than you. So where do I begin? Well, you can begin by putting kettle on. Done. <laughs> right. All right. Thanks, love. Cheers. Oh, thank you. Have you any idea who you've been lodging with all these months, have you? Hey. This is me, Angie Freeman, design student, spinster of this parish, penniless. I didn't mean right now, this very moment. When you leave college, you get a job. No way, Curly. 
The way things are looking, I could well spend the next 25 years paying off my debts, never mind a slice of a mortgage on this place. If you're gonna make Rita an offer, then good luck to you, but you can count me out. All right, it was just a thought. So you really are thinking of going for it? Well, why not? I mean, I'm gonna need a place of my own eventually, and if the price is right... Well, if you do go for it, and you still want a lodger, you can count me in. You mean you'd stop on? Definitely. Last thing I want is to be scouting around for new digs with my finals coming up. You're not still driving yourself potty with them figures. Have you any idea what this lot's going to cost, have you? I know we're not going to get the kitchen done out for peanuts, but until we've got a proper estimate, we don't know where we stand, do we? Don't know where we stand? You've only got to look at this flaming list to see where we stand. It reads like an inventory for the Ideal Holmes exhibition. Alec, will you stop playing snakes and ladders with that lot? Until we've got something definite to go on, you're only going to be worrying yourself into an early grave. You know, I don't know how I managed to keep my hands off Percy Sutton's throat, him and his flaming big mouth. If he'd been 20 years younger... Alec! <laughs> Hello, Rover's return. Oh, hello there. Uh, you what? Now, hang on a minute. You, you said 11 o'clock. Well, look, I'm not talking about no top and safety job, you know. If you can't be bothered to get round it. Uh, yeah, you're, now, hang on a minute. I didn't say that. No, well, just get here as soon as you can. I'll see you later. Just try and get here before flaming closing time. That's all we need. Hey? The kitchen fitter. Supposed to be here this morning to give us an estimate. Can't come now till after dinner. So? So if he can't get here on time to put in for a job, what's it going to be like if he gets it? Never see an end to it. Alec, if you don't calm down, that will certainly be true in your case. So what, normal lad? What do you for? I just wanted to let you know I'm taking an early lunch. Oh? Yeah, well, Angie's been on the phone, you see. I need to be home for 12. Oh. Their demands on your time are paramount, are they? <laughs> no, they're not. She rang me to tell me that's what time the value was coming. Value, eh? The value from the estate agent. He's going to value the house for Mrs Fairclough. Really? So, she's carrying on with this charade, is she? Turning her back on her friends? Good business, comfy living. And all to throw her hand in with some gigolo from Boyle Sweets trade. How some people can be so gullible, so short-sighted? Look, Reg, whatever Mrs Fairclough decides to do with her life, that's her business. Mm -hmm. And if she decides she wants to sell number seven, then I intend to make it mine. That's why I'm having an early lunch. You're thinking of buying number seven? I could do worse. I could do a lot worse, which reminds me, I need to talk to you about the help I can get from Better Buys. Better Buys? Well, yeah, they've got a scheme, haven't they, you know, to help young executives buy their own homes. Assisted relocation scheme, you mean? That's right. Yes. Yes, they do make a contribution to cover the uh, removal expenses, resettlement, yes, yeah. Right, right. All oh, right. Well, you're not going anywhere, are you, Norman? You're not moving, you're not resettling. So there's no way you can take advantage of the Better Buys Assisted Relocation Scheme. Not unless and until you leave this branch. Yes, and judging by your past performances, that means never. <coughs> well, seeing as you have graced us with your presence, <laughs> what's it to be? Uh, fry up, please. Uh, Double everything. Uh, you think I didn't feed him, Go <coughs> on, sit down. I thought you'd never ask. I don't know what you're giving him, and I wish you'd give me the recipe. Eh? Oh, Martin, it's a proper little ray of sunshine. Oh, it's this nursing course. Been on cloud nine ever since he was accepted. A cup of tea, freshly brewed, beans on toast, and I don't want it burnt to a cinder. Oh, I think we can manage that, Mr. Sogden. Well, if anything wipe the smile off Martin's chops, it's him. Eh? Well, Percy Sogden's got a face like a flat tyre. <laughs> when is he ever any different? <laughs> <laughs> so you've not made it up with Alec, then? I'm not the one with any making up to do. Mm. I wasn't the one who was out of order. Yeah, well, you can't blame me for being so low, can you? Shh. Especially after having the whistle blown on him like that. Shh. Now, listen to me. That health inspector had nothing to do with me. Oh, come on, you went down to the town hall. To make a statement that I'd spent the best years of my life fighting for things I believed in, <sighs> so that youngsters like you could be free. Free to lead your own life instead of being outed by these high-handed bureaucrats. Listen to you, I wonder why I bothered. How long does it take to value a house? But, uh, I don't know. It could take all day for me, as long as he comes up with the right figure. Mm. Well, that seems to be it. So you've seen everything you need to see, then? Yes, yes, thank you. Needs decorating, you know. Top to bottom. I can't think last time it was done. 
So any purchaser would have to take that into account now, wouldn't he? Needs decorating. Believe me, Mr. Watts, this is a little palace. If you could see some of the houses a master sell, they're considered decorated if they've got plaster on the walls. <laughs> uh, have you shown him the damp patch, have you? Damp patch? Uh, yeah, behind the sink. I've told Mrs. Fairclough about it. I'll have a quick look at that before I go. Not that it'll affect my valuation to any great extent. So, uh, what would it be, you know, what, what we're looking at? I'm sorry? The, the valuation, the asking price, uh, what is it? Well, that's a matter for Mrs. Fairclough. Yeah, yeah, I know, you see, but uh, I, I'd be interested, you know, if the price was right, I, I mean, I would be interested. I see. So, what is it, what we're looking at? Well, the asking price is down to Mrs. Fairclough, of course. If she wants a quick sale, she may be happy to settle for something less than I'd consider the full market value. Well, what is the full market value? What is it? I think we should be looking for something in the region of £30,000. So how much is this lot going to cost? Lord, no. It's giving Alec a headache just thinking about it. Where's it all going to end, Mike? What the heck are they going to come up with next? Search me. You know, we've been doing food in this pub since Adam was a lamb, and you can count the number of complaints we've had on the fingers of one hand. Then some bright spark comes along and dreams of this new legislation. We've been doing it all wrong. What the heck's happening in the world? It's called progress, darling. It's what makes the world go round. At least that's what they tell us. Line somebody's pockets, more like. Well, won't be ours, that's for sure. We're going to be forking out for this lot till our dotage. If Alec hasn't disappeared in a cloud of blue smoke before then. <laughs> You still haven't told us. What? How a little tea party went on with uh, Andy and Curly. Nothing to tell, is there? If you ask me, they deserve each other, them two. It was about as interesting as watching Jelly Set. What would you expect? I mean, not that I have got out against dinner parties, but you do need the right people. Oh, like you and Vera, you mean? Well, now you can't mention it, and not that it's got out to do with me, of course, but. If you and Dares were thinking of having another one, Mike. Right? You know, you're right, Jack. <laughs> it's now to do with you. Put another one in there, please, love. It's an awful lot of money, Derek. Well, we've got the house to sell. I know, but there won't be much left from that once we've paid the building society back. There's a couple of insurance policies. No, I think at the end of the day, we'll be looking for a bank loan of something in the region of 45,000. And you still think it's worth it at that price? Oh, yes. Thriving business, full employment for both of us, nice little flat. Oh, it's more than that, Derek. It'll be a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> Happy? Hmm? With the valuations. Because if you're not, you can always get a second opinion, you know. Oh, no. No, there's no need for that. I won't be unhappy with those figures. It's a funny feeling, though. What is? Well, somebody coming in. Somebody you've never seen before. For an evaluation on your life's work. Your business. Your home. Yes. Yeah. I suppose it is. I never thought of it like that. But you must be very satisfied with yourself. Satisfied? Well, you've made so much of your life. Oh, it's not all down to me. Oh, no, not by a long chalk. Well, don't go on to selling yourself. I think you can be well satisfied. Well, just think what your parents were worth at your age. Parents? Only knew one of them. Rita, it's going to happen. Yeah, we made a start, haven't we? Look. We've got the wheels in motion. Mm. Now, there's not a lot we can do here for the next couple of weeks, so how do you fancy a break? A break? Florida. Go and look at some properties over there. We'll have to go sooner or later. And now things are moving. The sooner, the better. That's uh, 3.15, please. Right, I'll get these, and yourself. Oh, Cheers, Kayla. So, uh, what's all this in aid of, then? Hey. You, home at lunchtime, buying the ale. Well, I'm celebrating achieving the same status in life as yourself. Well, hopefully, if it all goes to plan. What? You're going to make an honest woman of Angie, eh? <laughs> no chance. Well, what? You're going to become a dad? No, do as a favour. Well, what? Angie? Uh -huh. oh, don't tell me. You're starting work for Baldwin. Oh, put the lad out of his misery, Curly. Oh, all right, all right. I'm, um, I'm going to become a man of property. Are you moving? No, no, I'm going to buy number seven. He's going to put an offer in for number seven. 
good luck. I hope you get it, pal. Well done. You do? You're not the only one. Because if he doesn't get it, he's going to be very disappointed. And we're both going to be homeless. Oh, so you have decided to come back then? Sorry, Rita, we didn't realise the time. Well, you haven't changed your mind and we're wondering how to tell me. Changed our mind? About buying this place. Oh, we certainly have not. No, no. I'll be seeing the bank manager as soon as I can fix an appointment. It's such a relief to know that it's going to be more than just a dream. So you wouldn't mind a dummy run then? Dummy run? Mm, running this place, the pair of you. Well, I don't think there's any need for that, Rita. Oh, yes, there is. There's every need. Well, Rita and I are in Florida. Florida! Oh. We were thinking of going on Friday, just for two weeks, to look at property over there. I take it that won't be a problem? Oh. <laughs> well, then, uh, what do you think we'll be looking at? It'll not be cheap. Well, I know it won't be cheap. Property of this age. You never know what you're going to find once you get going. There's plaster for a start. Plaster? Porous. Almost certain to be. So that'll have to be seen too. No point in putting good tiles over bad plaster, asking for trouble. Yes, it's all right. I mean, you're the expert who's supposed to be, so uh, so how much? Then there's the plumbing. Your pipe work's not too modern. My pipe work? There's nothing wrong with my pipe work. If I had a fiver every time I've heard that. Then there's the electrics. Who knows what sort of a state they'll be in, property of this age. Look, if somebody comes in here for a pint of bitter, I don't give them a lecture on how it's flaming well brewed. All I want to know is what the job's going to cost. I would be failing in my duty if I did not point out all the possible pitfalls, Mr Guildford. Gilroy, I think you can safely assume you've done that. I could have just plucked a figure out of the air that I thought you'd be happy with. Well, that would have been a fair place to start, yes. Like what? Four? Five thousand? Four or five thousand? Well, now you're talking. Exactly. You'd be delighted. That is why I don't work that way. Because I know it would be pure fantasy. It would. There'd be so many extras on that, you'd be lucky to end up paying double. Eh? And that is not good customer relations, Mr Giltrap. Roy. That is why when I give a price, I stick with it. I can guarantee it will not be a penny more. You know where you stand, I know where I stand. Yes, yes, all right. I agree with you 100%. So, so what are we looking at? You'd be looking at, uh, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Eight and a half thousand pounds? I'll uh, let you have my estimate in writing. I'll drop it off by hand. We haven't any time to lose, have we? Eight and a half thousand? All right, Percy. You all right, Square? Yes, why shouldn't I be? Well, just didn't see you down the Legion this morning, that's all. Well, I don't know of any laws that said I have to be. <sighs> oh, I. You've fallen out with Mike Maddox and all then, have you? No, I haven't. What is it about force round here? I think you're not right if you haven't got a pint pot in your hand 24 hours a day. I was only concerned. I thought you might be a wee bit under the weather, that's all, you know. Oh, I'm all right. No, I've never felt better. So, no peace offering from Gilroy then, eh? No, there hasn't. And if he's expecting an apology from right, me... Percy, no way. Listen, Percy, all I'm saying is, if you fancy a jar later on, I'm going down the Legion for the last hour, eh? Oh, no, not tonight. No, if I go anywhere, it'll be to the flying horse. At least half the customers there won't be reliving World War II all over again. So you're not having it done, is that what you're saying? I'm not having it done at that price, that's for sure. It must think I haven't landed from outer space. It's not going to be cheap, Alec. Well, I'm not paying that sort of money. I'm not the only kitchen fitter in the universe. There must be somebody who wants the work. Well, I'm sure there is. It's whether they want it at the price you're prepared to pay. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Rover's return. Yes, speaking. Oh, oh, hello there. Huh. Yeah, now, what can I do for you? I see. Oh, well, well, well yes, yes, I certainly will. And, and, and thank you for letting me know. Yes, oh, well, tell Mr. Wildin that I shall look forward to seeing him again. Uh, yes, yes, I will. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was a turn-up, and not before time. Eh? Nick Wilding's secretary. Vicky's solicitor? What did she want? Well, apparently they finally cleared Tim and Sandra's will. They want a detailed list of our expenses for Victoria so they can reimburse us. And not before time. Ladies? Reg? Oh, Mr Holdsworth. I'll serve Mr Holdsworth if you want to get up. Ah, it's all right. I'm not to ten minutes. Mm. Out on the town again, are we? What are we celebrating this time? 
selling of number seven to Mr. Watts. No, as it happens, we're not, because I haven't agreed to sell number seven to anybody yet. Mm, well, Mr. Watts wants to buy. So I hear from several people, none of whom happens to be curly, and until he makes me an offer, I think talk of selling is premature. I say, well, have it your way, but the way I hear it, your days around here could be numbered. Well, I won't argue with that. Yeah. Look, <clears throat> I want to ask you as a friend, as somebody who cares about you, do you really know what you're getting into? I mean, really, really know? Yes, I think I do, but thank you for your touching concern. No, you are giving up so much. And for what? You don't even know where you're going to be living. Oh, don't worry. We're soon putting that right. Hmm? They're going to Florida this weekend. This weekend? Hmm? Yes, that's right. Looking at property. So, with a bit of luck, you won't have to worry about me for much longer. Yes, love. Bye. Bye. How's that it, Percy? Yes, that's all for now. I thought I saw you coming in here. Oh, good. Your eyes are still working, even if the rest of you's packed up. Do you know, I've been looking for you all day. Well, you haven't been looking in the right places then, have you? Hey, I want to tell you, I've not been in Rover since he took you out. If he picks on you, it's me to reckon with. Ooh, I bet that's made him sit up. You will have lost best part of 35p today. You know, you're not the only one who thinks Alec went a bit far chucking Percy out. Right, where we're going tonight. I've heard you thinking of going and flying horse. Well, you're it wrong. I'm not going anywhere. I fancy an early night. Oh, suits me. Your place of mine. Oh, I'm not standing here listening to all this. It's coming to someone. A fella can't come in to buy his tea bags without being molested. Oh, molested? You don't know meaning that word. Oh, give us half a chance. <laughs> oh, Phyllis, you are wicked. Oh, I could be. Now, that bit of pay cut might be able to give me a few good years. But it doesn't mean to say because boilers get it on a bit, fire's gone out. I wasn't expecting you for another ten minutes yet. Well, I thought we might have a drink before we ate. Well, after the day I've had, I won't say no to that. <laughs> no. It's been one for the archives, hasn't it? Thank you, Ted, for everything you've done for me today. My pleasure, believe me. Well, no going back now, is there? Would you want to? No. No, I've never been so sure of anything in my life. <coughs> oh, well, that's a relief, because I've just booked us on the Miami flight for Friday. You booked it? Yeah. Called in the travel agents this afternoon. Right. So how much do I owe you? Now, Rita. Oh, no, I mean it, Ted. I mean, after we marry, well, that's a different matter. But for now, well, I think we should split the cost down the middle. Well, if that's the way you want it. It is. As you say. Now, I've heard enough talk about money today to last me a lifetime. Yeah, me and all. To Florida. To us. So. Thank you. We'll not be having you for a neighbour for much longer, Mr. Wilson. Hopefully, no. <laughs> oh, that sounds awful. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> no, I meant hopefully we'll be selling our house soon. Right. Anyway, we're hardly moving to the ends of the earth. Well, you, you may wish you had a done, but you've had this time to get used to your new neighbour. Sorry? Randy Red. Oh, well, no, I think we can handle him. <laughs> I think 30,000 is a fair offer. What? For number seven? Oh, right, right. I mean, how can she know this man? Woman? She's only known in five minutes. What? This Teddy. Teddy. Oh, Sullivan. Oh, yeah, I'm with you now. Well, she must know enough, that's pretty clear. She knows what he wants her to know, Norman, what he has told her. Well, this is by way of a celebration. Mavis has been telling me that you will definitely be taking over the cabin. I said in all probability, Emily. I never was one to tempt Providence. No, you weren't, were you, Mavis? Anyway, Emily's right. I mean, I know I've got to see the bank manager tomorrow, but uh, I've already had a lengthy chat with him on the phone, and, well, he appreciates that a man of my management experience doesn't enter these things lightly. <laughs> no, I think we can safely say there'll be no problem there. I'm very pleased to hear <coughs> it, Derek. Well, I mean, your age could so easily have gone against you, couldn't it? Would you just excuse me? Reg, Reg, I know how you must feel about Rita Fairclough, but don't you think it's time you called it a day? She's going to marry this Teddy... Sullivan. Yes, and they're going to live in Florida. It's settled. That's what she wants. No, it's what he wants. Attractive woman, self-sufficient, handy two-man a plate. Oh, yes, I know his game. 
There's something more behind this man, Norman, than meets the eye. Watch more, and I intend to find out what it is. Well, don't you think you've left it a bit late? Wrong, Norman. No, it isn't. The sale of number seven has not gone through. The sale of the business hasn't gone through. She won't be leaving until it has. About number seven? Hmm? What? I was saying, I think £30,000 a fair offer. Do you want my advice, Norman? Yes, please. You don't want to offer a penny more than you have to, because you will have to pick up that mortgage when she has gone. Well, I intend to make her an offer. Quite right, Norman. 20 grand. 20 grand? She won't settle for 20 grand. Well, what have you got to lose? You can always up your offer if you have to. For the worst, it'll only set you back a couple of days, and it will make all the difference. Believe me.